Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to DFC 102. We're back. It's been quite a ride. This is DFC Standstill. I, myself, am at a bit of a standstill. Uh, what? <laughs> you know, the spaceship wasn't enough. It just... I figure while the bank can't catch us, we might as well get some implants. No, no, Toshank, these are fu these are real. Fuck's sake. I'm talking about a bionic arm. That's basically what we've gotten, as you can see. This thing, it's gonna take a few weeks to be ready, but... <sighs> Son of a bitch, look at this thing. <sighs> Got the laser. That is a heat-seeking laser. All right, don't ask, don't ask questions, okay? I'm a, I'm a little, I'm a little bruised up, man. A little, a little messed up. No, this is, uh, this is from rotator cuff surgery, man. Uh, that's, that, that's rough. They say that it is the one of the roughest surgeries that you can, or one of the roughest recoveries that you can go through, and they, they weren't they weren't kidding at all, man. I still got I still got some of the stitches and stuff. Like check this out. They had to. I'll tell you a little bit about what they had to do afterwards. But look at this, man. It's it's like feels worse than it looks, but it still looks pretty bad. They dude, they they beat me up good. You see all the bruises? See all the bruises? That's like one night in the mower with Dazer. Shit's crazy, man. Yeah, they, they muffed it up pretty good. Yeah, they had to... They went in with some shit. They went in en entroscopically. Right in through here, there's also one in the back with some stitches. The little thing hasn't fallen off on these stitches yet, but look, I'm not gonna force it, right? Pretty soon, the, this is all... The, oh, this whole arm's titanium. I'm never getting through airports ever again. Whole arm is titanium. They had to they had to take the they had to take my bicep muscle and or, or my bicep tendon, which usually goes like you know your bicep goes all the way up into your shoulder and goes up in here somewhere, connects. They had to they cut it up here and then they drilled it into my arm and like reattached it so that they could get to the rotator cuff. Oh, it's it's that's the most painful part, man. It's like, it's that piece of it right there. The the subscap, which is like, there's so many muscles in your rotator cuff, but like the subscap is what I tore, which is like right here. That one isn't so bad. The recovery for that isn't so bad. But the recovery for the bicep tenodesis, man, that'll put you out a while right there. Yeah. Yeah, it's too much shooting of those arrows. Like, I thought for sure. I thought for sure that... It's allowed. We might as well do it. But I'll tell you, some people call it cheese, but it's really the smart people, the creative ones that end up paying the ultimate price for using that boat. It is what it is. It is what it is. We're, we're a little messed up. But we've also got some pretty insane shit, man. For DFC stand still. We ain't even messing around. Look at this card for the first time ever we've got a couple of melee duels on the card a couple and man oh man i was so happy to see some melee duelers join up tonight very curious to see how this is going to go how this is going to look and that is uh quite a standstill duel in and of itself a little bit of a theme going on there's a lot of thought that goes into the naming of these episodes okay it's a well, little bit little bit a little bit of thought, like at least five minutes of thought that goes into naming each episode, right? Very fitting. But uh, we're going to get to see some melee duels. We got a whole new melee dueling rule set that we've added to the DFC. We'll check that out in a bit. But man, oh man, what a card. I was actually very pumped to log on. And uh, when I started making matchups to see how many people had signed up, you know, these events, I'm so happy to see they just keep getting bigger and bigger and we keep attracting the, 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 
best, most entertaining, uh, but most of all, most committed people of the Diablo 2 community to just come in and have a good time with us every Thursday night. And man, I love it. You'll love seeing it. Like I said, it's the highlight of my week. Technically, I'm not even supposed to be here. I just want to let you know that. Not supposed to move this thing, type with it. Don't try nothing for at, for at least two weeks. And then after two weeks, you might be able to type or something, you know. But bionic arms are pretty... They're crazy, man. They, they take a lot of recovery, but it's worth it in the end. I'm going to be a I'm going to be a fucking cyborg. I'm going to be a cyborg after this. You what you watch. You think I'm you think I'm vicious in the more now? You just you just fucking wait. All right? You just wait. Yeah, yeah. They needed they needed that, Dom. The other competitors they needed they needed me to be handicapped for them to have a chance. All right? just how it is but jokes on them all right i'm gonna undo this and hopefully keep it in the right position it's gonna be 90 degrees a little bit abducted as they call it big cheers to you guys man thank you so much for being here appreciate you hope you enjoy this card i didn't listen after my hand surgery now my pinky is stuck with a huge hook from gripping the mouse be careful i regret it oh dude yeah i'm taking it seriously like I, I tried typing earlier and I just got a weird feeling in my arm and I was like, you know, just kind of started it, it just didn't like it and I was like, yeah, okay, I'm not doing this like, you gotta you gotta take the recovery seriously, like, don't, don't ever think you're better than the recovery take it serious, do everything they say because literally it's the rest of your life you're dealing with it, so yeah, it, it's, it's the, the biggest pain it, like there is pain associated with the surgery and the recovery, but the biggest pain is relearning how to do a lot of stuff in your life with one hand. You know, it's it's that's the biggest pain point for sure. Doom attempt is going to be nuts. Going to get some Bud Light for that one, yeah, dude. Uh, I think so. It's going to be good. Also, uh, sometimes Doom uh, he has a very unpredictable schedule. He may or may not make it, but if he does or doesn't. Tempest and Havito PvP, I hear, are also going to be willing to willing to be throwing down on this card. So Tempest trying to get in here, no matter what, which should which should be fun. Uh, I can only do melee duels tonight, so that's why I'm on the melee card. Uh, I clicking and holding, man, I'm so good. My click and hold skills, I think, have actually gotten better. But uh, actual blood more skills are, yeah, just non-existent. Yeah. When you start to feel good and you want to push it, don't. You regret it. Yep, no from experience. Yeah, you too, man. Yeah, you too. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Like, me of all people, I want this to heal right. It's shoulder surgery. You don't want to mess that up. It's also bicep. You certainly don't want to mess that up. Like, it's just going to look weird if you do. Got to take it seriously, man. Doctor's orders, that's right. But yeah, dude, for the main event, I'm not sure if you guys caught this in the Discord, but holy shit, we actually have a couple of insane fights that are up at the top of the card here. Dazer versus Toshank is going to be the title match of the century, dude. The title has been a revolving door in the DFC for a while now, but we we have seen some OGs once again rise to the top for their shots, and it is never an easy day defending the title. Never. Dazer will have his work cut out for him against Toshank tonight in Sin V Neck. Apparently, Toshank has got quite the setup that he's very interested in showing off. Uh, we're going to see how it does, man. Dazer is one of the most aggressive, one of the most vicious Sin players, one of the most decorated when it comes to wins. This duel right here between Dazer and Toshank, probably a duel between the two most decorated players in all of Diablo 2 history, not just in the DFC. So this should be this should be a fun one to see. And just so many more, man. Cannot wait to see all of these. We've got some high-profile fights up in this bitch, man, and it's going to be a good night. Really happy to be here with you guys. Again, big cheers. Thank you so much for joining me. Nah, that's uh, Odin. I still got the dominant arm, bro. Uh, I still got the dominant arm. Uh, I, I tried to recruit a couple of, uh, you know, good female friends, too, beforehand. Uh, you know... And now I'm just going to play the sympathy card. You know, that's... That's how we're going to go about it. We're going to see if it works. We're, we're going to see how it goes. 
But yeah, man, this is the this is the new rule set. Whoa, blinding! I hope none of y'all are watching that hyper focused in on that dark background. Okay, it's time to wake up to the new melee rule set. So this is going to be a bit more integrated as we go along, but currently it says no other rule sections apply to this melee rule set because originally we had basic rules all the way up here that kind of apply to everything. Nothing else really applies to this. Uh, it's just so different, but we are, uh, me and Primo, going to be working on this, trying to fix this up. But let's go over these just very briefly, very quickly, so I can tell you guys about how melee dueling works. First of all, in case you're not familiar, Man, oh man, what an insane way to duel this is. Melee characters are defined as the Jabzon, the Fury Druid, Zeo Pally, Kant's Barb. That, very likely to change in the near future. But this is basically how they happen. Uh, this is one of the duels from the video that you wrote recently saw. This is my duel with Casino here. These, these two absolute legends, obviously, in the Melee community just going at it. Uh, but this is, this is a very different way of dueling. Uh, with very different rules, uh, very different feel, very different pace than uh, than most other things, than most than most other forms of dueling, which I gotta say is is kind of refreshing. Uh, mainly, like I said, we have those builds that are that are set up here. We've got challenges that go FT10. Most duels in the DFC, these will go uh, these will go FT4. Uh, sometimes in mirror matches or when people switch servers, they go FT3 and we kind of do some crazy shit. Uh, all right, hold up. We we trying to get this. We trying to get this thing to work here. Hold up. We might have broke it. I think we broke it. We broke it. I, I had my little melee scene going. Now we broke it. I'm gonna blame it on Joby. And uh yeah, that's what we'll call it. Yeah, all right, here we go. Yeah, this is this is basically it. I'll show you guys this. I, I was trying to get this so we, we we could flash back in between uh different parts of this duel uh to point out different things. But look, new streamer here. Not much experience. Not much experience, not a very good streamer. Uh, Y'all just have to accept that. Uh, instead of staring at the rules, I'll just kind of tell you about them as we watch some melee dueling here. Uh, but the etiquette is a bit different. Like, duels happen. Uh, you might notice it here, but the map rarely ever comes up. Uh, th these duels happen in normal difficulty. That is... There is a point to that right there. This is supposed to be duels of physical damage, right? The ultimate cheese is bringing some sort of elemental significance to a, to a melee duel. And that's why they happen in normal. It's because you don't have to focus so much on stacking up your resistances. You can get there with, uh, you know, just the basic resistances. You'll have 30 from your quests. Maybe if you wear Fort, you'll have 30 more. And hey, if you have uh, decent other stuff, you'll have max res. But it doesn't really matter. The point is to not deal a significant amount of elemental damage. Uh, and the etiquette is a bit different, too. You might notice in this duel, we're kind of toeing the line. We're uh, staying right on that little rectangle inside the inner cloister. That's usually how they happen. However, in the DFC, we've kind of just... we've People may still follow that rule, but it's not necessarily in there. Uh, you know, so... People might still, out of tradition, follow it, but you could start it anywhere in the DFC. But uh, I think most experienced melee players will start right on the line. They call it toeing the line. Or at least I do, anyway. Uh, it could happen from this angle, people could be on the other side of it, and that's just, they just click and hold and let the digital dice take care of the rest and see who the winner is. Uh, usually the better built character with the better items is what wins, but it's all chance. Usually to signify that a player is ready, instead of saying go, you might notice that we're not really saying go uh, a lot up here. To signify that the player is ready, oftentimes what they'll do is after getting on the line like that, doing their battle orders and everything, they'll swing at their opponent and let them know, hey, this duel is on, I'm ready to go. When their opponent swings back, they just let go of that shift button and walk towards them. Um, there's also other ways you could do it. You could say go, you could activate any command on the number pad, which is what they do in the on the Asia server. There's a lot, of, a lot of different ways you could do it. We've outlined those as well in the rule set. All potions are banned, including mana potions. You probably won't need them, uh, but this is 
it, it's it's certainly different. Uh, that's why we couldn't necessarily tie the other piece of the rule set to it. All potions are banned. You can't do you know thawing potions, stamina potions, but most importantly, mana potions. You know, on on top of the healing potions and juves. The only pre-buffing that's allowed in this, you can't do the enchant. You can't do you know your you can't do all the cheesy shit. You can't be using charges off your items. You know you can't be procking amp or procking really any curse. Um, but also, the only pre-buffing that's allowed, you're not, you're not going to be enchanting, you're not going to be doing that, it's just battle orders, battle command, shout, right? Uh, those, those very few, very limited select, uh, setups that are involved in melee, that's basically all they're going to do. Uh, at the start of a duel, you will see a Zahn oftentimes cast her inner sight, which lowers the defense of her opponent. That's very important, because... Zons don't really have a lot of defense themselves or really a lot of attack rating a lot of times, especially when compared to other melee classes. Uh, so that is tech, that's allowed. There's nothing against that. Um, elemental damage, like I said, stay away from that. There is a, li li a little bit of ex an exception on that. But melee skills, a lot of times people see melee dueling and they think, oh, okay, I'm going to take my whirlwind barb there. All right? oh, man, you know what? I got a charge paladin. It'd be great for that. Those are ranged sk skills and, uh, you know, not definitely not in the build outlines that we've we've kind of put up there but we've gone out of our way to sort of call out those skills that like charge all of this stuff is that's not melee whirlwind is not melee it's a ranged skill uh so you will see the old school like almost borderline like 1.09 flashback reminiscent of those days like the click and hold days back when life leech was a thing and players life totals would bounce back and forth that's the, the style of dueling that you see here uh and the sort of new style that we have here in the dfc close duel there between me and casino what an insane time it was to be alive during this there are certain uh items that are banned just inherently based on the rule set so Anything that slows your target, like Arachnid Mesh has slow on it, you can't wear that. No slow. Slow is capped at zero. Cannot use it. Can't use knockback. Uh, can't be doing that. Items that proc curses, debuffs, or any sort of significantly uh, s skill that deals significant damage, can't use those. Uh, so, for example, significant damage would not be like the proc from your Hellfire Torch, or it wouldn't be the firestorm from phoenix but it certainly would be things from the rune word destruction that proc volcano uh that could deal a significant amount of damage to people that don't have good resistances right uh so those are the sorts of things uh, also like the amplify damage curse life tap uh life tap is allowed in zeal versus zeal if it's agreed on but other than that completely completely gone right we, we don't allow that shit the only real banned items are just grief and anything that's ethereal and doesn't repair or isn't indestructible uh the rule set and the specific outlines of the abilities banned on items usually will take care of the rest uh but as far as hard bands grief that is something that uh, has kind of flipped up damage calculations on its head so a lot of melee rule sets just inherently get rid of that makes sense and it also makes it a lot more fun but yeah, I mean that is the basic setup of these rules right here. That's the that's the the basic rundown of it. And I'm excited to have a new melee division in the DFC. Real excited to get it going, man. Stamina potions are bad. To hell with this. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, what are we doing? What are we doing? It's it's crazy how it works out. Look, we had to do it, man. They're just too powerful. You think you want to be busting out stamina potions in those kind of duels like this? It's just doesn't make sense. Isn't it isn't right, okay? Just isn't right. But yeah, this this card is amazing, man. I'll actually show you what I put together for a uh for a, a zealot here. It's stupid. I'm not gonna lie, it's very stupid. Uh I would not suggest replicating this build, doing anything remotely like it. It's completely budget. Uh I just I just actually finally gave Lecalize back all of the stuff that uh that he let me borrow, which is sort of a shame. I had some 3.2020 still in my inventory that I was messing around with, but now it's all back to the video gear, uh, which is you know basically straight budget stuff. Um, we are all max AR lifers in the inventory now, uh, but this is the item, dude. Look at this. This is the weapon. This is what we're going with. Use rock stopper, no balls. Yeah. This is, uh, this was given to me in a ZPK game, dude. Like, and you can tell it was a pretty passionate melee player because they made all the jewels match. 
and they set them in a specific way that they go in to like cross the cross the axe. It's just so pretty, man. But this is a rune master. This is something that a lot of people find. It doesn't really have a, a real use in the game. EDC is fine. I do have an EDC over here, but I won't be using it because I just I just want to be dumb. Like it's okay to be dumb. It's okay to be dumb. Right? And that's what we're gonna be today. We're gonna be dumb, but I have some method, a little bit of method behind my madness. We're gonna see if it works. Yeah, it does look very goofy. It's also blue, but look at the ability on it. It says cannot be frozen. That is something that uh it's so hard to stack up so many different things on a melee character. You have to worry about your damage, your deadly strike, your DR. And on top of it all, you have to worry about very select few spots that you can get cannot be frozen on your character. So this is just a very unique item that does a lot of one-handed damage. You can kind of customize it however you'd like. And it happens to have cannot be frozen on it, which is very rare. Uh, so it opens up some other item slots for us. That means I've been able to double bear my COA. Uh, you know, not bad. We obviously have the Angelics because if you're not running the Vizzo mod on your helm, you certainly need Angelics. There's just no way around it. But here's the kicker, man. This is what we're doing. Look at this crazy bullshit. We're literally running every single item that we possibly can that has added enhanced damage on it. Fortitude, Phoenix, and Steel Rend. We are sacrificing a bit here, okay? The the thing that we're sacrificing is that we we drop two break points on IAS with this. We are hoping that the digital dice treat us well and that we connect and that we hit hard. Uh, because if we don't, we're almost certainly dead. <laughs> it's it's bad, man. We we don't we don't have a lot. We don't have a lot of attack speed here, but we're like a freight train. We might not move fast on the startup, but you better not be standing on the tracks. That's that's what we're looking for. That's uh, that's what y'all that's what y'all want to be worried about. Uh, is is Toshank versus Dazer happening? Wait, as soon as it happens, dude. Yeah, I'll I'll uh, I'll definitely pop in. Still waiting for some people to uh, jump in, share their screen, and I would definitely encourage you to do that. Uh, usually, what we do is warm up duels. I have no ability to do such a thing today. Uh, so, in, unless people got some melee that they want to jam with, but uh, we have no ability to do warm-up duels. So, uh, I'll happily watch anybody that pops in, starts sharing their screen. Uh, but we are, we are heavily dependent on fighters today. Mainly because of my disability. And my physical handicap. Uh, so, just saying. All right. As soon as you're ready. But look, this is the setup, man. And I also, I was, uh, th this is Lecalize's belt. Uh, I actually still think I owe this one to him. I do have this one here in case he pops in on stream. He's like, yo, I need that belt. Uh, but yeah, I forgot to give this back to him. But I think that's the only thing. Uh, he gave me these two 13 gores, which is pretty sick. I stole a consolation prize from getting my ass kicked. Yeah, scammed. Got him. Got him. I was like, that's it, right? He's like, yup. Then left. Got him. Perfect defense, 40, 15, 13, got him. Yeah, not bad. Things worth at least 1K. I think that was an underestimation of it in the video. It's worth at least 1K. Like, at least. Another week someone dodging Gertie? I hope not. I hope not, dude. But yeah, like this is this is the thing. This is how we're gonna have to do it. Uh, unfortunately, we're we're going over here. Our our battle orders, ill such, are gonna be quite uh, slow, right? We're we're a one-handed bandit here. But uh, once we get going, man oh man, look at this damage: four point eight to twelve k. And that's with twenty-five crushing blow, thirty-five deadly strike. Not a lot of deadly strike. Not a ton of it. Not a lot, not a, not a ton of crushing blow, but enough to, you know, if if the RNG gods line up in our favor, it's kind of crazy. Like we hit like an absolute Mack truck, and this this shall be our domain. Yeah, so I'm, I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm I'm gonna be uh, part of the first set of melee duels in the DFC. And it's, uh, it's actually pretty sick. By the way, I see Jeep up in there. Oh, these guys look they, like they might be ready to go. These guys look like they might be ready to go. Oh my, they, they just going. They just, they just going. 
Oh, boys. Look, we went from no duels to... We went from zero to a hundred real quick. Let me get this, uh... Let me get this set up here for us. Let me see what's going on. Uh, oh, these guys are in the wrong channel. That's all right. I'll pop I popped into the wrong channel, so I gotta I gotta correct this. My bad. Look, I got one arm. All right, I got one arm. Uh, there we go. GG. All right, we got it. We got it. All right, it looks like this is uh, this is Jeep. I wonder if this is uh, Jeep's actual duel here. I'm going to check this out. Uh, Jeep is going up against another zealot here. I believe that his opponent, uh, Vegeta, is going to be on his melee druid. So I'm not sure if this is the official duel, but these guys are just going at it right here. These guys are in Vow. Oh, man. I might... I wonder if this is the official duel. I I wonder, or if he's switching it up. If he's if he's bringing if he's bringing the melee druid for one, and bringing the zealot for the other. These guys have been going at it for a while, though. I see some ears right here. It looks like these guys might have been, uh, and there's certainly more ears than 15 there, or like but then 19, I would say, or maybe not. Maybe this is an extremely close duel. But either way, these guys just it looks like they just might have been practicing. Uh, but yeah. Kixins are melee chars that duel versus non-melee normally. KB on Talon versus any melee is just weird matchup in BM. Does, uh, oh, does the kick knock back? The, the, the kick actually knocks the opponent back? Does that happen? Just naturally without any knockback? Kick will just knock back your opponent? If so... Oh, last kick on Talon knocks back. Okay, yeah, so just inherently banned. No shit. Okay, good to know. I didn't know that. To be honest, it doesn't matter that much, even if allowed. Kicksins can't really compete in melee versus melee unless mass venom or something, which isn't allowed for melee. Yeah. I would hate to, like, like not see Kicksins. And, and honestly, of all of the established rules in melee... Of all of the ones that I'm that I can't really wrap my head around why it's a thing, knockback is one of them. Like, is that's like the biggest one. I I don't really understand why knockback is not allowed. Like, so what if you hit him and knock him back, and then you have to walk up to them to hit them? Like, that's kind of not really a benefit for either person. I don't think. Prepping for Toe versus Me match starting in 10 minutes ish. See you soon. Thank you, Daiser. Appreciate it, man. Looking forward to it, brother. That's going to be a match right there. Apparently, like I said, Toe Shank has got some tricks up his sleeve. Uh, we're going to see if, Day if Daiser has what it takes to take on one of the most aggressive players uh, in all of Diablo 2 history. And Daiser, one of the most accomplished. And also very aggressive in his own right, dude. This is Daiser is just, he's got the classic winning DFC style. He knows how to aggress you, and he's hyper good at it. Like, just insanely good at aggression when he needs to be. But there's also duels where aggression can kind of work against you. So, uh, we're going to see which one, which side of Dazer is going to come out on this. I can imagine he's going to be pretty aggressive, because that Necro can out-distance, out-range the Sin, which is what Dazer is going to be on. Uh, but dazer has got a lot of tricks, man. He's got he's got a Whirl Girl. Uh, he's going to be getting in there, probably trying to cut his opponent open. Uh, I can imagine with some open wounds, cut him through that block, cut him through that bone armor, and I can imagine Toshank's going to be trying to keep his distance. Keep his distance, surprise Dazer with a couple of well-timed spears when he gets on the inside. I can imagine that's what we're going to see. But regardless, I think it's going to be exciting. Now, in the event that the, the match gets a little bit late, so we might just cut the more. Uh, it, it, this is a match, honestly, it's a historical match. It's nothing against these guys, but especially at the highest level of competition, sometimes the map just needs to be cut because uh, this can go for a long time otherwise. Uh, you know, especially if everything's on the line, it's, uh, you know, some of the last duels, someone's back is against the ropes. You know, that's 
That's just where it is. Look at this guy. Jeep is actually pretty decked out with this, man. He's got. A, I, I caught a quick glimpse of the items that he has in that stash. That's pretty insane. By the way, brute, my dude. It looks like it says on the screen he's gifted zero. Bro, bro gifted 10. Brute Pendragon, big cheers to you, man. Look, I don't have the alcohol today, okay? The, the reason I'm not drinking alcohol through the recovery of the of the surgery is you don't sleep as well. Uh, like, your quality of sleep is not as good. So I'm, I'm abstaining for the first, like, six weeks just because I want my sleep to count, right? Like, that's a big healing process for your body. So I don't want my liver to be taking up all my processing power during sleep. Uh, but regardless, that being the case, big cheers to you for that, Brute. Uh, I can't believe it. 10 gifted memberships. That's insane. We get sober coolie commentary tonight. This is a first. Can you imagine? It's just brain dead. Boring. No, I, I, I'm not. I'm not usually. I'm not usually plastered on a stream. Unless Muchez has donated a crucial amount of memberships. You know? That's... It's the only time in recent history, which has been, it's been a lot, it's you know, been a lot of times in recent history, but still, you know. By the way, uh, new members, official welcome to the team, thanks to Bru Bru uh, Brute Pendragon, but also, I gotta let you know, be on the lookout on this channel, I've actually started, some of you guys who were members might have actually noticed this, we did a special members only preview for, uh, for a video, I was trying that out recently to see how that worked. But I'm actually planning on doing straight members only videos, uh, mainly like starting up with trophy room videos and highlighting people's best items and telling a little bit more about them, uh, you know, as a reward for the members of the channel to hopefully encourage you guys to see some value in being a member in the channel, continue that support uh, so that if they ever do bust us for not making payments on the spaceship, at least we might be able to stave them off for another couple of weeks. And then, hell, who knows, maybe someday I'll need another bionic arm. And if that's the case, with your support, we'll be able to do it. Only fans for trophy. Basically, that's... Look, I mean, I hate to... hate to say it, but it's it's kind of true. Right? It's it's kind of true. Only fans for trophy items. But also, I want to I wanna add some value because, you know, I, I feel like a lot of times... The people that are that become members, and again, thank you, big cheers to you, Brute Pendragon people that become members they're big fans of the game as well and I want you to see some value in knowing why items are good and hopefully you'll be able to either pick them up or program your bots to pick up better items than everybody else out there because uh, there are certain people that that put some nasty ones up there and it's good to it's good to highlight them it's good to tell you the secrets but oftentimes as you guys notice on the main channel it's not enough to just do a trophy video technically the most recent video on the main channel was a trophy video. That's like the that's the concept of it. It's a it's a trophy video, but if you look at it, it's so much more, right? That's that's the standard, man. We keep raising the standard on the main channel, and it's hard. Uh, but I'm thinking that like trophy videos can go to the members and the the diehard core fans of the game on this channel, and I think it's a good way to reward you. So, uh, you know, be on the lookout for that. I'm going to be working a little bit slow with one arm, but I'm planning on getting uh, some of those up in the near future for members only on this channel. We may release them in the distant, distant future to other people, but it'll be like months worth of lag. So, like, you might see them months ahead of time of other people uh, as a member. But they're, the plan is to make them constant so that there's always some coming out that you can check out trophy and then probably other things as well uh it could be a good opportunity to highlight some of the best fights and tell you uh more about some dueling strategies so yeah there's there's a lot of stuff we could do with it like i said really want to reward you guys for being members the support means a lot especially at this time so that being the case let's all tip one back to brute pen dragon for those 10 gifted memberships oh we know it facts we know it thanks brother Redeemed 50 for show gear. Yeah, right? If this was my character, I totally would. Looks like these guys have switched to the tap zeal v zeal. There's a couple of ways to do this. The most common way that people do it is they use exile. And that's because when you connect, you connect so infrequently that you really need it to count, right? We see this a lot of times in regular HLD where, uh, you know, if back when we allowed exile, uh, you would see 
uh, paladin players just use exile versus druids because, you know, you got to make it so that your hits count. You know, whenever you hit, you're proccing that tap. And especially in melee, you might only get three or four hits against your opponent, like, you know, pretty consecutively. So you got to make sure that there's a good chance that it procs. That's why it typically you won't see people using, like, uh, the Drax, uh, you know, for, for gloves. It's just too low of a chance. You're, you'll never see it go off in, like, you know, for four or five, six duels. But with Exile, happens quite a bit more. And look at this, he's showing off gear. There it is. I love seeing a non-perfect torch there as well. Like, uh, you know, one of the cool things about melee dueling is that at least your torch doesn't have to be perfect, right? Like, the resistances don't matter. So you could have a 2010 torch, pretty cheap. Like, you could probably get that for five forum gold. Maybe less. Maybe someone will give you one. Hell, if I had one, I'd give it to you, you know? Like, it's just dirt cheap. Um, but it's a very interesting point. At least there's that. Uh, at least that small piece of your inventory doesn't have to be astronomically expensive. But yeah, we got it, Master Otis. I should have clipped it there and so we could go back and look at it. But I suppose y'all, if y'all are interested, could scroll back uh, and check it out. But uh, yeah, Jeep just showing off the gear here. He, he appears to be pretty decked out, man. Uh, like I said, I caught a glimpse of some of the things that he had in his stash, and it was pretty insane. But yeah, these guys going back and forth, really showing off the gamut of Zeal v. Zeal here. I am so happy to see Melee Duelers in here. I just think it's a real fun way to go. Uh, Master Otis, speak the devil here. I, I got a thought in my head about you. I was very impressed like to see Master Otis step into the dueling community with melee dueling look at that that's kind of reminiscent of 1.09 right there you have two players that both had proc life tap so their life totals are going back and forth uh more kind of reminiscent of what you would see back in patch 1.09 when life leech worked versus, versus players but yeah like it's just a very different style of dueling uh that doesn't deal with all of the lates and you know as much of the the prideful dueling as as anything else it's a very different very relaxed way uh, of dueling so it was really cool to see uh someone like master otis who's a you know usually he and i will theory craft some nasty pvm builds or uh, pvu builds um but it was so cool to see master otis stepping in and theory crafting a, a pvp build and he actually kicked my ass with the one that he put together uh in zvz so yeah it was really good it's really good any real duels look race it's so funny because your comment actually illustrates the inability to appease the internet. Like, do you remember the days when people were bitching about people teleporting around the blood more and they're like, yeah, oh, man, fucking. I remember the good old days of dueling back when it was 1.09. You had life leech and people would just seal. And now here we are. And now here we are. It really brings, oh man, back and forth with this here too. That life tap can save you, man. But uh, it really brings into light, uh, you know, some of the criticisms of Diablo 2 PvP. This is what I say, Diablo 2 PvP is great. It is what it is. It has its, uh, its, its drawbacks at times, but man, oh man, you can't really get much better. Melee is his own kind of fun, not for everyone. Yeah, dude, I actually really enjoy it, especially when you're really keeping track. And I think I might try to get one of these going for like a stream overlay and melee duel. So I was just thinking about this, like a scorecard so that we can actually see uh, what the score is for each player. So at any point when we tune in, when we see it, like we know what the score is. Yeah, I think that would be great because I think that actually adds a lot of intensity to a melee match because it is it's just a numbers game it's just a click and hold roll the digital dice sort of game uh so you're hoping one of two things that you've built a better character that your items are better but also if they're not you're hoping to be on the the right side of lady luck that day and i think especially if there's like high stakes such as we get a melee championship going where you know the championship is on the line uh, or possible uh fight of the night possible prizes could make that feeling even more sweet for the people that end up on the right side of Lady Luck. There it is, back and forth again. That's that's some 1.09 shit, boys. All right, I think uh, I think I don't talk. This other guy in the Discord right here might be the other dude 
jamming away in melee here. Let's cut over to his screen and see what uh, see what he's got going on. Yeah, this is this is the other other dueler, Goham in game, or Gohan. A lot of people build zealots. It's probably the most common character that people will build for melee, but there is a lot of other characters that you can build. I saw a Zon in the ZPK room. Uh, I've seen Barbs. I've seen Fury Druids. And it's... It's a bit more diversified than you would think. The, furry, the Fury Druids, I was like blown away by. I'm like, wait, can you just not beat this? Like, Fury Druids just seem overpowered as shit in melee. Like, they're so powerful. Now, technically in the DFC, there's sort of this gentleman's rule in melee dueling. Where if you're going up against a Fury Druid that you can't necessarily go after their Oak. Uh, that's not a rule <laughs> in DFC. Like, you technically could. Uh, it's a bit of a sacrifice if you think about it. Sure, it's not your typical click and hold. But it's a decision you're making in the duel. Uh, you know, do you go after their Oak and eat all of the shots while you're getting there and after you're done? All for them to recast it when you get to it? Uh, you know, how do you approach it? What do you do? Um... Technically, we might have to adjust it because we don't want people running all around the map chasing an oak. Uh, but at the same time, oh, look at this showing off the gear here. Very nice. And we were just talking about that. A 2010 torch. Beautiful. He's got charms similar to what we've got on our din. Not perfect at all. Certainly not the 32020s. Very inspirational. My inventory was uh, pretty cheap. Um, probably the, the equivalent of about when it's all said and done, combined from all the other characters, solo self found stuff and things that I've traded for over the years that I just kind of threw on a character. Probably around 3,700 forum gold for the entire inventory. So it's really good to see somebody else dueling with that, like non-perfect, like not perfect 32020s or even a perfect torch. Uh, it's really cool. I think melee is a very unique opportunity to be able to utilize some rare items that you wouldn't necessarily be able to use in any other sense. I mean, hell, we're going with a Rune Master tonight. Like, when was the last time you saw a Rune Master used for literally anything? Like, the fact that we get to bust it out and try it out here, that's pretty exciting to me. It's a it's a different uh, different form of dueling. It's, it's all based on the items. It's a true test of item power and, you know, statistical analysis in duels. Uh, in D2, but also in the DFC. You should see my charms. Oh, are they that bad, Luke? Are they that bad? Come warm up, Cooley. All right, I'm down for that. I think we might be waiting on Dazer here, but I'll pop in. I'll pop in, get a little warmed up here. Keep an eye on what's going on. All right, let me pop over. Let me see. These guys are in. These guys are in Vow 3. I would imagine. I'm going to see. I'm going to see if I can use my hacking skills and do some hacking and cracking all right we're one-handed so this is how we have to leave we can't hit escape we have to this is how we have to go go about it okay okay i'm so, the pro hacker just pro hacker dude Y'all can't tell me nothing. Pro hacker. Yeah. Yeah, I can't I can't tell you how I pull it off and you know where I get my hacking skills from, but Yeah, yeah, dude. I'm I'm totally down for some warm-ups here. I'm probably gonna get my ass beat. Gohan is level 97, which I think I've actually considered using a lower level on this stuff because it's kind of stunting on people. Like it's stunting on the 99s. It adds insult to injury, and I gotta say I love it. All right, I'm I'm gonna use the I'm gonna use the number pad because I'm working with one hand and it's like really hard to type. But uh, come on. All right, and then when you're ready, come on. All right, here we go. Oh oh, dude, look, I'm actually impressed. We did so much damage with that. Our our zeal is so slow. Our zeal is extremely slow. Look, I think it was interference from that monster. Uh, I think it was his fault. If I wouldn't have been hit by that normal skeleton monster that did, I would say, a pretty significant amount of damage, I think I would have been okay. Follow me. I think I would have been just fine. 
Oh, man, big hits, though. I think we have a small chance. I think we have a small chance today. We just need Lady Luck to be on our side for the first couple of hits. You see that, dude? Like, that second chunk right there was like... That was like, I'm going to say 65% of his life total. Like, this is certainly a... Certainly a strange way. Follow me. All right, there we go. A little bit of, little bit of clicking Chuck fuckery, but look at how slow our zeal is, man. Oh, but we got there. That was like from half to zero, dude. Bro, that's all it takes. And now we've got the fort proc, so we've got like 31k defense. All oh, the rest of these are gonna be nasty. Yeah, it's like this isn't a real duel, but it's like it's like one two. It's the it's the good old one two one two. All right, I do see Dazer up and ready to go. So uh, BRB, I'm gonna dial in to these guys. Looks like looks like they're ready to kick some ass. Let's let's cut over, shall we? This is the epic title match we have all been waiting for. This is something right here that I'm not even sure if I'm quite ready for still. But we're going to see. Who's you guys' money on? You got to let me know. Because I really don't know who to pick. But we're about to find out. In this corner, we've got the infamous Dazer, the boogeyman of the DFC. This guy finally got his DFC title, and he hasn't had an easy night since. And this is certainly no exception. Toshank, one of the most aggressive Diablo 2 players in all of the game's history. And that is what Dazer has to look forward to tonight. And allegedly, Toshank has one of the nastiest builds that's got all of the tricks up his sleeve for this defending champion. How is he gonna be able to do it? We're gonna find out if if he is. Maybe, maybe Dazer has the true answer. You never really know. You never really know. Didn't quite catch a glimpse of uh, Dazer's gear here, but if I had to guess, if I had to guess how he's gonna fight against a likely a max block Necro uh, with uh, with probably 85-20 Sorb. Like, you know, you, you can't go T-Gods with 20 Absorb, but you can go 85, like low, low in the Helm with a Wisp. Like low, low Wisp you can do in the DFC. Uh, so it's very, very difficult for a Hybrid Sin. Uh, but if I had to guess, one of the things that he might have, one of the tricks he might have up his sleeve is in recent DFC history, what we did was, you know, some people felt some type of way about it, but we took out the, uh, we took out the, uh, requirement that or, or the restriction I should say of people not being able to stack up open wounds on their sin and the thought process behind it is that we are just so sick of trappers no offense Max we love you but we're so fucking sick of trappers that we're just like you know what just do something else just just do something just do anything else it, you know, so I would guess, I I would think that uh, it's very possible Dazer might have that trick up his sleeve. He might be trying to deflight his opponent, cut him open, especially if he's got max block. Gives him a great way to get on the inside, grab a name lock, close the distance, and catch his opponent. $9.99 from Fax. Toshank number one telelock T E L E L O C K blind spark backflip F O H S M I T E cigarette T E L E L O C K. What the fuck? I wish this bitch would just try to pronounce shit. All right, like just just try to just do your best. Don't spell it out because look, her Irish is not as good as ours, facts. And I know what you're saying. Toshank certainly number one. Telly lock, telly lock, blind spot, backflip, FOH smite, cigarette, telly lock. You can't beat him on that. You can't beat him. Big cheers to you, Fax. Thanks so much for that, man. Ten bucks. Holy shit. Bro, that's awesome. Really appreciate that, my dude. Really appreciate it. GG, Fax. A big puff cheers as well. Look, I'm back on the nicotine. Look, there's certain vices. You, It's just hard to quit. Uh... 
there's a lot of other things I'm doing for the blood flow, like heavy drugs uh, and, you know, vitamin B6 and 12. All right, so we've got the blood flow taken care of. How many points allowed in Bone Spirit? 20 points allowed in Bone Spirit. However, we actually had a conversation today, uh, and, and the new melee rule sets. Oh, look at that. It looks like some serious dragon flight there trying to catch his opponent. It's, oh my god, have you guys noticed what Toshank is doing? Have y'all noticed what Toshank is doing? I think I see it. Hold up. Let me see if I can pop in and, and see this before we lose it. Dude's got an iron golem. Dude has an iron golem that he's using. Now this is ingenuity. I think, you know, I, I think Toshank is trying to get some rules changed or something. But bros, this is just fucking exciting. Like, do you remember the days when Necros would just sit back and spam from halfway across the map? I actually legit screens away. And now we've got an iron golem. This is the first, this is the first introduction. This is the introduction of an iron golem in a competitive HLD match here. This is solid. This is, we knew it was going to be spicy. We knew it was going to be solid, man. I wonder what that iron golem is. He's got the thorns aura, but that is inherent on, on every iron golem. So all iron golems will have that thorns aura. It really makes me wonder what he's got. If he's got like the, he definitely doesn't have like an insight golem. Uh, God, it's so tough to tell, man. He might just be doing like junk items. He could just be doing junk items in the more. Who knows? Like, oh, it's so crazy though. He could also be using a golem that has like some amount of slow on it. Like technically that's allowed. Like, so if you had like a, if you made it Astrion's Iron Ward Iron Golem, the Astrion's Iron Golem, you could technically have a slowing golem on a Necro. Like the possibilities are endless here. And down goes that Iron Golem. What's he gonna do now? The Iron Golem is down, and I think we're going to find out. Yeah, he's just going to re-shoot re to Blood Golem here. Now, I think if we see him push the pressure, like if we see him really look for that name lock and push the pressure, it's very possible that that Iron Golem had slow on it. Uh, and that's, you know, just mainly because if you see him pushing the pressure, that slow only lasts for so long. So he only has a limited window of time uh, to get in there and actually make that slow count. But based on his playstyle, I do not think it was a slow, like a slowing golem. Hard to tell exactly what it was, but man, that thing lasted a while. Was it the blizzard? So like blizzard on death? I don't know. I didn't catch it, man. Uh, and also, Dazer was off screen when uh, when the golem died, so that that could be very uh, a, a very good catch right there. It could be like a, a faceted, like you put a facet in a in a weapon and make an iron golem out of it. So when it dies, your opponent is frozen. Uh, typically, an assassin will take off their cannot be frozen versus necros. So if they get hit with a blizzard, which is auto target, uh, they could be forced to teleport away uh, and you know to be on the back pedal here instead of being aggressive. Um, that's because it will slow down their trap casting speed. It'll slow down uh, her IAS speed, although, you know, for, for Whirlwind, although I'm not sure if that will actually push her to the to a lower break point, especially with Burst of Speed, which she's certainly using here. But yeah, Dazer, you can see with that Chinese name, uh, the Chinese characters there, we were trying to interpret them for the longest time, but he has actually picked characters that look like number one. Uh, so it's a Chinese name that is technically supposed to be read in English. Very creative name here, and he certainly is the number one sin. Not only in the DFC, but possibly of all time. Uh, a title that we likely could have given to Bowie a while back, but I think at this point, just, you know, Bowie kind of has gone over to D4, and he's doing great over there. Uh, but I just think in the in the decorative style, uh, in the decorative sense of, you know, having so many accomplishments, so many tournament wins, Dazer has certainly achieved quite a bit, uh, and is even known in the Sin v. Sin community as just being one of the most ruthless, one of the most vicious players, so I'm gonna go ahead and say that that, that name is probably, that probably has a lot, a lot of truth to it. Iron Golem was huge plus the style points, 100%. Really would love to know what that Iron Golem was. Is he really, Kreider? 
That wouldn't surprise me, man. He was he was big on Rogue. He started up on Necro, and he and I would kind of like theory craft back and forth about PvP. And there it is, Bandit gets there, taking down Dazer in round one. Is he gonna be able to keep the streak alive? I believe these guys are probably playing on the Europe server right now, just based on Toshank's ping and also a little bit of his play style. It's hard for him to get in and, and get aggressive and launch these like these spears when his ping is so high. Uh, a lot of times you'll see that with necros that choose to get a little ballsy. In, in uh, looks like we're losing his stream here. Oh, sorry, we'll cut over to Dazer. Uh, you know, when necros get a little ballsy, that's what they do. They'll they'll kind of pop over. Oh, he might have minimized. Uh, they'll they'll like pop over. Um, and and fucking shoot some spears while the sin is close. But it's hard to do when your ping is so high because it just gives your opponent the opportunity to grab a name lock and chase you. Uh, and while Toshank is great at getting out of those chains, it's just not a situation you want to be in in the first place. Not technically. No, not technically, Max. Because technically... You could uh, you could just cast an Iron Golem, then join a game, and your Iron Golem will uh, will follow you. So it's technically not a stash pre-buff. Yeah, it's it's very odd, but it's not banned. It's I mean the skill isn't banned, and we know what's associated with the skill. So use use LR, you noob, LR, lightning resist. I forgot to set. Whoa, 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 I can't cast it from Sass. I cast it from the floor. I can't hear. Cool, he's muted. Yeah, no worries, dude. No, no, it's it's legit. Uh, I think it was really cool. That was one of the coolest things I've seen in recent history. Toshank using an Iron Golem in the DFC. That shit was wild. I gotta say, I'm impressed. I knew I knew we were in for a banger in this matchup here, but I didn't expect Iron Golem. And it's also got the thorns. So if he does do a significant amount of damage, I, I haven't caught what his claws are i would be surprised if they were anything but like chaos fury really yeah i was gonna say chaos fury um but if he does a significant amount of damage with them he could get some of that reflected back at him with the iron golem but uh yeah it, i'm not sure how much dividends it paid but we're gonna see we're gonna see we'll we'll, we'll check out dazer for this uh for the second round here and see how difficult it is to catch and really pin down toshank here Yeah, I mean, you technically could. I mean, hey, no rules against it, man. I think it's really cool. And if a Necro is going to do that, uh, they're probably doing something different, right? Like, a, a Necro's skill set, like, the literal skills that they can use is so limited. Nice whirlwind there, and another Iron Golem out from Jess. It, okay, I was going to say, it looked like some charges were built up there, and I couldn't tell if it was on the Shadow Master or if it was from, uh, or if it was from Dazer himself. I couldn't imagine he would be building up charges. Not with Chaos and Fury. But he does have that blade shield, and we do know from our, our experience, this guy actually broke this down for me in the video that we did kind of featuring Dazer's Sin. It was the Sin worth 1 million forum gold. Um, he broke it down and showed how powerful that blade shield is, especially if you start tele-locking your opponent. It can do some pretty significant damage, uh, and it can also proc open wounds. So, very important, I think, in this matchup. Days are keeping that Shadow Master up. Uh, no, I think it's completely fine. I'll allow it. I'll allow it, Max. I mean, just put it this way. Like, I think that if it was really that much of a, of a thing, especially where it's such a gray area, you would have to ban the skill. Like, we know what the skill entails, so... And it's not banned, so use it. You know what I mean? It's It hasn't become a problem. I still don't really think it's a problem. I don't think Jess is winning because of his Iron Golem. Like, he still has it out right now. Or no, he might even have Blood Golem up right now. So, with... Yeah, he's got, he's got Blood Golem now. 
So with that Iron Golem, he did a grand total of zero damage. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a troll strat for sure. I think it's cool as shit, dude. It's also thorns. Like I think that's really cool. Like for Necro versus Barb, which Necro technically has a bad matchup versus the Barb. If you think about it in other matchups, so that thorns could add a little bit of added damage, right? Like you you hit a bramble with that or something. Ooh, that's even even higher thorns right there. That could be nasty. Yeah. Oh, for sure. For sure. But put it this way. If if Necros get OP again, we'll ban them. Straight ban. No Necros. That's, what, that's how we'll have to solve it. Necros banned. Necros are now female character. All female characters banned. Well, now we've got... We, we, might, even, we might even have to write that as a, a section in the rules that people can sign up for. No girls. You sign up sign up for the, the no girls section of DFC. All girl characters, including Necro, banned. No, I'm just kidding. But no, I think uh, as it stands right now, this is how we have to look at it. We have to look at the we have to look at the numbers, we have to look at the stats. And as it stands, a Necro might be very powerful, but it's certainly not immediately visible in DFC stats. And honestly, uh, uh, on that note, uh Sound just put out a new Looker Studio setup for some DFC stats. Perhaps we can check that out after. I'm going to see if I can load that up while we wait. Um, because I, I think it's really cool to look at. Um, you can kind of see matchup data and you can see how well certain builds perform versus others. Toshank uh, sent me a message. He says, is what, am I, is what I'm doing against the rules? No. All right. Thank you, Dazer. Got the, got the game just in case we got to ref it here. And yeah, I'm, I'm looking through the, the data channel right now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can bring this up because it is really cool, man. Yeah, we, we, we'll, we'll certainly check this out after. And you can kind of see the matchups. Now, I sort of said that without really looking at uh, how powerful and how unbalanced Necro is. But it's just sort of a feeling that I get. Yeah, it, it's I'm seeing the data now and it seems to corroborate what I'm saying. It seems to corroborate like as it stands right now. Uh, and it could be on a limited data set as well, which is also something we can check out in this new thing that sounds set up. Love this thing, man. Uh, we could we could check it out. We can actually dive pretty deeply into the Necro and to see some recent matchups to see how good it actually is. So this is what I say. If a Necro wants to get creative, that's awesome. As we always say, if it's broken, show me. As it stands right now, the only thing that has been banned on a Necro is, you know, aside from like other, you know, that other rule sets don't do, is Clay Golem. Um, and it has almost single-handedly fixed to the Necro. And there it is. Toshank gets there again for round two. That is insane. While these guys get ready for this one, let me see if we can cut over uh, to the... To the Hooker Studio. Wolf, and here it is. All right, this is a little small with with uh, you know the, the font here, but this is Bone Necro. Okay, so they have this is grand total data, which may be looking at all historical data. Uh, so yeah, these are the fighters that have performed on a Necro here. Um, very interesting, right? So you see over on the on the left, like look at this. Elite on a Necro is twenty seven and three. That's yeah. This is certainly all time. Uh, just one of the most decorated Necros ever. Um, but then, as far as fighters that have, you know, the most amount of duels, we have Dirty One, who who played on a Necro quite a bit, uh, and you know was went eight and twelve. And granted, this was this was a little while back. But if you look kind of historically, and this this rule change that we made was long ago. Like so, this is probably pretty good. Tort actually performing very well on a Necro. Uh, but you can look at all the players that play on this class and what their records have been specifically on the Bone Necro. 
And from what I'm seeing, you got good, you know, a very good player like Go Gators, still seven and three. That's a that's a pretty good record on it. This guy is phenomenal on one. Cooley is like one of the best Necro players I've ever seen. Uh, and he still managed to get two fucking wins somehow. Um, yeah, so, you know, it's interesting data to look at, but that's kind of what we let guide our decisions there. So as it stands, I'm un I remain unconvinced at this point that Necro is broken. Yeah. For whatever reason, it wasn't unbanned after it was normalized everywhere, but DFC, yeah, yeah. Yep. Look, we're a little slow sometimes. We're a little slow to act. When we make a decision, sometimes we're a little slow to act. We, we like to use data, all right? We like to use data. And thanks to sound, we've got plenty of it. Big cheers to sound, man. That was, uh, that guy is amazing. He put together the first DFC statistics that we used. Uh, that we looked at before, and man, they were really cool, very eye-opening. Um, and I'm really hoping to do more with these right here. This is this is just insanely cool. Um, really good to be able to look at that, dive deeply into those matchups, and I think actually what we can do when we go back, we can actually set the date range for this, so we can look at like recent history and see Necros in recent history and how and how well they're doing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play around with it and see what we can do. I'll try to zoom in too, so it's not all like it's not all fucky. Yeah, we might be able to do it. Sound sound set up an amazing tool that we can use for the DFC. Like, mad props to them. Those, those guys, Sound, Montriana, those guys have actually been diving deeply into the data uh, and, like, the DFC statistics, trying to make that, like, more normalized, more, um, more normalized, more formalized, and more easily read uh, to people who are looking at it to figure out matchups, to figure out rules. And it's, it's probably... I would say the most powerful tool in all of the D2 PvP community. Like, what these guys have built and worked on and, and helped me with here is, like, such a powerful tool, not just for the DFC and matches here and our rule set, but really gives you a good, non-biased glimpse into PvP in general. With, mind you, a rule set in the DFC that started up as conservative as possible right and that's kind of always how we've been like less rules is more yep thank you sorry about that cry yeah it is 2-0 just so far and i believe these guys are playing i don't i don't see dazer's ping but i believe these guys are playing on the eu server dazer's from eu and toshank from uh the good old motherland of canada nice spears there from toshank and that's exactly what we were talking about. When you get these real good necros like this, and you know who aren't afraid to stay in the pocket when they when they need to, you saw this sometimes from Elite, especially when his life total was high. This guy isn't afraid to launch those spears when he knows he can get away with it, and especially when his opponent, when Dazer takes these long whirlwinds, it can really pay off because he can't change direction, he can't go any other way, and that was just a perfect angle right there. For Toshank to launch multiple spears into days or connected with a couple of them. Days your screen looks like a binding of Isaac room. It might. Let's get over to Toshank, man. Let's check. Uh, let's check out his standpoint. I think his screen got a little fucky when he was uh, bouncing back and forth um, between like other windows. But here we are. This is the notorious Toshank. And the way that he's playing, uh, th this guy, one of the most aggressive players in all of D2 history, but this matchup right here is more on the sin to kind of close the distance. Both of them have incredible range, right? The range of both of these characters is nasty. It's extremely long. As you guys know, the Necro can launch Bone Spirits from clear across the map and connect with uh, invisible Bone Spirits on his, on his opponent. It's just ridiculous. The Sin also has the power of CT casting traps and having AI do a lot of her work for her uh, as she moves further off screen. So it's... Uh, both of them have a lot of range. But in this particular matchup, Dazer is that world girl. He's trying to get in there, 
He's trying to get in there with uh, Blade Shield to proc that open wounds, to proc that additional damage, close the distance, maybe get a Whirl in there, but most importantly, land those traps at close range. So this is going to be one of those duels where Toshank is going to try to keep his distance. He'll get aggressive if the opportunity is right. But this is certainly one that favors him keeping the distance. And so far, Toshank is up. It's 2-0. I believe. It, it actually could be on the America server, though, because the way that we do it is if... if Dazer made a game on the American server and had Toshank join it. Toshank's P, uh, ping could be very similar to what it is right now. Little Shadow Bay hit there. Man, Shadow Bay, not to be underestimated, can deliver quite a bit of significant damage in these duels. And if you don't believe me, try running a character that doesn't run uh, Bone Armor and see what that Shadow Bay does to you. Every once in a while, it's not uncommon for Shadow Bay to get in there and just chunk you for 10 to 15%. Kind of ridiculous. Nice chain there from Toshank. Knowing that his opponent didn't expect it, he chose to get on the inside. Very sneaky. Trying to lull his opponent into a false sense of security. Dazer probably having nightmares from his times of going up against Vamp the Champ. Always trying to get that title. And now here he is going up against yet another formidable foe on this Necro. And he seems to be getting some damage in there, figuring his opponent out. Toshank at about a little over half life. Uh, Necro is max block. You can tell he's got the uh, he's got the storm shield on, and I just happen to know also that that uh, Jess came in with a max block Necro. Yeah, Shadow Master could cast Amp too. It's very possible because and how that happens is, you know, some people are like, "How the hell did my Shadow Master cast Amp?" Well, it's because the way that it works is when you cast Shadow Master, it actually spawns with random items. So your Shadow Master is wearing items, but they're just randomly generated, uh, and their eye level is based on the level of the Shadow Master. So if the eye level is high enough to spawn an item that can cast Amplify Damage on hit. It's very possible that that Shadow Master could hit and cast Amplify Damage. Yep, that's correct. That's exactly how it happens, Max. Has to hit with a weapon that has a 5% chance to cast Amp. Yeah, exactly. It happens rarely, even if you happened to get the item on it. It's a very, very rare occurrence, but it can happen. Yeah, one of the few ways, one of the few ways that a, a Sin can cast Amplify Damage with uh, without actually having items that do such a thing. Very interesting. The D2 itemization, man, I'm telling you, it's just better than anything else. Better than any other ARPG. Although, I haven't really dove into Last Epoch too much, dude. Max, you gotta let me know privately about the PvP in that game, man. You gotta let me know how it is. Looks like both players very low here. Days are extremely low, and so is Toshank. But it's certainly going to be an uphill battle, I think, at this point for Dazer. Being low means you can't make any mistakes when you try to get on the inside. Nice chains there from Dazer. Very nice aggression. It is just extremely difficult to catch a Necro who's trying to trap you in these Bone Spirits. Ooh, nice. Again, a big hit from Shadow Bay there. Mind Blast, certainly not what it used to be in these duels. It used to be that a Necro would have very limited outs if the Assassin got in and just held down that Mind Blast. And now, uh, the Necro the Necro can get out of that, uh, just based on the changes that came about in patch 2.4 of this game. Makes it so that there's only a limited window in which the player can be stunned in PvP. And we're seeing it right here. Uh, there's a couple of times that Shadow Master is casting Mind Blast. That's not even that's not even Dazer casting it. That Shadow Bay is very, very good at casting Mind Blast. I guess Dazer is actually at like half life. 
Nice closing of the distance there from Toshank. He had a name lock where he chose to cast a ton of Bone Spirits. And what he tried to do was encourage Dazer to stay in close uh, and just eat all of those Bone Spirits. And what he, how he did that was he teleported on top of them. He said, hey, I'm right here. Dazer wisely chose to teleport away, though, and try to break those Bone Spirit locks. Ban Bay. Yeah, dude, we've thought about it a lot, to tell you the truth. Instead of, instead of making all of these exceptions for a sin we thought about it a lot it's not really an iconic skill but then again then max tells me that warrior can also be busted and i'm like son of a bitch dude I'm like what do we do and that too without knowing anything oh man nice spear there from toshank toshank looking to take down the champion here he's using spirit of barbs here toshank pulling out all the stops using all the crazy shit I don't even know why he's using that. I think he's just stunned at this way. I, I think I think I might know. I think he he may be out of oak charges and just needs a pet. Nice hits there from Dazer. Dazer still looking pretty good with his life total. All considered, these guys are probably at about the same life total, about thirty three percent. Yeah, this is about who has more patience, 100%. Like, you know, Toshank has to work on his angle. He has to predict where Dazer is going to approach him from. He has to try to trap him in it. He has to try to... Uh, see, there it is. Once he noticed that Dazer was right in the line of fire there, he quickly went right back into it and started engaging him. He's trying to set up Dazer here. Yeah, Toshank just looking for more pets. Long duels these can be right here. But Dazer's doing a great job of chasing from angles that Toshank is having trouble predicting. Dumped all of Toshank's pets there. Toshank hasn't taken a lot of significant damage here. On his way to repping back some of that life. And now we've got a real duel, ladies and gentlemen. Both players low. Who shall rep back more? Who shall be patient? Patience truly a virtue here. This is big. If Toshank gets this round right here, uh, Dazer will have his work cut out for him in the next set of duels. Um... If he loses once, then Jess is the new champion. This is assuming Jess wins this round. If Jess wins this round, Dazer cannot give up a round in the next set of matches. And if he doesn't, though, there's a little thing called champ advantage. Little thing called champ advantage, which you may hear a little bit more of this. We're actually in the process of working this out for people who aren't necessarily the champ, but are just higher level duelers and by that we just mean who've had more dfc fights uh we sort of reward the people who are you know jamming every week regardless wins losses or anything that are just showing up putting the work in kicking some ass and for all for our entertainment but champ advantage is basically uh if in the event of a tie uh the champ advantage is that the champ wins in the event that let's say this goes 3-0 in favor of jess here and then they switch servers and Dazer takes it 3-0. If you don't beat the champ, you don't beat the champ. Oh yeah, Toshank, very talented dueler. Extremely, dude. Holy shit! $9.99 from Fax. If this was a real duel, me and my partner Zed would corner and representative to full life. <laughs> Sure would. Look, we're still working on the girl reading this shit, okay? Still working. We don't really... She, she can't really pronounce things correctly. However, I know what you're saying. I certainly know what you're saying. And it's, it's very true, you know? It's very true. By the way, facts, my dude. Big cheers to you. I think that's spaceship cheers shit right here after this. 
That's uh, that's incredible, man. Thank you so much for that 10 spot again, brother. That's huge. That's huge. Representative. She's a dumb bitch. All right, we got, we got to. I'm I'm sorry. We, we're gonna can her after this, okay? It could also be the all caps is confusing her, but she shouldn't be confused by this. In, in a world dominated by AI right now, there's no excuse. He's not using quick cast. No, no, he's definitely not. I think it's really cool that Filiac uses quick cast. Like, it's theoretically, I think quick cast actually provides a lot of benefits in PvP, but the problem is a lot of duelers didn't really learn on quick cast. It's a new way that they have to, they would have to reprogram their brain, essentially, uh, you know, to, to fight in the blood more. So I think that's why kind of a lot of them haven't done it. Um, and, and that's why you don't see it a lot, but I think it does provide a lot of, uh, you know, a, a lot of good advantages. And here we go, Toshank now at 600 life. Days are trying to make a big comeback. Days are trying to approach from angles that Jess doesn't expect so he can dodge that train of bone spirits. Yeah. Yeah, I think so too. It, it's very character dependent. Like, it's it's character dependent. I think Some people say on the Necro it's very good. I could also see potentially it, it being good on the Druid, but I mean, possibly. It, it all depends. All depends on your opponent, who you're dueling, if you're the aggressor or not. Yeah. Yeah, I've seen Sound use it. I didn't know Muchez uses it. That's awesome. Yeah, I think it has a lot of uh, a lot of benefits, but it's it's like me and Max are saying, like a lot of people are kind of stuck in their ways of you know, and including myself. It's very hard for me to use quick cast because it's just not how I'm used to it. it. Feels like I'm playing a whole new game, and it's it's difficult to like adjust to it. No shit, you can do some nutty stuff on Barb. Quick cast, good on Zon for showing. Yeah, yeah, that's sick. Nice hits there from Toshank, but he eats a little bit of damage for his troubles. And now he's cut open. This could be a one situation here. Not quite, but it's very close. Toshank at a little over 40 life. And there it is. Big comeback from Dazer. Might have just begun. He's saying, this is my title, boys, and I'm holding on to it. What an incredible duel, man. And a terrorized blood more at that. Absolutely wild. All right, asking for a map cut up in here. All right, well, I'm not sure we need one just yet, but I'll pop in just in case. I'm not sure we need one just yet. I, I don't think uh oh these guys are on the EU server. These guys are on the EU server. I just noticed it because uh well because you know it's how it is. But look, it's you know, it's kinda like what Fax said. Let's be real. All right, well, we tried our best, but in a uh, real duel, me and my partner Z would have just repped all the way to full life, and we would just pin down a Necro and probably kill him. That's probably what would have happened, honestly, uh, in a real duel. But unfortunately, uh, there's aspects of this that just aren't real. Uh, by the way, big cheers to you, Fax. Big cheers. Thank you so much for the 20 bucks. Bro, really appreciate that, man. We got the we ain't got the beer, but we got the root beer with the zero cal. Makes me feel makes me feel like I'm doing questionable things to my body, even though uh, I guess I guess I kind of am. You know, big cheers. I'm trying to pop in now, Dazer. 
trying trying to pop, but I gotta switch servers. Uh, I don't think it's necessary yet. To tell you the truth, if, if I'm being real, I don't think it's necessary yet. But uh, let's pop back over. Yeah, I might have to switch servers to join the game. Unless some, you guys have friend join on over there, I tried to join on uh, Toshank, but I couldn't. Uh, let's see. No, y'all ain't got friend join. Gonna make me, gonna make me switch servers now. All right, I'm, I'm headed your way, but I don't think it's necessary yet. Uh, I, I say we, we keep it going, and if in this duel right here we, uh, we have to map cut, we will, and especially just for time's sake, we might. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm switching right now, going over to EU. Firing it up. We on EU, boys. Big sober cheers, man. Yeah, right back at you, brother. I hear you. All right, I'm gonna bring in a character that can teleport. Not my, not my melee character. All right, it's this. I believe is the game name. Yep, there it is. All right, we up in here. We up in here. All right, I'm just gonna say in game because no map cut yet. Duels are good. But here, just in case. Jess probably worried. He's like, what? Why the fuck is Cooley joining it? Why the, why the fuck is Cooley? The fuck, man? He's like, he's like, what the fuck? All right. Uh, oh, I'll show you guys what I'm looking at. gonna be uh this is gonna be interesting okay we're on eu ping battle orders is hard with one arm all right we're just gonna we're gonna get there bro i'm thinking about doing a stream tomorrow where we see what kind of characters are fun with one hand that could be some very pertinent information Okay. Be some extremely pertinent information. All right, yeah, we we technically could cut it at Den eventually. I'm just gonna stay in here just in case. But yeah, I think we're good. I think we're good for right now. Duels have, have actually been good. I mean, this is a this is a duel that goes on for a long time. Like it, it's a, especially at the highest, most competitive level, it goes on for a long time, man. So like, sometimes you just gotta let, you gotta let him be. You know what I mean? You, you gotta let him be. I think that Toshank is doing a great job of doing what he has to do. Dazer's doing a great job of chasing. I don't see Toshank necessarily staying off screen just to, uh, just to rep life. He's engaging still at low life totals. Sometimes when he really shouldn't, like, uh, and you know he's he's an aggressive player at heart. Um, so it's, and that's and that's all we've really seen from him so far is uh it, it's this is probably not his preferred way of playing but i mean when the aggression presents itself when the aggression when the aggressive opportunity presents itself he's there with it fireball sork right click telly left click fireball bro i actually think that's a pretty good one like I know one that I'm gonna like for sure because I tested it out the other day, so it's like actually pretty fun. It's surprisingly effective. Here's the other thing: you have to like pick a build that's really strong that you don't have to pot with in PVM because potting requires you to like with one hand anyway. To unless you set it on like a mouse hotkey to go down and click the pot. Oh, 
we won't be doing any dueling, Joby. Like, no, 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 no dueling at all uh, with with one arm. Like, no traditional dueling. Melee, I'm all about. That is definitely a one-handed, one-handed character right there. One-handed duel. Uh, but I'm thinking more PVM. Like, what can we do to progress the state of my D2 experience with one hand? That's actually fun and effective. Like, Zeal is cool, but, like, it's not really an effective build. Like, I think there's better ones. I'll, t I'll give you a spoiler. I already know the gold standard. The gold standard is that fucking throw barb. That throw barb is insane with one hand. Like, it's the only time you really notice I'm playing with one hand on it, I, I can promise you, is when I have to battle orders. Like, I swap, you know, right click, hot key, right click, hot key, right click, swap back. After that, dude, it, it might, f people might be thinking that I'm hacking. It's like so smooth. Shaman Druid is one hit. No way. That could be a good, good excuse to build a Shaman Druid tomorrow, dude. Fax? Yeah, actually, probably a good person to talk to about no, uh, just one-handed, one-handed play. <laughs> Fax uses wheel for hockey's get good, bud. Fucking A, I really should. I, look, uh, look, you say get good, but Joby, it's funny. My, my mouse wheel is force move. It's just something you told me to do. All right, I'm using that based on your advice. For fuck's sake. Why don't you figure out... Why don't you figure out your own life, Joby, okay? Before you give me advice about how to set my scroll wheel. My scroll wheel is force move. Some some dumbass named Joby told me to do it. Now he's calling me a noob. That's, that's what it defaults to. Scroll wheel, I think, defaults to, uh, uh, to, like, scrolling through skills. Yeah, oh yeah, I use it. I use our D2. Oh, what the fuck? Whatever. Look, I think it happens to be really good in D2R, okay? Force move happens to be really good. A much needed change in D2R. I approve. All right, and here we go. Score right now, 2-1 in favor of Toshank. These guys are on the EU server, so the next one will be on the American server after after some one player gets to uh, three wins here. The next set will be on the American server. Probably sooner than you think, Evs. Uh, we have a, we now have an LLD sign up where like LLDs can sign up on this card. They just sign up under generic LLD. Um, so it's not ideal for like breaking down what builds they're on, but the goal is to actually focus on that a little bit more. I'm gonna try to work the LLD rule set into the actual main rule set uh, instead of having like two different places for them. Very nice uh, sneaky chain there from Jess, but it did cost him a little bit of damage from that blade shield, I think. Not cut open from it, though. Blade shield doesn't cut open, are you sure? Are you sure, Max? Number one sin. Are you sure you know what you're talking about? Grandfather of the kicksand. You sure you're not? You sure you're not fucking. You know what you're talking about with sins? Okay. I think I know a little bit more than you about sins. Alright. So apparently, Blade Shield, uh, I misspoke. It does not rock open wounds. <laughs> Don't make me link you to the Amazon piece. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I guess it doesn't proc open wounds, but it still does some pretty serious damage. Uh, yeah, like look at that. Uh, that might have been mind blast. It's hard to tell, but Jess's uh, Jess's bone armor just got chunked hard there. It's really hard to tell. So it doesn't do venom. It doesn't do anything. I wonder why then the blade shield is used in this matchup. It must have. He was telling me that in this 
like it's good to use. It probably can't hurt, but I wonder if it provides any significant advantage in this matchup. Does a bit of uh, it does a bit of venom or poison in your poison small charms. Okay. Evs, that was you. I still have that, bro. I do still have that. I saw it. I have it on my Zon, I believe, which is gonna be the next character that I think I do some jock fuckery with. And believe it or not, it actually did make an appearance in a video, but I didn't, I skipped over it. Like, it was weird. Uh, it was on the character, but I was just, I showed, like, the, the key items. And, like, I just figured people see me teleporting, so they know I have Enigma. Should have showed it, dude. Yeah, that was you, bro. Evs, Evs gave me a, a 1337 defense Enigma. Uh, dude, I'll hold on to it for the rest of my life. You know how long I tried to hunt one of those down on LOD? finally rolled one after crashing fucking 20 servers bro love that thing yep absolutely love it blade shield does help because you tele lock necro a lot but usually bone armor absorbs all of it yeah okay so the bone armor will absorb most of it but then again i mean if you can chunk that bone armor down now your mind blast is doing something until they recast it like theoretically man it can get there and with a high amount of damage that uh that blade shield can deliver i mean it's possible it's possible that it chunks off that that bone armor and does something significant it can't hurt. It's probably one of those situations where it just can't hurt. All right. Uh, I might cut the map just for time's sake. Uh, just for time's sake. It's not that anyone's really lating, but just for time's sake. Map cut just for time's sake you guys are doing great map uh, map cut at den all right I'm doing my best with one hand. One hand typing. All right, Toshank doing great. Let's peek in to Dazer's stream here. He is at full life doing great. Getting in these whirls. Y'all hear that little bit of teleporting? Those guys are teleporting around my character there. Nice chain there from Dazer. This is like watching Doom v Doom. No, I disagree, man. I think, uh, like, as, as we'll see from uh, from Dazer's point of view here, I think Dazer is is being very aggressive. Like, the traps in here can take an angle in this match where they just CT cast the traps and they try to get their opponent to run into them. But Dazer's taking a more active role, chasing his opponent down and, uh, you know, trying to get the open wounds damage in on him um, and, you know, also trying to... Uh, you know, trying to trap him in, in his five, usually not a five stack. He, he's usually just setting up two or three and trying to trap him in it. This is like, this is probably, this is prime sin play right here. Like any, anything but like late sin play. Yeah, it's, it's very good. It's just, like I said, I mean, it, it's uh, literally no matter how a duel goes, this is, if, if this wasn't clear today, it will never be clear to anybody. No matter how a duel goes, people will always complain about it in D2. It could be the fastest duel where it ends so quickly and people will be like, all right, where's the rest of the action? We, you know, we, we need more, right? Like, and you just can't deliver that all the time, right? And then you'll have, uh, duels that are like real duels like this, that, you know, are skillful. And they go on a while, but they didn't end in a couple of seconds. So somebody's pissed. We also saw melee duels where there's no teleporting around. There's no latesing at all. It's just straight numbers calc. I hope I get there. And I hope you don't. And they're over very fast. And people still bitch. Look, when are we just going to accept that D2 is the best game ever made for ARPG PvP? 
and this is what those duels look like. Yeah, big IBS hit there from Jess. Some nice, well-timed bone prisons there, too. That's something that it's uh, it's very difficult, I think, for, for some Necros to set those up effectively. And Jess does them so well. Uh, it's so hard to switch to a defensive skill that has to be timed precisely when you have a whirlwinding opponent. You have to time that bone prison just right, man. Like, you have to time it when you think they're coming right on top of you uh, and when they're in close range where that's going to count. That is the most effective use of it, and that's what we see Bandit, a.k.a. Toshank, doing. It's very, very hard to time, but it's ex ex extremely effective if you can do it. That on top of maintaining an offense at close range. And typically when you see the Necro cast that Bone Prison, they're interested in staying in the pocket for a little bit. Right? And, and that's what you see with Jess. When he's casting that Bone Prison, especially predicting when Dazer's gonna, you know, when Dazer's gonna approach at close range, when he nails it, he's very interested in staying in at close range and keeping that Bone Prison up because he knows that uh, the Whirlwind is not so effective. So you're gonna have to take some time to set up traps. And in that time, he's probably gonna land some spears on you. Yeah, no rest for the wicked. With that said, no rest for the wicked, yeah. If the player is trying to IBS, is it considered random? Good question. Yo, what's up, Graham? Uh, I had uh, I had surgery. I had rotator cuff surgery. I actually I kind of showed it off and explained it right in the beginning of the stream. Probably right after that five minute intro. Right after, I think we go right into it. If you want to scroll back, I kind of show off the scars that I've got as well. Tell a little bit about it. It's uh, it's my bionic arm. Bionic arm surgery. Map cut to inner cloister. Ah, oh, this is good. This is good. It's like I said, I mean, I, I don't think that... Uh, I, I hate cutting the map anyway, but just for time purposes, I know we have other people. We have some good melee duelers here ready to pop in. And I want to I wanna cut over and get some of those done. Uh, I see Jeep in there. We could, I could probably get my duel in with him. Because uh, I don't think... L is going to show up, so what we're going to do is uh, we, we haven't heard from him yet. We don't exactly know who he is in the Discord. So, what we're going to do is just uh, is just switch that match out to me. So that way, Jeep has technically two duels whenever uh, whenever Veg shows up. I can hear Toshank spamming by that uh, spamming by that den. Toshank could be very low here. Let's let's actually check this out. He could be very low. He's not. No, he's at about half life though. Johnny Dubs, what's up, my dude? Big cheers to that. Yeah, and traps really aren't that random either. They're strategically placed, and then AI takes over. So they're actually pretty intelligent shots. Extremely intelligent. But I, I mean, random traps are like when they shoot once and then they travel for 17 screens and connect with you while you're teleporting away. Now that is some random trap, but far, it happens far less, I think, than like IBS. See, IBS randomness is when people are spamming in multiple, like multiple directions, either like right now Jess was doing it, but it was because he had a name lock. So his opponent was teleporting around, uh, you know, so and he's trying to home in on him. Uh, but if they're just spamming in, like, random directions, especially with, like, two or three trains, like, you see how Jess is pinpointing where his trains go? He's trying to funnel Dazer into a very specific spot. Being very evasive here, though. As he kind of needs to be, man. Like I said, probably not Jess's preferred playstyle. But certainly something the Necro has to do. He could get obliterated here by Dazer if he makes one mistake. By random, I mean unpredictable. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Inner Cloister is very fun, dude. We we have uh, we have thrown some people to the outer cloister. Maybe Inner is just better. 
Maybe Inner is the, is the second... The second arena of the DFC. Nice hits there from Dazer. None of them... None of them actually cut Toshank open, though. He's getting away, not getting clipped by that, uh, by that open wounds, which is, I'm sure... Uh, discouraging for Dazer because he got in with some very nice hits there. Oh man, that was a nice spirit train there. Hard to tell if it connected. Let's check and see how, how Dazer's looking. Dazer at above half life here, probably about 60%. Getting some nice chains, being very patient, hunting down Toshank. I think after this set right here, what we'll try to do is just jet into me versus Jeep. I'll send I'll send Jeep a message. Gonna switch your duel with L. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to switch over to that, uh, and that way while these guys switch servers and get set up into their next game, uh, we could get our melee match in the first melee match of the night. I think that'd be sick. Uh, right now it's two one in favor of Bandit, aka Toe Shank. GG, yeah, that's awesome, dude. Yeah, Jeep is ready to go. Yeah, we we switched it out because. Uh, Oh, this guy's name is I am L. Oh, oh, never mind. Oh, never mind. All right, never mind. That is L. The the, the dude's dueling earlier. That was that was Jeep and L. Oh, okay. All right. Well, fuck it. I'll I'll I'll, I'll duel again. I'll duel. I'll duel one of you guys. We'll make it official. Yo. Can, can one of the mods give uh, I am L the DFC dueler role? I could do it, but I have to like fuck around with it and stuff. And I'm I'm handicapped, and I have a bad arm. Thank you, Joby. Oh, and there it is. Dazer ties it up. It's now two two. Toshank says, I figured you out. Dazer says, got him. <laughs> the shit talk begins. Wow. So curious to see how this next round is going to go. If Dazer takes this, no matter how this goes, the next set on the server, that's why we'll, we'll have plenty of time, uh, you know, to get a, a melee match in. Because no matter how this next round goes, the next set on the American server has to go to three. Like, someone has to win three times. It's insane. Chat PK begins. <laughs> Jeezy Sin style confirmed. Bro, I love Toshank. But Dazer has the least cheesy sin I know. Like, look at his play style. Like, this is... I think this is exactly why we allow open wounds on this shit. And that's probably what he's referring to. Um, like, he's cutting him open without open wounds. But, dude, it allows him to push the pressure. And especially with a sin that's chasing and closing the distance. You love seeing that, right? Like, especially in the real duels where people will rep back a very significant amount of life. Like, it's, it's something that... Like, we love seeing the sin play like that. Tell me this isn't, like, I know the stool is long, but, like, tell me this isn't, of of all the types of sin play we've seen over the last 12 months, some of the best trap sin play we've ever seen. Like, <laughs> this, is, this is why this guy's the champ, man. He's very good. Very, very good. Yeah. Battle of the Broken Players. 
Oh shit! I, yeah, dude, I'm down for that, Bruno. I'm down for that. We'll have some melee matches here. I I, I actually want to tune in. I I didn't know that uh, that that was L over there. My bad. Uh, we'll get you the DFC dueler role here, bro. Uh, and then yeah, I'll, I'll just uh. Okay. We'll tune in. We'll tune in to you guys after this round. Yeah, I had no idea. We were looking for him in the Discord. We were like, who the fuck is L, man? Who who is L? And there was like multiple names. Like the way that uh the way that Arena GL works is like sometimes it will switch the name. It's like L, and then it's uh like it'll show one name as L, then it will show another name on another screen as something else, and then you have to go and figure out what their Discord name is too, uh, to try to track them down. Naming has always been hard on Arena GL, but uh, we were we were at a loss with this one. We thought we figured it out, but we got it now. Yeah, I'm totally down for that, Bruno. I'm actually, happy to yeah, like. So in case you didn't know why Bruno's saying that, Bruno also busted up here. Bruno recently had a a, a medical something medical happen to him. Uh, it, you know, unexpected. Probably also requires some sort of surgery, I'd imagine. Um, but yeah, very a broken player, man. Two broken players going at it. Yeah, that's what it was. I didn't want to say it. I didn't, you know, I didn't want to reveal your medical history out there, Bruno. But well, to keep it very general, out of respect. But yes, Bruno had a hernia. Will likely require an opera. I, I, I'm not sure how they solve those. If it's like an operative, I can imagine it's like an operation. Yeah, no worries, Odin. I, I had no idea either. I had no idea either. All right, these guys going in on the fifth round on the European server. It's going to be 3-2. But for who? But for who? In the event, this is extremely odd. Uh, just want to let you know. In the event of a draw, this is this is actually a very technical question that I'm thinking through as I'm saying it. So I'm not actually sure what happens based on the rules. So, in the event of a draw here, not to say it can happen or will happen, What happens? I think I know the answer. What do you guys think? In the event of a draw, if these guys beat the piss out of each other and they both die in the more, what happens? Jess must smoke a sig before each round, yeah. <laughs> All right, this is what I think we'll do in the in the event of a draw. Like here, I am painting things into rea into reality, materializing things that probably shouldn't happen. But in the event, it's just three three. It would not end the duel. So it's three three, and they switch servers. Yeah, and then the real duel is on America. Yeah, I I think it goes three three, and then the duel ends. Well, this this set ends. The duel would not end. So it goes 3-3, three, three. one player reaches 3, both players reach 3, and then it's just FT3 on America. Yeah, I would agree. I think I think that's how it should happen, Punch. It would not end the duel. And the duel would have to go to 3 on America regardless. It would not change the what the result would have to be on America. The round would just end. In no way would it even remotely affect or end the duel. Yeah, I, we have seen him use some DF, honestly. Uh, he does that to catch. He does that to possibly proc open wounds as well. He's using it. But you also have to use it... Like, here's the thing with Dragonflight. It doesn't quite work like it did in LOD. Dragonflight is one of those auto-target skills. So, it, it used to be in LOD that if you would click Dragonflight and your opponent was somewhere, it would just teleport you to them. But in D2R, much like FOH, Dragonflight, you have to kind of click semi-close to your opponent. 
Like, you kind of have to click in the general direction of your opponent. I think regardless, at 2-2... Two, two, hold on. Let me think about this. Because of what we just said, shouldn't they just go to NA right now? Because regardless of who wins this, the result is the same. The winner has to get to three. Right? Because of champ advantage. Right? It, it, like, it doesn't matter who wins this. This, this, duel, this actual round is pointless. Okay, so if Dazer wins this 3-2, then Jess will need to at least 3-1 on NA. I see. Okay, yeah. So if Dazer wins... Yeah, okay, it makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. Sorry. All right, yep. Logic is hard. Look, I only have one arm, okay? I only have one arm. If I had had both, I would have figured that out faster. Jess staying off screen. Yeah, where's Jess? Jess is in the corner. Jess is, Jess is in one spot being like, yo, Dazer, come get me. He's going to these corners, though. He's going to these corners. He's trying to use these corners to limit the amount of angles that uh, Dazer can approach him from. Interesting strategy, and he's also pinching... Like creating like a pinch point at the start of those little boxes too, uh, you know, to make it so that if Dazer does pick the wrong angle to approach, he's dead. Probably some flashbacks, like I said, of Dazer v Vamp. But I, I gotta say, even those duels with Dazer were insane. Like they were long, but they were very close. So, that being the case, like, I think we can at least make the argument that Jess is probably the best Necro we've seen since Elite. I think that's pretty safe to say. He's giving the top, a top-tier Sin, a top-tier Dueler and the DFC champ a run for his money. Oh, look at this. I see what Dazer's doing. Dazer might be trying to set up a little trap of his own. He's setting up some traps just in case uh, Toshank comes in and tries to punish him for casting battle orders. Nice hits there from Dazer. Let's check. Uh, let's check Toshank's screen. And see how he's doing. Toshank, probably about 60, 70 percent health. With one arm, you could always do a PK stream. Nah, dude, I would get killed. I need to pot. I would need to pot. I could use my charger, but I still need to pot. Score right now is 2-2 on the European server. Very close matchup between these guys. Yeah, math is hard with a chicken wing. I'm glad somebody understands. Some, like, some people would call me stupid for you know saying that like that you need your arm to do logic trust me it's like people that talk with their hands you know what i mean it's like just logic with your hands it's logical just trust me makes sense very very close toshank playing this round a little bit safe but he's still uh he's still losing the battle so far Trying to play it safe, trying to utilize these corners. However, Dazer is kind of... He's getting the better of him in these exchanges. That strategy not necessarily working for Toshank here. I can't carry anymore. <laughs> what do you say? Hostage? Oh, oh, oh. 
Oh, oh, so one of his friends joined up on the game thinking it's like some duel game or something. Like, oh, you guys dueling in here? Does <laughs> that ever happen to you guys? You're like MFing in a terrorized cold plains or some shit. Your buddy pops in, they see you in Act 1. Like, oh, what's up, bud? Hostile. <laughs> we dueling in here? Interesting angle here from Jess. Flooding that corner with bone spirits. He's trying he's trying to duel in a fishbowl right here. And Dazer wisely just casting traps, trying to force him out of that corner. And he does. Very nice sin play here from Dazer. Just his uh, ability to, to affect and to manipulate what his opponent has to do, the angles that he has to go, and then just to have those traps ready to go uh, and potentially do some damage, even right there. Very nicely done. Just really dictating where Toshank is going with these traps. Toshank with his back against the ropes here, looking to find a safe angle. Nice hits there from Dazer, and Toshank cut open. He says, no balls, no balls. He was ready to stand toe to toe right there. And wisely, Dazer gets out of the way. He had a million bone spirits chasing him. Stand your ground and fight, bro. This says Toshank, he's been on both sides of the map this whole duel. But he wanted to engage there, that's the thing. And that is the, the juck fuckery, right? Uh, that is the juck fuckery that you have with this. You have uh, these traps that Toshank is trying to set. And when finally Dazer takes the bait, that's when Toshank wants to stand toe to toe. And that's what we were talking about earlier. He's gonna be opportunistically aggressive. And that was the time, but Dazer wisely noticing that he does not have the advantage there tries to get in <laughs> no balls toshank with the chat pk i love it this is strategic shit talk my friends he's trying to tilt dazer here trying to get him off his game but dazer doing a great job man Why is Toshank gapping 20 points in spirit? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Very good point. 20 point spirit. By the way, speaking of which, uh, me and Primo were talking earlier. And I think I started alluding to this this uh, a little bit earlier too and we got distracted. But uh, the rule set may soon include uh, an, an FPK setup. Like it may it may include an FPK section where uh, traditional FPK rules for certain matchups are are uh, employed, which will let people know ahead of time. Like if we know that they're FPK duelers, could set that up where we would probably dial back. Uh, I'd have to double check what the uh, what the requirements are currently for like trap sins and shit. But those those trap sins are a problem. And he's cut open again. Dazer doing a great job of whittling his opponent down and weathering the storm of the chat PK. And now he's cut. He's below 600. Oh man, potential death trap right there from Dazer. But Dazer's gonna have his work cut out for him on the American server, even if he wins this. Dazer's gonna have his work cut out for him. And another hit. Looks like it might have tagged his golem there, though. Great angle there. And and uh, so what Jess did was actually teleport on the other side of, uh, of Dazer. One would think. I would be a little scared to do that, to close the range there. But he knew. Jess realized that those traps were not in the right spot. And that he was completely safe to teleport behind his opponent. Very quick and almost like unnoticeable decision there that Jess made, but very high, like very high level. 
and this is something that Max talks about all the time, half the battle of dealing with a trapper is having a good understanding of where his traps are. You're giving me AIDS, he says. <laughs> Trying to chat PK. Is Nazer going to capitalize on this, though? No bone spirits being launched here. 102 DFC has everything. Drama, comedy, and a great fight. Dude, I would completely agree. Days are now quite low in life. Toshank closing the distance and pushing the pressure there, even at low life. Using those teeth, trying to chew him down, dude. Very, very, teeth are very effective versus sins, but especially when they're low, they're extremely effective. Pedal to the metal, baby, hell yeah. He says that as he's teleporting away, he typed that with one hand. He's stunting, see, you see how good of a chat PKer I could be if I had both hands? I could teleport and type. I think that will be my new D2 goal after this. Yeah, I would agree. The, the Necro can stack up a bit more life rep efficiently. Uh, a little bit more efficiently than the Sin can. Now, the Sin with the right gear can stack up life rep. And I believe if, if his gear is even remotely similar... If Dazer's gear is remotely similar to what we saw in the Million Dollar Sin or Million Forum Gold Sin video, he certainly has enough, he, he has gear to get him to a pretty reasonable amount of rep. Um, I would guess probably somewhere around 37 or 38. Um, and that's with his, uh, oh, I'm sorry, 27 or 28. Um, and that's with his rings and amulet. Now, depending, he could have also switched boots as well uh, and stacked up the life rep. That's also a, a viable option here, I think. Uh, you are giving up the two to shadow disciplines from your uh, from giving up shadow dancers there, uh, and that is gonna that's gonna affect your claw block a little bit. It could take it down a percent. Um, but when it comes to these long grindy duels, certainly not a bad call. Oh, one hundred percent, he does. Like, this guy has gear. I remember seeing an amulet from this guy that had, like, it was a 220 amulet with 10 rep life and, I believe, life on it or something. Uh, just a very nice amulet, especially for a duel like this. And, of course, the, you know, the, the long duel-style rings where you have, like, the 10 cast, you have the stats, you have the life or the rep life, uh, and maybe mana in there as well. Like, there's a lot of things that you can have on those rings as well that will really stack that up. I can I can promise you, Dazer's probably got his fair share as well. But it is harder to stack up on a Sin than, say, just throwing on a, uh, you know, a Hodo and uh, some, like, your rings or your boots on a Necro. You can get up there pretty quick. But it's a lot harder to do it on a Sin. You need some very specific gear and some very expensive gear. You think so, Flutter? You think so? I, I would guess so as well. I, I would guess he's probably even gone as far as putting on the boots with rep life, like knowing that this is going to be a duel of attrition. But he is very low, and now Toshank notices that, and he's going straight with those teeth, dude. He might get it, man. Those teeth, those teeth is, are doing some serious damage. And it makes it so that every time he tags him with those teeth, it's like all of the rep life that Dazer might have is just negated. Jess gets caught with a trap, but luckily a low roll on that trap. Nice teeth there and a clip from Dazer, but doesn't cut his opponent open. He's really hoping for that now. He's really hoping for like some sort of high end hit. Uh, that's going to do some damage and cut his opponent open just like that. And that's going to bring him down quite a bit. That's going to bring Jess down into PK range. It's not going to bring him to one, but it's going to bring him close. Now Jess is potentially one or two trap hits away. And certainly with uh, another whirlwind hit. 
he's he's almost certainly dead with uh you know either another world or uh you know and the world will kill a necro um the whirlwind will kill a necro at one life even through bone armor and that's because if you have venom and you're doing poison damage poison damage always does one damage so if your opponent is at one life and uh, i say this just based on what i know i've never seen it happen but max please correct me if i'm wrong i'm pretty sure that's how it works like poison will always do one damage i know that uh like it was how i killed llama through his bone prison or his bone armor uh in dfc 100 like he had uh he was one life i shot him with an arrow uh the the arrow did poison damage poison always does one damage uh so it was able to kill him through it yeah poison can kill at one hp that's that's what i thought yeah so if he does happen to one jess here uh, a whirlwind with venom active will get through the bone armor yeah these guys are insane man it's so easy to overlook it because like i said some of these duels can go long and it's like you know some sometimes people think that because they go long there's lating it's anything but man this is probably the pinnacle of high level neck v sin play like this is the best of the best both of these guys playing on these builds with a very exciting duel like this is this is a dueler's duel right here this is this is a true dueler's duel like the people who truly understand not only the art of fpk but the art of pvp this is this is an exciting one let's go over to dazer's standpoint here check out how it looks on his end and man oh man this is getting down to the wire who is gonna take it both players very low uh it does futter but the problem with psychic hammer is that it could potentially if it doesn't do enough damage be absorbed by spirit now that being the case jess doesn't have spirit so psychic hammer is an auto kill uh if he gets him one so that's actually that's actually a good point uh, if he had spirit shield on it would it would absorb the damage from psychic hammer and it might not kill him but jess has chosen to go with a max block setup where he does not have spirit so that certainly will do one damage where did his health numbers go oh man yeah i'm telling you he lost a lot of life quickly probably from those pinch points that uh jess was setting up from the corner there Got disconnected, but we back. Incredible name lock there from Dazer. Wasn't able to capitalize on it with a whirlwind there, but incredible. And now Dazer dancing in the thick of some nasty bone spirits. I think he's he's no longer teeth PK, that's for sure. He's done a great job of avoiding those. So he's in he's sort of in the safe zone with that but those teeth are still gonna mount up and do some damage nice chains there from dazer yeah this is incredible i mean everybody knows how good this is this was such a good match for so many reasons because i think there's a lot of people out there who know how good of an fbk player jess is and it's so good to be able to see uh you know and to be able to actually test dazer and for people to see it right for people to see how good Dazer actually is. Uh, a lot of people thought maybe it was a fluke uh, that he boot, that he beat Muchez because Muchez is just the sin killer, man. This guy has only been beaten by one sin and that was Max. And a lot of people are like, oh man, well that was some kick sin Max block cheese shit, right? I say it was very strategic and Max played to his outs, but regardless, okay? Muchez, aside from that, is the sin killer. There are no hybrids. This guy was ripping up hybrids left and right. It wasn't even close. And Dazer made it look easy. Dazer made it look like this is how this match is supposed to go. A lot of people thinking it might be a fluke, knowing how good he is. But there it is, man. Jess gets there, making it 3-2. And now Dazer is going to have to secure himself three wins on NA. And while we wait for these guys to switch servers here, we do have our first ever melee match ready to be thrown down. These guys have waited so patiently. Thank you guys so much, uh, Jeep and L. You guys are, are the best. Uh, thank you so much for waiting and being so patient through that. While these guys switch servers, feel free, by the way, Dazer and Toshank, to start your duel. That one's going to be a long one, uh, you know, and it certainly won't end before this one does. Uh, so 
feel free to start it and we'll we'll kind of pop in after like the first round or two. Yeah, I think so too. I, I loved seeing uh, Muchez versus versus Zaychek or Max. It was just so well done. Uh, you know, Max is a sin player, a sin expert. And this guy, when you put him up against unwinnable odds, this guy just knows how to do it. Like he knows what he has to do to play to his outs. He knows how to do it. All right, these guys just jumping right in, right into the action. Jeep with a big comeback there from his, that's the power of melee right there, man. Looks like he's using Phoenix. He's got himself quite a savage setup here. He was low, but that's that's literally the, the mystery of melee. You really never know how it's going to go till it's over. That was nasty. Like one zeal. I'm pretty sure that was one zeal. Like just all connects goes from 100 to zero. Not one hit, but one zeal for sure. Can Jeep get there again? It's now 2-0 in this FT10 matchup in favor of Jeep. We saw this guy with an absolute decked out character here. He has some nasty rares in his stash. Uh, I believe he's using some sort of Berserker Axe. It could be... It could be uh, EDC or it could be some E-Rep Rare. Oh my god, dude. And a nasty comeback from him again. Shuring this up at 3-0 so far. Dude, melee is nuts, man. It's so crazy to see this. It's so crazy to see that if you do this kind of damage, you can really make those comebacks. It's just, it all depends. This is all a roll of the digital dice, man. Currently 3-0 in favor of Jeep. Going up against L in this Zealot versus Zealot match and a near flawless victory for Jeep. Trying to run away with this. This character is nasty. I cannot wait to see these items after. I hope he shows these off because this is just insane. Like, and granted, this being the case, I just want to point this out. When I went up against Casino, and y'all might have seen some of the start of it there in that, in that duel that we had, it was 4-1. It was 4-1 in my favor. Right, and th what it is right now is it's it's 4-0 in favor of Jeep. Is it 4-0 or 5-0? Holy shit, this all happened so quick. But this, I mean, that can turn around very quickly. Uh, you know, that's that's basically what happened with Casino and I. I got to four wins very quickly. I think it was either 4-0 or 4-1. And oh my god, like it just turned around so quick. That's very well what we could see here. I believe it's 4-0. Now it's 4-1. L trying to make, uh, or 5-1, yep, sorry, okay, they are correcting me here. 5-1. That's why we need to get those scoreboards up, dude. Yeah, I'm gonna do that for future melee matches, we'll have the scoreboards up. I kinda like having those regardless. Like, maybe we'll do them for all matches. Oh, and there it is, man, now it's 6-1 in favor of Jeep. Check Dazer chat. Check Dazer chat. Uh, told me need to finish the set right now in NA or could delay into next days. Already pretty late for me. Oh yeah, days are sorry. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, just. Oh, do you need to finish it right now, or could you delay? Is what you're asking for? Y'all, y'all could delay, man. Like if if y'all want to delay, that's fine. We have seen an incredible match so far, bro. I know it's super late. Dazer is tuning in and, and doing this from uh, from EU, and it's like 2.30 in the morning over there for him. So, yeah, bro, feel free to delay it. Thank you for dueling, bro, and for letting us see that. That was an incredible match so far. Y'all are doing great. You love seeing it, man. Uh, yeah, feel free to delay it. We'll tune in. Uh, we'll make sure everybody knows the Discord in case they want to uh, pop over and check it out. Yeah, yeah, no worries, dude. No worries. I think that was fucking awesome. Yeah, let me know when you do it, though. I, I do like to uh, referee the uh, the championship bouts, just in case. Toshank, disagree? That's okay, man. No, no worries. No worries. I think a virtual round of applause for these two. I have to pound on the chest because I can't clap. But virtual round of applause for these guys. They put on an incredible match so far. It's been a very long draining one. I want to give uh, some other people the opportunity to duel here as well. Uh, you know, and, and to be seen on stream. Um, I would look, if you guys are going to duel, we'll gladly pop over to it after this match right here. Uh, but bros, that was an insane match. Like insane. It's now 8-3 in favor of Jeep. He's trying to run away with this. 
trying to run away with it. And he's very close. 9-3 in favor of Jeep. Toshank taught me how to play. For coaching, I want coach win. There you go, man. Can Jeep do it? There it is. A 10-3 win. Making Jeep the first ever melee win in the DFC. And now he's going to show off this gear. It is. It is a E-Rep Rare Axe. This thing is insane. Look at this. He must be making up his IAS somewhere else. Because I believe you need 40 IAS on this Berserker Axe. To, yeah, there it is. He's got some more uh, IAS here. Probably some more on the gloves. An incredible helm there. Life. The Vizzo mod. Insane gloves. Wow, look at this, man. Those even have the defense bonus there, too, which is uh, very sought after in Melee. Uh, it's one of those hidden stats. Useless on a lot of builds, but on Melee characters, very, very sought after. Very nice, man. That shit was solid. And we see our first ever Melee win in the DFC. Congrats to Jeep, man. That shit was savage. That was absolutely nuts, man. Very cool to see. Very cool to see. And this is what, uh, let's pop over to IML here real quick. He, uh, let him show off his gear. See what he was, see what he was rocking. He got, uh, 10 3 here. But some tells me this guy is, uh, quite experienced in the melee field. Here it is. He's got himself a Zerker Axe. No IAS on it, but he's got the Fool's Mod. Put a low rune in it. Very sexy axe. Holy. And another Vizzo Helm with 29 strength, and he's got two 4015s in this. That's, that is so nice. 29 strength, Vizzo mod, two socket, beautiful. And a, not a perfect, not a perfect fortitude there. Oh, and he's re-rolled that a couple of times. A lot of people look at the resistances, they see 30, I think it's perfect. That that life roll is is pretty important. 40, 15 and a perfect, not non-perfect uh, SS right there. Perfect Raven, near perfect, 212 Gore Riders, love it. This guy only did that because he doesn't like odd numbers. He doesn't like 213, he doesn't like odd numbers. Very nice, two, uh, 40, 15, 13. And, ooh, beautiful, 268 Steel Rens with 20 strength and 60 enhanced damage. Those are beautiful, almost, those are almost 100% perfect. Though I, I'm pretty sure, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think it's, I think it's 270 is perfect on those. Yeah, he says no need perf to win in melee. It's 100% the case, which I'm, I'm hoping uh, I'll be on the receiving end of Lady Luck with that tonight uh, and get some melee dueling in here. Uh, and hopefully my jank build that is definitely not perfect maybe can get us some wins. Very nice, guys. Thanks for showing that off and congrats on the first ever melee duel in the DFC. I think it was a good showing of this, man. Uh, now, you guys should have the uh, the DFC dueler role in there now. You should see this channel called DFC Results. Now, feel free. This is what we do. I know I uh, there was a lot of newer players at the start of this card, and I didn't really explain this uh, as much as I should have. But uh, this is this is how we roll. You guys did great for me being an asshole and not explaining anything. Uh, getting right in there and sharing your screen, letting us see your perspective. That was great. That's usually what I tell people. Uh, so thank you for doing that. That was awesome. What we do after the duel is just go into the DFC results channel and just post the results. This is how we do it. Uh, so we would post, like, for example, uh, Jeep Jeep wins uh, versus L10-3 melee. Like, you know, and or, and if you want to get more specific, let us know. Zeal v. Zeal or whatnot. Uh, don't type ZVZ. That's That means something totally different in HLD, all right? But just let us know. And the reason we do that is because I would love to get an ongoing uh, melee competition here in the DFC. And it lets us know who's defeated who, who's gone up against who. Uh, and it can kind of allow us to have championship bouts eventually to see who has the best melee records and how they do against each other and who deserves that beautiful title of melee champ in the DFC. So, uh, yeah, just pop over to that channel. You guys both should see that now. Just DFC results and post them there. doesn't have to be anything too specific, uh, you know, too, too uh, uh, formal. Just Jeep wins over L10-3. Zeal v. Zeal. Melee.
Uh, if days are won on Europe or even lost on NA, then uh, it's fair to delay it. Well, here, the thing is, Toshank, the, the round has to go to 3-2 regardless. Like, so, at this point, the rest of that duel is going to be very long. Like, that, the first half of that lasted two hours. You know what I mean? Just about two hours. So, I can kind of get behind delaying it just in the spirit of other people being able to duel. You know what I mean? It, it's great. I would completely agree under under regular circumstances. I would love to see the rest of that. But also, we got to figure Dazer's like dialing in from Europe, dude. And just out of respect for, for European players uh, and everything, I think so far from both of you, we've seen one of the most amazing fights. Like, that was insane. An insane display of skill from both sides. So it's like, I can totally get behind uh, delaying it. it. It sucks. It's not ideal. But, uh, dude... Totally get it. I uh, shall play on Sin only from now on. <laughs> I get it. AFK. <laughs> no, like I said, don't take it the wrong way. I think uh, I think both of you guys played incredibly well. And honestly, of all I was we were saying this too, of all sins that we've seen play, it's very rare to see a sin play so aggressively like Dazer did. Now, granted. He didn't engage Toshank when Toshank wanted to be engaged, but that was also very strategic. When you have a ton of bone spirits chasing after you, you're probably not going to stay there. Makes sense. Makes sense. But this is this is how I would take it, dude. I mean, we could even we like we could finish it whenever. Uh, I'll be jamming tomorrow. I'll be streaming probably earlier in the day. If y'all are around and want to do it, then I say go for it. If not, no worries. I know y'all y'all are working or, uh, you know, it's it's Friday. But, bro, I would love to see the other half of that fight, no doubt. But uh, I completely understand. Completely can get on board with delaying it. Like, with all the factors considered, like, come on. It, it totally makes sense. I will one hand NVD you into the dirt right now. Dude, no doubt. Toshank's fired up. This is why Toshank doesn't want to delay. Toshank is fired up and he's in the zone. He's got his rhythm down. He's figured out Dazer. He's figured him out, as you can see in that last round. He's figured him out. And he's like, I'm keeping I'm, I'm gonna keep this going. You've activated the god mode of, of Toshank. Yeah, that would that would be on Twitch, Odin. But I'm not sure if it'll happen. It'll only happen if uh you know, if those guys are around and want to do it, I'll gladly stop whatever I'm doing to watch the rest of that. Toshank, more like no rank. Look at this. Facts. The new dopest rapper of the East Coast. Watch out, y'all. Or oh, wait, West Coast. Who is doing right now? Good question, Max. This is Lamp v. Gertie, I believe. This is the notorious Lamp v. Gertie match. Uh, yeah, this is Lamp screen. He's going up against Dirty. So this is the second... second. Uh, we, we've gone right in order from the top of the card so far, almost. Uh, this is Gertie v. Lamp. And this was... This right here was the match where there was a lot of shit talking going on. Uh, 410, is that allowed? Hold up, let me, let me double check. He just showed 410. I gotta double check my own rules. Cold res. 410. Nailed it. Nailed it. We rarely see that. We rarely see that these days. People go to 410. Uh this was let me see if I can find the exact conversation where this where this went on. Because this was this was some shit. Let you know the hit. Let, let you know a little bit about the history of this, of this matchup right here. I was tagged in on this conversation. Yeah, here it is. One, one, uh, Lamp says this. He goes, "Match me with Gertie. We do Gertie Blizz me on sin. Gertie keeps saying Blizz is OP and needs ban. I will destroy his Sork so he can shut up, or he can actually prove his point." Question mark. So, this right here is the grudge match of the night. C 
Sin v. Blizz. Is it as powerful as they say it is? Does Gertie need to, and I, and I quote, shut the fuck up? Or is he going to prove his point? Gertie on the Blizz, man. Uh, Blizz hits so hard. But I, I mean, currently, I believe, uh, in all fairness, the, the cold stack rules are pretty fair. Pretty, pretty decent, right? Like, as decent as they can be to provide fairness for both sides. And so far, it looks like it is 1-0 in favor of Lamp on the Sin. So, so far, man, Lamp is, Lamp is setting up good. Lamp, Lamp has proven his point. But, will he continue to? Or are we going to see Gertie go into previous DFC champ mode and start shit stomping? Can Tempest and me go? Wait, what, what happened? Did he quit? D did he qu DJ! D did, he, did he quit? What, what happened? Oh, he said uh, he's he's gearing. Oh, he's he's gearing up. Okay. He's <laughs> it loses loses fucking loses quits. He goes BRV gearing up. The fuck? <laughs> the fuck is this shit? Well, Gertie always pushing the limits of these rules. Oh, always pushing the limits of the DFC. Marvel couldn't play. Yeah, they're switching out. Marvel's getting in there. Well, we just want to see some action. Look. We'll give him a little bit. <laughs> if he ain't back, I'm just going to give it to Lamp. <laughs> All right, this is... Uh, oh, my gosh. This is... Uh, uh, Vegeta, I believe is how you pronounce this guy's name. He is on a Fury Druid. We just cut over to his stream here. Another melee match. And I believe... I believe I'm going up against him here tonight. This is... He has a couple of matches. He's got one versus L. Who just took the L versus Jeep. But you know what? Maybe he'll be able to come back and prove himself once again. Oh, wait a minute. Hold up. Yeah, okay. That's, that's what it is. Yeah, all right. No, you're right. It's Jeep. Jeep was supposed to duel me. That's right. Never mind. Jeep was supposed to duel me. I get it. And then Veg supposed to duel Jeep. I get it. All right. Yep. Just had to just had to reset there. Yep. Veg is dueling Jeep. So this is actually this is big. So we have Jeep, the winner of the previous match. Yep. There it is. Okay. Going up against Veg. Okay. This all makes sense now. My bad. All right, let's check out this melee round. Oh, after this, we'll we'll just cut over. If if Gertie isn't there, we'll just give it to Lamp. I hate to do it, but we're just, we're just gonna do it. Five dollars from Doug Jagger. Appreciate what you do for D2 Cooling. Even with one arm, you're still more than half the man most dudes can hope to be. Well, thanks, brother. Uh, I appreciate that more more than half. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. Make, makes sense. Yep, Doug. I don't know exactly what that means, but bro, cheers to you. I appreciate you, man. Thank you for the five spot. I am kind of half the man, you know? Big cheers, brother. Really appreciate that. And here it is, man. Okay, look at this. All right, these guys are... This is 
kind of some gentleman shit right here, what just happened. I, I'll explain that what happened here uh, in a second. But what we just saw was Vegeta taking on Jeep. It's now 0-2 in favor of Vegeta. This guy on the Fury Druid. This shit is wild, man. And Jeep was the guy that just 10 3 to L, man. This is wild. Now, the gentleman shit that's going on here, you notice that the uh, that the other player here is killing Vegeta and taking off his... Uh, the, the, the reason he's doing that is because he's wearing Fortitude and he's procking, uh, he's, he's procking the armor from Fortitude. Now, theoretically in DFC, technically allowed to have it between matches. Uh, unless we consider a pre-buff and then technically... I guess you're not. I guess needs more clarification. But they're doing some gentleman shit right now and just taking that off. Killing him so that he gets rid of the frozen armor from Fortitude. I guess technically under the no pre-buffing rule, you couldn't you couldn't have that. Yeah, so that makes sense. Uh it certainly makes sense here. Right now it's uh what is it? 3-0 in favor of Veg on this Fury Druid? Gertie V Lamp is resuming. Cooley, thank you. 9K health is insane. I've never seen this. Like, I... Man, melee duels are insane. The thing is with having 9K health, right? Oh, and a nice finish there from Jeep. Could this be the start of a big comeback? We're going to see. The thing is with 9K health in melee uh, is a lot of times... Players versus Druids will stack up Crushing Blow. Or Players versus Barbs will do the same thing because they, they have a lot more life than, say, a Paladin or a Zaun. Uh, and the reason that's really good is because when that Crushing Blow goes off, it technically does a lot more core damage there for the first few hits uh, than just going for straight damage and, say, Deadly Strike. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if Jeep has more Crushing Blow in for this one. And now... It's 2-4. Still in favor of Veg. Incredible to see these melee matches going on, though, man. Looks like Jeep's going to quickly lose that one. Veg now advancing. Advancing to 5-2. This guy might be proving his dominance here. Veg versus Jeep. Jeep with a very impressive win there uh, in our first melee matchup of the night. And now... He looks like he's got his back up against the ropes versus Veg. Veg hits hard, man. Look at that. That is just incredible, man. It's so cool to see like these different builds like this. Because when you think of melee, I think a lot of people think of that Zealot Paladin. It's just the typical, you know, it's what we all remember from those early days of Diablo 2. And it's what we yearn to see in PvP. But I think they forget about how vicious some of these other builds are. Like this Fury Druid, man. 9.1k life and vicious damage. You can tell, I would guess from his helm here. I don't think you can get the Vizzo mod on, uh, on a Druid helm. But I think it's white because he has the defense mod. I could be wrong. You could get Vizzo on that. You Can you? You can. Okay, you can get Vizzo. All right, so you can get Vizzo, and he probably does have it. Yeah, very nice. All right. Yeah, it's Vizzo. Yeah, that's wild. Okay, so I didn't even know you... Look, this is this is how much I never even thought of a druid in Melee. Uh, you can get Vizzo on those helms. Something that they usually don't see. You usually don't see that. Right? Uh, when you... Like, when a lot of people find a... a druid helm they're hoping for five nato they're hoping maybe for some plus five to skills crazy bullshit right they're probably not looking for two open socket viso and e-rep defense right which i would guess if this is like top of the top tier druid helms from veg here we might be that might be what we see here i had no idea that viso could even spawn on those like that's how rare it is to even see that and one life there very close duel was that one and one, I believe, I forget exactly what the score is. I'm just, yeah, there it is, 3-8. Wow, incredible, man. Kevin Sheehan, my dude, big cheers to you. We're doing the non-alcoholic cheers here tonight. We got a, got a surgery from implanting the bionic arm, and we got to get the good sleeps, and that doesn't happen with alcohol, but I'm giving you the big propel cheers, brother. Thank you so much for that legend tier membership, man. 
Big cheers, brother. Appreciate that. Oh, could it be the unique item root? Cerebus's bite? Wow, I didn't even think of that. That does have that does have bonus to attack rating on it. Interesting. Wow. Yeah, that's nuts. I didn't even think it could be that. And it does have a white appearance. I'm gonna have the fastest clicks, dude. It's it, it's not even gonna be fair. They might have to ban it. All right. I was gonna say, Veg looking for a big comeback here. Now four eight, I believe. I believe. I'm I'm good at fudging these numbers. Four nine. Yeah, there it is. There it is. I did this with Casino Live, not even in my own duel. And the, and and then he said, like, I fucked the numbers up and was like always giving myself like taking wins away from him and giving myself wins. Look, I didn't do it purposely. But he called me out on it and asked me if that's how I win duels. And there it is. I noticed this, and I'm not sure what this is, but I've noticed a lot of druids never really try to morph back uh, from being at one life. They never try to do it. You just saw him kind of sit there and take the damage. You never see him morph back. I wonder if that's... I wonder if that's uh, just a gentleman's thing, or if it's banned morphing back at one life. Oh my god, and a close duel there. Could this be a big comeback? 6-9. Yeah, reshift is BM. Okay, cool. We'll have to work that into the rule set. It kind of makes sense, especially when you have a druid that can like... <laughs> fucking have 9.1k life. Yeah, it totally makes sense. Bam, and there it is. A 10-6. Very that, surprisingly close though. Like that was it doesn't it might not seem like it at 10-6, but just with the how numbers work in, in melee, like that is actually pretty close. Like that was that was very nicely done. G in G, man. Alright, now he's showing it off. Now we get to see this gear. Holy shit, Berserker Axe with the he's got the uh the mod. Fucking not Vizzo, but you know what it is. You know what I'm saying. 300 ED. One socket. Interesting. What what, what mod am I looking at? I, I totally forget. Beautiful gloves, dude. Strength, dex, enhanced defense, 2010s. Fools, that's what it is. Thank you. It's because I, I have one arm. Beautiful ring, too. That ring is worth a lot. A lot of people look for cast and like min damage and stuff on their rings, which is pretty good. But that AR dual stat in life is is clutch in melee. That's what people go after. Those those are the cream of the crop. Two thirteen gores, fortitude, perfect roll on the fortitude, one hundred percent perfect. Very nice. Archon plate too, very rare. A lot of times people go for the higher defense. This is an interesting jewel he's got. It's a twenty four ED, fifty six attack rating, nine strength, eight dex. That's a beautiful jewel. That's, uh, you've heard of the Notorious 306099. Well, that's along those same lines right there. It is. You were right, Root. It's the Cerebus's Bite. 120% bonus to attack rating. Holy shit. And he's got himself a 40 ED 20 life jewel in that. Beautiful helm. And shape shifting skillers for melee. Very interesting. With a little bit, a little bit of change there with five faster hit recovery, uh, max damage AR charms. You can tell this guy has thought about literally every break point about this build and got this insane gear. Like, I mean, it's so cool to see items like Cerebus's Bite uh, or, or Cerberus's Bite because who uses that? You find it, people find it. They're like, wow, man, this is so cool. It's so rare. When do you ever get to see it used? Well, right here is one of those times. Very nice. Yeah, that was insane, man. Incredible. All right. Well, look, I think we might have. I think we might have my match that we've we've. Oh, no, actually, we got Gertie going, right? Gertie versus Lamp. Let's check it out. Let's check her out. GG's. Thank you so much, man. That was a that was a great. I dude, I love melee. That shit is crazy. It's so good. It's so cool to see a duel. And then after get to see what people were using for that result. You know, uh, just insane to see that kind of thing.
a very refreshing, very new way to duel here in the DFC. All right, look at this. This is interesting. These guys are mid-duel right here. It looks like finally uh, Mr. Gertie has come back. Mr. Gertie has come back. He must be fully geared up now. Incredible play there from Lamp. Holy shit, we're used to seeing uh, Lamp on a Cold Sorceress. But now we're seeing Lamp on a Sin, and he's actually doing phenomenally well. It's very nice chain there, very nice aggression. I also love the fact that he was just standing in traps, recasting battle orders. We did recently, because of Gertie, actually switch the... Uh, we outlawed the, the ultra widescreen. Uh, and I think in, in a previous world, he would have been able to ultra widescreen cast on his opponent there. But uh, he wasn't able to do it. Wasn't able to land any blizzes at uh, off screen. Which uh, I'm sure his, his opponent was happy about. Could sit there safely in traps and recast battle orders. Very rare to see a, an assassin be able to sit right out in the middle of the moor not being able to be hit by the blizz sword. Hard to tell exactly what the score is because these guys were going when we when we uh, jetted over here, but they might have might have progressed a couple of rounds. But this is very close, very good duel. Now, in my experience, Cold Sork versus Sin is probably the most fair match uh, out of, out of all of them. Blizz Sork is like the boogeyman build of a lot of things, right? It just creates these scenarios and these situations where you have extremely bad matchups that are practically unwinnable for the opponent, and then you also have extremely bad, practically unwinnable matchups for the Cold Sorceress. You know, such as uh, Cold Sorceress versus basically any type of Paladin. Uh, you know, Paladin's dead. Uh, you know, the, the Paladin's a, a goner. You have to be, you know, it, it's doable, but you have to be god tier in. Uh, to be able to catch and punish a cold sorceress, right? And then it's the other way around for a druid, oftentimes. Uh, you know, it's we do we have adjusted the rules a little bit uh, surrounding that matchup, but the druid is practically a free win when they go up against a cold sorceress because they can keep recasting their cyclone armor, which absorbs elemental damage, and it doesn't check the res. You know, so it's it's going to absorb all of that damage from uh, from your Blizz. And he could just keep recasting it. Yeah, real duel is a long duel, that's for sure, dude. That's for sure. Yeah, no doubt. I think it was a good duel, Jess. I wouldn't, I wouldn't get too fired up about it. I think it was good, man. Like, put it this way. The other, the alternative to dueling like another type of sin, sure, there's some people that might be able to aggressively cast traps, but most people can't. Uh, most people can't do it. So it's actually good, I think, to see an aggressive sin player that will chase. And I think the only times he didn't chase is when you had him trapped. Like, I, I think he played well. Uh, and so did you. I mean, it's 3-2. Still up in your favor. Now, um, X for in 10x, 30 defense, 20 life, small charms. No shit. Interesting. Defense to fight against the whirlwind. Wow. Well, I can say the next set will be very interesting. Dude, if y'all end up dueling like tomorrow while I'm while I'm streaming, let me know. I'm I'm there. I'm down. I'm just going to switch servers here on my side so I can be ready for my duel, my official DFC match. While we wait, while we get this fired up. Good duel here so far, though, between uh, Lamp and Gertie. Lamp doing a phenomenal job on the Sin, man. He, he knows when to aggress. He knows when to dial it back. And Gertie doing a great job. He doesn't have the... Doesn't quite have the advantage of the ultra wide screen on his side this time, but I, I still think he just plays very well on a cold sorceress. Gertie's a very good player. Um, previous DFC champion, he beat me uh, to take the title. I, I it was only because I lagged that one time, but come to find out, Gertie very good dueler, man. Like he is a very good dueler on a lot of, of different builds. He's very versatile in uh in his character choice. Like and and that's rare. 
there's there's uh, uh two types of players in pvp right the types of players that will focus on one class and get very good with it and then there's players that transfer those skills to multiple classes and that is gertie uh and it's not to say that one is better than the other uh there's some players that can do it jess is one of those players absolute savage on just about every fpk character even on din guys nutty on all of that shit some people can just do it and there it is gertie gets the hit in gg easy or ggs it's done one one no shit okay wow that's nuts all right let me check this here real quick i'm i'm curious i'm going up against jeep tonight all right let me join up i'm gonna try to join that game with my melee dueler get ready for get ready for jeep i think i know where i'm going no i don't i totally forgot the game name i'm gonna see if i can dial in see what game these guys are in yo what what game are you guys in i'm gonna try to join it okay thank you all right let's do this Whoa, what? Hold up. I thought I had it, but I only have one arm. Hold up. Say it, say it one more again. Okay, my bad. All right. Thanks, brother. Oh. One arm is tough. One arm is tough. All right, here we go. I'm just going to sit AFK here for a sec. Then I'll get my duel in with Jeep versus Jeep after this. And this should be uh this should be pretty nutty, man. Should be pretty insane. It's going to be my first uh my first melee duel in the DFC. Let's see how my melee career starts off with my jank din. Oh, what is this? Who knows? He left the game. Zero token. Poison res increase. He lied about the build. Yo, what's up, Laser? Oh, dude, by the way, I noticed I saw your message the other day and meant to respond. Typing is very hard for me. But, uh, dude, I'm I'm not in much pain. I've been taking a lot of uh, painkillers. They prescribed me some oxys, but I only needed one so far. Uh, but I've just been taking, like, Advil and Tylenol and shit. Uh... It's only painful if you move it wrong, which you shouldn't you shouldn't do within the first like six weeks. So we're kind of babying it, uh, but feeling pretty good, man. The, the biggest pain, aside from like restructuring your life and like learning how to do everything with one hand, is this fucking strap. <laughs> like pulls on your neck all the time, and like I swear, by the end of six weeks, like my neck's gonna be like this. I'll, I'll be doing DFC like this and be like, "What's up, guys?" Like. Be, like they're gonna be like, why is your neck crooked? I'd be like, it's not. Like, yo, straighten yourself up. I'd be like, all right. Uh, I'm, just, I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna be screwed up, dude. But that's like, that's probably the most painful part, honestly, is like this shoulder strap around it. Like, oh, it's just it's rough on the neck. Get a pro to hold it for you. <laughs> oh. He is Armand P. L O L. I see what you did there, Mr. Cooley Bay. That was that was a deep-seated high-level joke right there. DFC appropriate. Wow, that was good. Armand P. High-level shit. Yeah, this is this is it right here. This is it. All right, hold up. I might uh skill tree, stream skill tree. What? Hmm. 
What are these guys talking about? He wants Gertie to stream his skill tree. Look, this is chat PK, guys. Look, this is a new division of the DFC. This is chat PK. You should know by now, when dueling a cold sorceress, the duel is won in town. The fights happen in the blood more, but the duels are won in town. All right, so he just, he's showing it off there. I'm sure he's happy. You know what? Jeep has been so patient. This is what I'm going to do. Jeep has just streamed his uh, his perspective here. I'm actually just going to cut over and do this duel real quick. I'm sure these guys will still be going uh, by the time that Jeep and I are done. Uh, Jeep has been so patient. I'm so happy that, uh, you know, some amazing melee duelers have joined up that I, uh, I want to I want to kick, kick over and get this duel done. You guys cool with that? We'll kick back into Gertie and uh, Gertie and Lamp. I think that's what we're going to do. Let's transition over. All right. You ready, Jeep? He says, oh my God, look at this. He is living in the future. He is living in the future. I can't tell you All right. I might actually want to go no pickup for this duel. All right, here we go. Uh, let's do it. My first ever melee fight in the DFC. Let's make sure we're walking. We're walking. Follow me. All right, here we go. That was close. That was very close. I almost had it. Yeah, that was nasty. <laughs> he, goes, he ain't even going back to town. Yeah, see, this is my ex. All right, don't you don't you talk shit about my ex. Yeah, but see, the, the thing is, I might swap out if I lose a few of these. If it's not looking promising, I might swap out to a a better, some better gear. Come on. But uh, my strategy is to hit hard. Not hit often, but hit hard. Just like that. See, I told you, bro. Strategy is to hit hard. We dropped two break points for this. Come on. Hard hits. Let's go. Come on, baby! Oh, man. That was, actually, that was actually surprisingly close. Bros, I gotta say, more than anything, it feels fucking cool to actually be able to do PvP with, with one arm. Thank you for keeping score, too, bro. I appreciate that. I would do it because I was the first loser, but... Uh, as you can see, a little slow. Thank you, brother. Follow me. All right, here we go. 2-1 so far. We just need big hits. We just need Lady Luck to be on our side. Just a couple of... A few times... Like, ten times specifically. 3-1. I'm not... I'm not actually discouraged yet. Like, I haven't actually committed to the fact... Yeah. I haven't committed... <laughs> he says your bionic arm hits hard. I haven't committed to the fact that this is a... Uh, I haven't resigned to the fact that this is a bad idea yet. Dropping two breakpoints. We just need Lady Luck to be on our side. Man! Alright, hold up. At what point do we decide this is a bad idea? It's 4-1. Alright, I think if it goes 5-1. If he gets four wins ahead, then we decide it's a bad idea. <laughs> he goes now. <laughs> Bro. Come on. All right, here we go. Oh, man. All right, it was so close. It was so close, but we're, we're going to have to try something different. All right, it's 
five one. We'll we'll try. We'll have to try something different. All right, we'll swap it out. We'll go EDC. We'll hit the breakpoint. Uh, we need sixty IAS. We also need cannot be frozen. And I think the rest of it looks good. All right. It may not be as exciting. But look, this is a DFC match and we need to win. We need to establish our dominance in the melee ranks early. All right. Come on. We need to establish it early. This is for all the marbles. See, there it is. It was a smart call. Smart call. All right, now 5-2. Oh, I got a technically no pre-buffing, so someone's actually going to kill me. Yeah, no pre-buffing, so someone has to kill me because I have the fort proc. All right, here we go. 5-2. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Oh. God, it was still it was close. It was close. These these are closer duels. E even even my loss here. It's been it's been closer. But dude, I was doing 12k before, which is just really cool. Like it's cool to do that much damage. Follow me. The uh, EDC also reduces his defense a little bit too, which is which is kind of good. gives me gives me more tickets, right? More lottery tickets, or takes away his lottery tickets, his his raffle tickets, as we mentioned in the video. Seven two. All right, time for a big comeback. Come on. Damn, bro. Damn, I even had the fort proc. Two dollars and seventy nine cents from Kyle. Kick his SC bass. Hell yeah, man. I'm trying. It's going to be a big comeback. Thank you so much, Kyle. Big cheers to you, brother. Big cheers to you, brother. Thank you so much for that. Look, big comeback. It's eight two. Bro, I'm getting my ass kicked. I need to go back to my death build. I'm getting my ass handed to me. Oh my god, dude. Smacked early on that. Shit, bro. I'm going to need to go back to the drawing board. These guys are... I tried some wild shit. I need to go back to my death build where I only give up one, one break point. Come on. Oh. Oh, come on. Oh, man. 10-2. I got slaughtered, man. Good duels. I got slaughtered. I think I might try to go back to the death setup. Because believe it or not, I had the most I had the most success with that. I tried to go to the the you know EDC route this time, or really the I tried to go a completely rogue route this time, actually, with uh with Rune Master. You know, but EDC is technically the way to go in you know the most uh, you know the, the the best way to go the other thing that is kind of low on this though is i should have swapped this out i should have swapped out fortitude the goal was to do like massive damage but i gave up dr uh and i'm noticing you, i think that was the big thing is you really just can't do that so i think actually next time i'll probably just do this i'll probably uh swap this out and see how that does like this doesn't seem horrible. Uh, I could actually even drop the breakpoint too. So I could drop it like this. Bro, I'm actually curious now. Uh, I'm actually curious. One more. One more. Because now I'll have full DR. Or, or I'll have like 46 DR, I think. Like, we were running... I'm, I'm not sure if you saw it, but... Oh, oh, yeah, it's like 76. We have, like, too much DR. We might actually be way too much. 
That's fine. I'm kind of cool with it. Helps against the crushing blow. Uh, but dude, I think we need to factor that into the... Oh shit, I didn't bow. We need to factor that into the build. We need to factor in DR. Make sure we never miss it. Come on. All right, here we go. All right, okay, so that was like two frame breakpoint, given up two frames, and I just had DR. I should have just gone with this. I should have gone with this. I, I'm, I'm going to roll with this next time. Because uh, of all the things in melee, good duels, brother. Thank you so much, Sheep. I appreciate your patience, too, dude. I know it can be uh, kind of annoying, like, waiting for other fights and stuff, but I really appreciate your patience coming in and doing this, being a part of this, introducing me into melee here, and starting up the melee division of the DFC. I think that's awesome, man. Really, really appreciate it. All good. Thank you for letting me join. Dude, hope to see you back, man. This, uh, this, this is fun. Hopefully something we can continue to do in the future. Tell the people. Tell them all. Looking forward to it too, man. Thanks again. Yeah, I think that I tried to get a little too techy. Like, I tried to go, like, two busted items here, right? Just getting massive. I actually tried to go three originally. Like, two, three busted items with, like, enhanced damage and shit. And I gave up DR. Like, look at my DR with this. This this was actually the, the Achilles heel. I wanted to make you think it was the, the break point. But, uh, oh, I guess it's actually not horrible. Uh, I guess it's really not that bad. Maybe we just overstack DR next. I, I have no idea why this build didn't work. That was just lady luck this, the, that last time, I think. I thought I had way less DR than that, not gonna lie. It was, it was still less than 50%, which is not good. But, yeah, perhaps we just over, overclock the DR. We do some shit like this next time. We could even go... Oh, shit. We could even do this. Yeah, this is the build next time. It's it's still slightly low DR. Oh, no. I guess it's not. It's 53. Yeah, we just do this. I guess we don't need the cham. We're going to figure it out. We'll figure it out. We don't need the cham, so we could actually kick it up a break point and go like IAS jewels in the helm. What's going on? Thanks for the heads up, dude. All right, let's cut over to that. Good duels, man. That was fun. Let's check it out. This is uh, Lamp still. Let's check her out. Sorry about that. I appreciate the heads up. Yeah, dude, I'm just like enthralled by melee. I think it's just, it's a fun way to duel. And I love that, like, the biggest thing right now that I love about melee is that I can do it with one hand. Like, that was really cool. Oh, Doom is around for Tempest. Yeah, Tempest is live and streaming, bro. Hell yeah. By the way, what's up, Elite? These guys are arguing. Are they still arguing? Or are they just prepping? It's not. I think they're past the chat, PK. I'm curious who won that. I think these guys are ready to go. Uh, as much as I would love to blame losses on lag, Odin, I played on Asia, and you remember in the video, the melee video that I did where I beat that guy, like, it was 7-6, so technically didn't, I technically beat him to an FT7 that he had no idea he was a part of, but that was on the Asia server, so, like, lag isn't really a thing, it's just like click and hold, and the game will take care of the rest. Yeah, so it like the other cool thing about melee dueling is let's say you're on Americas, right? And this is what I noticed when I was trying to collect some footage for the video. Let's say you're on Americas and it's like fucking 1 a.m. And you're like, oh, let's go over to the ZPK room. You go over and it's either not up or nobody's around. Like everybody's AFK because people are reasonable people and they're in bed by 1 a.m., right? You can just switch server to Asia where it's 1 p.m. And, like, there's people over there dueling. Like, there's... And the lag isn't really a thing. Sure, it's, like, annoying when you're casting battle orders and stuff. But as soon as the duel starts, you don't notice it. And it... 
it doesn't really affect the duel at all. Because the way that Zeal works is when you click and hold, it's always casting on every frame. So every possible frame that it can cast it, it's casting it. And it's sending those packets to the server. So like, you're clicking and holding, and on every chance that you get, it will immediately cast Zeal next. So like, the lag isn't really a thing. Lamp, make a mistake. Don't precast Blade Shield. If you swap inventory or it or sides, it stops working. Need to recast it main claw side. No shit. The graphic is still up, but it doesn't work. No shit. I didn't know that, Max. Dude, every time. I like I feel like. I tell you a secret, OK? I'm collecting facts of things. That you didn't know about Diablo 2. 90% of them have come from Max. So what is it? Blade Shield doesn't work if you cast it on the swap and, and then swap weapons. If you cast it... <laughs> if you cast it on swap... So if you have it hard statted and you cast it on swap... Then you swap your weapons. The graphic is there, but it doesn't work. Yeah, if you swap to bow, you need to recast blade shield when going back to claws. Wow. On bow side. Graphic. Is there. But it doesn't work. Literally, dude. I have a list. Right now, it's 18 facts deep. I'm pretty sure 17 of them have come from Max. I haven't done the math and counted, but <laughs> it's probably close. That's crazy, dude. Wild. They call it the Maxnum Opus. All of them tonight. Right, the lag would lock in the action and lag doesn't affect the equations, right? Yeah, it's it's melee is such an interesting way to duel. I think melee is a great way to duel for two types of people. The people that just genuinely enjoy all types of D2 PvP. But also the people that don't enjoy traditional D2R PvP with like teleporting around the blood more and all of this like it's I think it's it's PvP for those types of people and and here I am like after all the melee matches that I've had I don't have the best gear I don't have the wild rares that these guys have so I'm just trying to make stupid shit work and like I'm still not discouraged you know what I mean it, like I went 10-5 versus casino which was like encouraging even though it was a vicious loss it's like it's encouraging because it's like I'm doing this with shit gear you know what I mean? Like it, it's so it's possible that my knowledge and experimentation with mechanics can get me there. And I don't need to have 100% perfect shit. Like, you know, that's how that's the power of numbers and like rolling the digital dice. So like, I find it very interesting and very cool because you literally get to see how your build does in PVP, how your actual build, how your theory crafting does how the small adjustments that you make actually pan out over the course of a lot of uh, reps, a lot of duels. Like, it's a very, very interesting way to duel. Jank, it's all about the jank. Make a rule set that's proc friendly. Just call it no telly. No telly duels. <laughs> That'd be interesting. Yeah, and technically you can still get a little bit of that leech if you go zeal v zeal. Uh, it's in a lot of rule sets that you can agree to go tap. So like you could agree to use tap, and then it's probably the closest thing that you'll see to um, to like the 1.09 leech leech duels. But yeah, I mean those were the classic. That was the the 1.09 patch was I think what a lot of like a lot of melee duelers pay homage to. They remember. 
uh, and they really respect. Like that was a that was an interesting time in in uh, Diablo 2 history where Life Leech worked in PvP. It technically still works in PvP, but it's nerfed ridiculously. I don't know the exact number, but you can leech off of a player. It's just you need a ton of leech to leech a small, small amount of life back off of a player. Peter Griffin, how fair is Necro versus ES Sork and DFC? Uh, ES Sork wins all day. Like, it's, it's a pretty lopsided match uh, in favor of the Sorceress. Yeah, sorry I missed that, Peter. Peter Griffinson. Yeah, it's it's doable though in I guess in DFC is the other part of that question. It's doable in DFC. But because ES sorceresses are capped at 88%. So it's theoretically doable. You just need to have a very aggressive good necro player and those are very rare. We saw one tonight in Jess. Jess is an extremely good, extremely aggressive necro player. But he's very few and far between. There are not many like him out there. Like we had uh, Vamp the Champ, who was who held on to the DFC title the longest in DFC history. He would probably be able to turn it up on a on a sorceress if needed, and show the way to beat any ass sorceress. But it would still be an uphill battle. What on SS versus Sin? Uh, I mean, at some point you have to j play to win, right? Like, so if you're if you're playing with max block on an ES sorceress to hopefully avoid, you know, have a seventy five percent chance to not get hit by dragon flight or kick or whirlwind. You should instead just use spirit or some sort of four faceted shield that just makes you do more damage, right? Like you should just punish your opponent when you can. Yeah, Nick, I, I think I, I actually did a whole breakdown of it, showed the stitches and everything, uh, probably right after the five minute mark in the video in the stream. Like, right as the stream started up, I uh, just kind of covered it a little bit. I uh, told the story. This is a bionic arm I had implanted so I can click faster. But damn, it's tough. No, I had uh, rotator cuff surgery, dude. How long of a recovery period? Uh, initially, until I get the sling off, it's six weeks. Six to eight weeks in a sling which is like the most uncomfortable thing ever. Can't really move the arm much in that time. Um, then after that, it's months of physical therapy, like two to three months of physical therapy, I think, until you're like 80%. And then to get to 100%, you're probably looking at a year. Yep. Long recovery. Score right now, good question. I'm not 100% sure, but Gertie did just take that round right there. I believe, is it 2-1, Max? There was a lot of chat PK going on. Okay, yeah, that's that's what I thought. I thought it might be 2-1 in favor of Gertie. There's a lot of chat PK going on. But yeah, I think some people uh, get it in their head that they need to play to not die when playing to win is the best way to go. If you die, you die. Exactly. It's well said, Kyle. And by the way, big cheers to you. I don't, I don't think uh, I could thank you enough in the middle of my melee duel for the dono, bro, but big cheers to you for that. But you're right. Like, a lot of times people worry about how to not lose the duel. And sometimes, granted, yeah, it's the right call. To, like, for example, in the melee duel, I was like, okay, to a degree, I should play to not lose, right? Like, I should stack up my DR. Like, I was kind of, like, I was a little low on it. But that's like a different kind of playing to not lose, right? That's just playing. That's like being prepared for what you're going up against. Some people literally like I remember a duel. I think it was between I want to say Root and Bowie. Does anybody remember that? Root, are you around? Do you remember this? Do you remember? I, I think it was versus Bowie. And you were on Druid. Bowie was on Sin or it was some Sin that Root was going up against. Dude fucking wasn't gonna lose. 
but he had like I think T gods or the, the most amount of sword that you could have at the time. Cyclone armor, and he had the helm of everlasting that made it so that like all of the mind blast damage didn't do shit. Like the duel lasted forever. I literally can't remember who won, but I, if I'm a betting man, I don't think it was Root. Like, <laughs> it just lasted forever. Gertie feeling out Lamp pretty well here. I'm surprised Lamp doesn't have D Talon. D Flight alone is kind of iffy. Combination of both with open wounds is better. Yeah. Good point. Like, D Flight is good but i don't know i guess i guess d flight is what he's using to probably just grab the name lock and hopefully chain him like versus blizz sork i could kind of get behind it right and again you know trust me i'm the superior sin player here uh but i would figure he's just doing it to get a quick name lock and hopefully chain him while after he casts his blizzard and he knows that he's kind of vulnerable for a few seconds like but bam, dude, every time you get hit with that Blizz, look at that big fucking hit. You know, I, I would figure if you're detaloning, like you should, I don't know, I guess it procs open wounds. With an ES Sork especially. But I would just figure you should be casting the, casting the traps. So I mean, that's what I would figure. By the way, I see you, XB Dog. We might we're a little in the future, so it might be a little while before this pops up. But bro, I see you, man. Thank you so much. Big cheers to you for 14 months, man. That's phenomenal. Big cheers, dude. How you been, dude? It's good to see you. Oh, he's got an offhand trap claw. And it looked like I caught a quick glimpse of it there. It's either a five trap or a six trap claw. Uh, and I would guess he probably has some jewels in it for resistance. Either 30s for, like, 30 cold res in each of those jewels, or, like, like just generic, like, uh, 715s. Yeah. Dude, this is... That is actually a surprisingly good performance from Gertie there. Like... Gertie was very aggressive versus a trap sin. Uh, especially one that's going to kick him uh, and try to cut him open through the ES. Like, still was able to just get in, drop these traps. Like, this is... That's actually very good sorceress play there from Gertie. Told you this guy is insane. And that's not to take anything away from Lamp. Lamp's also playing very well. Gertie has a theory. And this was... We talked about this in the beginning part of this duel, uh, which seems like forever ago now because we've switched duels. We've done a bunch of different things. But... Uh, we talked about this. There was this was the grudge match of the night right here, right? Uh, and it was basically Gertie saying that cold sorks are overpowered, and Lamp saying, "Nah, I'm gonna take you down on a sin and show you that that's not the case." It's currently at least three-one in favor of Gertie. So so far, with this argument of cold sorks being OP, Gertie might have a point. Sim panic so hard he turned off his map kegs. Yeah, he, 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 that, that blitz came up quick. Okay, so yeah. He's actually using... Okay, no, so he's using facets in that. He's using a plus five trap claw with facets. That's actually a very nice claw. I didn't catch the other skills there. But... Yeah, and he swapped it up, so he's using... Interesting. He cut down on his cold stack. No, that was just with his SOJs out. Okay, never mind. He's probably at four. Yeah. 412. I'll allow it. Close enough. I'll allow it. 410 is general guideline. All right. General guideline. Yeah. Gertie's, Gertie's done pretty well. Yeah, and also, like, uh, that, that's a good point, too, Punch, is that Lamp is usually Cold Sword. Lamp is usually on Cold Sword. 
So we, we have a we have an influx of some new Cold Sword players, Gertie being one of them. I think the reason, the secret reason Gertie is playing Cold Sorceress is because he wants to get it banned. <laughs> or he wants to get something changed about it. It's never been more clear than what he had said in, uh, you know, from from the the Discord beef that was going on. Like, you know, Cold Sork is broken, needs to be fixed. And Gertie says, no way, man. I'll take you down on a sin. And so far, he's got his work cut out for him, man. Gertie actually getting in there, getting some nice hits in. And Gertie has a very interesting Cold Sork, too. He has one that uses energy shield. That's very rare to see that. Uh, it's very rare, and I would I would honestly think, here's the other piece of this, is that with the way that the DFC rules and co uh, surrounding cold stack work, is that if you if you commit some of your points that should have gone into cold mastery, let's say, to say uh, like energy shield or telekinesis, you're giving up crucial damage that uh, a 40% sorb setup could really punish you for. So like, I, I know it's hard to do on a sin, and a lot of people don't like to drop cast on a sin, especially versus a cold sorceress, but I wonder how much of a difference that would make versus an ES sorceress who's not going to do as much damage as your typical full Vita sorceress uh, with Blizz. Like, it's hard to do that on a sin. Don't get me wrong. It's it's hard to drop to the 65% cast breakpoint, but I think it allows you to stack easier. And, uh, you know, it just it punishes the ES. Like, I think you take significantly less damage from Blizz. Uh, and that's just the case even with a full Vita. You take significantly less. The technical best setup, the technical best Sorb versus a Cold Sorceress is the, the 4315. So 315 cold stack, 40 absorb. In in our experience, so far that's the best. So you know, I kinda wonder. I I kinda wonder. But again, very hard to do. A sin kinda needs that 102 cast to to keep up, even to hope to keep up with a sorceress. You know, it's it's a rough one. It's it's a rough one. Tough call. Good show tonight with DFC. Fun duels, lots of drama and chat PK and melee duels. And one-handed handicap. Cooley dueling with, with handicap and a bad arm. I'm telling you, man. Yeah, it's been a good night so far, man. This is like I was so I was so impressed because it seems like every every event for the DFC for like the last few weeks has been growing in numbers, dude. And like we've had some incredible duels as a result. Uh so I'm so thankful for that. I'm so thankful to uh to have you guys here joining every week and just coming shooting the shit and watching some awesome PvP. But I've been very surprised to see this, especially you know, so long after the launch of D2R to see the DFC growing with more people joining and more exciting duels to watch is just, it's incredible, almost unbelievable to me. So, yeah, I mean, it's its a phenomenon, dude. But very cool to see. So it looks like... Wow, this is interesting. Oh my god, dude. So Gertie just sat there in his blizz he is one life right now uh, and he was waiting for his opponent to do something either cast a trap or something he was just waiting right uh, baiting him in and then when Lamp sat outside of that blizz for too long he just caught one yeah Gertie is one life right now so technically if if like a shadow bay could kill her with uh, could kill him with venom Or just a Venom Strike if he has if he has Venom statted. No, no buttons on the left click. That's very interesting for Lamp.
Didn't hear from L, dude. I, I would totally duel. I, you, you're talking about the uh, the melee druid. I would totally duel duel the fury druid. Would love to do that, dude. Yeah, um, I think we might we might have a duel on deck after this, but I don't I don't see anybody streaming ready to go. So I might I might kick over and actually do that. Yeah, yeah. Just PM me the game, bro. Uh, let me know, or just, or like, tag me in DFC chat or something. Sometimes my PMs go to, like, message requests. I can look. Yeah, just like, just send me a, send me a PM in Discord. Like, for a game name. I'll pop over, bro. I would, I would love to try it out. Especially now that I switched that melee setup, I'm like, alright, how good would this do? What if I got a little bit more reasonable with this? Yeah, I'd love to try that out, dude. Yeah, 100%. CT Blizz is very good, and Gertie is extremely good at it. Casting CT, casting skills through CT offensively is very hard to do. Uh, it's it's a it's a hard skill to do accurately. There's people, you know, including myself. I do it every once in a while, but I'll do it with the simple skills, like you know, CT casting guided arrow or something, or you know, uh, sometimes chasing people offensively with CT teleporting. It's very hard to do it when you're trying to accurately dump a Blizz down on your opponent's head with, like, a kind of an awkward hitbox. Like, and there's some players that can just do that. Like, Doombringer is one of those players who can CT cast like a madman on that. Gertie, also one of those players. Uh, Maddie, believe it or not, also very good at that. Like, just CT tellying up on people and just landing nasty locks, like, nasty combos off from CT catches. Like, being able to catch people with CT casting is kind of wild to see. But it, it's certainly a skill set, man. And in case you're not familiar, what CT casting is, is it's where they bring up the uh, character and the skill tab. Like, you'll see it every once in a while. Like, uh, Lamp will do it every once in a while. But they bring up a screen on the, on the side. Sometimes, when I first saw that, I thought people were misclicking. I was like, how are these guys so bad at, like, hitting buttons, right? But what they're actually doing is bringing up a screen which shifts your character to one side of the screen. And it makes it so that if you drag your cursor past that screen, you're clicking 50% further. So you're getting, you're 50% more efficient on your skill cast with distance. So it's good for chasing people with teleport. It's good for like casting skills further. It's really, really, uh, it's a, it's an insane skill to master in PvP. $6.99 from Kyle. Melee duel in Bloodmore not cleared. Added challenge. Quill traps. Quill traps? Gosh, I wish those existed in in the game. It'd be a shame if someone got killed by these mythical creatures known as the Quill Trats. And there it is. Lamp gets the next round. I believe it's 3-2. Kyle, bro, big cheers to you, man. Thank you so much for that. Melee duel in the moor? Now, technically you could, but honestly, I say when you're melee dueling, why not duel in the inner cloister? Different a change of scenery and everything, man. It's so good. So it's so refreshing. Yeah, it's 3-2 for Gertie, I believe. Big cheers to you, Kyle. Thank you so much for that, man. I really appreciate that generosity. I'll put it towards the bionic arm uh, and the physical therapy for it. Uh, you know, I need to learn how to use regular arm first, and then the bionic kicks in. I'm going to put it right towards that. Appreciate it, brother. GG. All right, look, while we wait for this round, I'm going to get into this melee game. All right, here it is. Might be some... Is it, is it over? Hold on, is that duel over? There's no shot it's over. I'm still... I'm popping it up just to make sure. Because I see... Uh, I see Lamp just chilling in town, not healing or anything. He might be AFK or the duel's over. If so, he likely just won. We're going to have to check back into that after this. Let's get some... Let's get some melee rounds in here. Let's get some melee rounds in. Hold on, what was my final build? I think this was it, right? Yeah, I don't need the cannot be frozen. The duel cannot be frozen, which is going to be grinding my gears here. Yo, do you have, by chance, a helm like this that has, like, either a bear rune and an IAS jewel in it, or, like, two IAS jewels that I could borrow? Like a, a deadly strike, or really any helm that just has IAS shit in it. Like, I don't need the cham from this if I'm going rune master. 
Oh shit, hold on. Let me make some room. Oh fuck yeah, the helm. All right, I'm gonna try that out. Thanks, brother. All right, I'll give this back to you after this. We got the helm. We got the melee helm. Wow, matching 4015s and everything. Oh, this is gonna be not. This is gonna be nasty, dude. This might actually get us there. I think we're still actually giving up a break point because I think we need. I think we need 63 to hit the max. Last I checked, it's something. I forget. Just very curious to see how this is going to go. I think we still give up a little bit. Let me make sure. Yeah, we're still going to be giving up a little bit. Well, all right, let's do it Follow like this. Right, here we go. Whoops. Come on. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, my God. We got it. Holy shit! Holy shit! Dude, we need to get a helm like this. We got 25k zeal, 26k defense. Gertie lost to Lambo. Okay, so is that is that legit? Are you? We can't trust. We can't trust Coolio. Gertie, is that duel over, bro? No, no. I was going to say, we kind of cut over to this due to some AFK action in town. But I was wondering if that was over. Follow me. Oh my god. Okay. That was close. That was actually surprisingly good. Yo, what's my DR with this? I gotta check this out. I think I I think I'm a little low. Yeah, I'm 45. Two dollars and seventy-nine cents from Kyle. Get your tickets here. Get your melee tickets here. Get your tickets here. Get your melee tickets here. That's what we got, man. We got the Vizzo helm. Now we've got it. Come on. Big cheers to you, brother. I'm gonna give you official cheers after this. We just killed his oak. This should be an easy win, right? We just killed his oak. Easy win. Kyle, big cheers to you, brother. I had plenty of tickets that time. Bro, we need a helm like this. We we need a, a Vizzo helm like this. With, like, IAS so that we can use this stupid weapon. Rune Master. It's, like, exactly what we need. That's the, that's the setup. We're gonna get that Oak again! Easy win with no oak. Easy win. Easy. Get him. Wasn't even close. <sighs> yeah, well, it's it to run away with it like that, you know. Yeah, so. I think we need to add a couple of rules specifically surrounding druids that like make it official that they can't remorph, but also uh, the oak make it so that you can't chase it down. If you hit it, you hit it. But if you don't, you don't. Oh my god. We're gonna get there? Come on, baby. Come on. Oh man. I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not disappointed with that. Not not disappointed with that performance, to tell you the truth. Dude, he's got like 9.1k life, bro. Like, that's actually not bad. Follow me. Damn, we got ripped up that time, though. Three three. Alright, he's he's mounting a big comeback. Fury Druid is insane. Yeah, I think I want to get a deadly or I might actually just take the bear and cham out of that helm. Come on. And and put like some IAS jewels in here. Figure out the breakpoint. 
because it does have the Vizzo mod. So I think that's the next thing. Maybe put a... I think I'm going to put a bear rune in it. And put... Uh, and put, like... If, if 15 IAS doesn't make me hit the breakpoint, I'll just put, like, 40 ED strength in. Yeah, we'll do we'll do something wild with it. Two dollars and seventy nine cents from Kyle. Getting your tickets punched Follow when me. Oak lives. Get Joe's tickets punched when the Oaks lives. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. I got his Oak though. Easy win. I think I lagged. I think that was a little I think there was a little bit of lag there. Bro Kyle, thank you so much for that, brother. <laughs> Hit those tickets. Follow me. Oh my god. Oh my god, dude. Holy, we're getting ripped up. We get him close every time, but we can't quite get there. Yeah, big cheers, bro. I appreciate that. I love your manners vid you posted. PvP is a different beast. Yeah, sure is, man. That was uh, that was members only for a day. I was dicking around with figuring out how to post members only videos and have them go up with a time limit before they're public. Follow me. And uh, yeah, there's going to be plenty more of those that might be members only. But yeah, I'm glad you enjoyed it, man. Taking a little bit of a different approach with the Cooley Live channel. There it is. All right. We got there. We actually... He had his oak that time, too. It's now 6-4 in his favor. Come on. 6-4 in his favor. Oh my god. So this is what I was hoping for is like that the damage would be here. Look, I'm going to switch this up. I'm actually going to I don't think the damage is here, but I I'm going to I'm just going to try a little bit of a swap. I probably will swap back, but I need like I guess I really need crushing blow versus him. So this isn't going to make a damn bit of difference. But I'm actually just going to try this real quick. I'm going to go Double bear COA. Try this. I don't think it's going to make that much. Uh, it might, though. It might make a huge difference. We're going to see. We just do an astronomical amount of damage, theoretically, now. This is with the jank setup that we started with. Come on. Oh, my fucking word, dude. We hit so hard, though. All right, we'll give it another round. We'll give it another round with the jank setup. But I just think that after using that helm, I think we probably just want AR. We're just we're not getting there. Come on. Come on. Oh my god, look at some of these look at some of these chunks though, dude. Like some of those chunks are just insane. All right, we're going to switch back to the real setup here. We're going to switch back to the real real. Go back to the more reasonable. And in fact, here's what I'm going to do for the last part. I'm going to go this helm. I'm going to put on real gloves. Actually hit the break point. Go to this. And... That should be good. This is this is technically a reasonable build. Like this is this is a a responsible rune master build. Follow me. Arguably did similar. GG's man. Thanks for the duels. That was fun. I, dude, I love Melee. It's just like you try all these tweaks and like, you know, eventually, man, we're going to figure out some shit. 
I think I might just go back to my death setup, because believe it or not, swap to Jalal's, no shit. For the 42 FHR breakpoint. Interesting. Hold up. Let me uh I might jet over and check it out, dude, on your on your stream real quick. Boom. Alright, let's check this out. Yo, this is his setup right here. This is what he just whooped my ass with. Jalal's has a bonus to attack rating. It's upped, perfect upped. I'm not sure the perfect defense on it. It might be four, five, six, perfect upped. But uh strength, he's got a 40 ED 20 life jewel in it. Faster hit recovery. Interesting. Yeah, so he swapped off from Cerberus's bite to Jalal's. Yeah, that was that was wild. That circlet must have cost an arm and a leg. Yeah, yeah. Oh shit. Speaking of which, I gotta give it back. <laughs> I gotta give it back. Whoops. Here I am just dilly dallying. Don't mind me. Don't don't mind me. Thanks, brother. Whoops. Thanks for letting me borrow that. Yeah, I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna make some adjustments to this build. We'll, we'll have a good one. All right, I'm gonna pop back in. Is uh, yeah, I still see lamp AFK in this though. Like, look, this is the game. I still see lamp AFK. So I think that duel might be over. It sucks. That we we kind of caught some ins and outs of it. Yeah. I was showing my girlfriend your duel versus llama, and I couldn't even explain what was happening. Even explaining Telly was hard. Yeah. Dude, to someone that doesn't play D2, like, watching someone teleport is strange. Like, in any game, it's strange, but in D2, it's especially strange. Yeah, like... Yeah. Teleport is just... It's odd to watch. Like it's it's a strange thing to to see and to immediately understand. Gertie should stream it. Yeah, bro. I think these guys are AFK, not doing shit. BRB quick thirty minutes. That way we see both. Oh, dude, I totally agree that like both people should always stream, in my opinion. But, yeah. Okay, I might actually go back to the death setup, boys. Which is... Technically... This. What if... Oh, shit. What if I did this? And did some wild and crazy shit like this? What's my DR? 38. That's so bad. That's so bad. And my IAS, I forget what I need for IAS. I, I done forgot what I need. I done forgot. All right, let's check it out. I'm, I'm actually curious about it. Paladin, Zeal. I use Warren's calculator, by the way. This is, like, by far the best one. I think my Fanat is, like, 26. You need... This can't be right. Wait, okay. This is a Berserker X. Okay, so you need 45, essentially. Or 40, 42. I know we gave up a break point with death build, but so we need 40. Yeah, we need we need a lot. This is this is bad. Oh, this is what we did. We did this. This is 35. Where did I get the other 10? Well, what's the other break point? Fuck, that's bad. Am I looking at this wrong? Oh, we need we need 45. How did I get it? Yeah, it's that's the So yeah, theoretically 58 for the max, but there's just no way we can hit it. We could, but like we're just giving up shit that I don't want to give up. The goal is to give up a little bit of IAS for 
to maximize our damage. I can't remember how I did this, though. I'm going to have to check the tapes. I'm going to have to check them tapes. What about crazy shit like this? What if we what if we did some crazy shit? What if we put a cham in this? What if we got one, put a cham in it? What if we just got all wild and crazy and just did this? That's theoretically 65. This actually works. Bro. What am I losing here? What if, is this just, did I just accidentally figure out the best build ever? I have 45 DR. Check fanaticism level. All right, hold up. I do 11K. Fanaticism level is 25. So now that might make a difference. I'm going to go back, change that up. No, it doesn't make a damn bit of difference. Dude, this actually seems really cool. And I get to use this cool helm. It's There's no there's no Vizzo on it, but... Cool as fuck, dude. I can't fucking hit him. I can't hit him. My AR is probably so low. Yeah, it's 18k. It's so low. But we hit the max breakpoint with death. Alright. Neither can I. Oh, shit. Bro, that's sick. Bro, that's nasty. That druid is so sick, dude. I so want to try this build out now, though. Like, it's 45 DR, and I think we just accidentally hit the breakpoint. Like, there's 50, and there's 65. Like, we, I don't, I just accidentally did it with death and like, yeah, okay, cool. I didn't think I could be this, I don't think I could be this cool now, you know? All right, hold up. Come on. Didn't really do that great, but. It could have just been the RNG gods. I'm going to try it again. We only have 45 DR. That's the problem. But we now theoretically hit max breakpoint. Follow me. We should have massive crushing blow, which should make a big difference versus a druid. But it doesn't. We actually do significantly worse with death. It's just so strange. It's only two duels, but... We haven't even halved him. We haven't even halved him with this. What helm is it? Oh, we're using... Uh, using this helm right here. It's just like my AR is so low. That's probably the problem. Is that my AR is so low that it's 100% enhanced damage though, which is kind of cool. Like, that was the... That was some weird shit that we just threw in there. You don't need much AR versus Druid. Follow me. Alright, we'll try it again. Oh, oh, okay. It could have just been the RNG gods, because this one was a lot closer. We didn't win it, but it was like... That was what we would expect. Like, just getting in there and, and smashing. Yeah, technically. Yeah, it's hard for me to type, Doom, but yeah, technically, uh, you and... Um, yeah, you and Tempest should duel if you guys are around. Sorry, I'm just seeing that. It's typing is hard. One armed bandit. All right, let me try it again. I feel like it just it could have been that the first rounds were just weak sauce when it comes to 
when it comes to RNG. That's sick. Follow me. I mean, again, very close, but... The other thing is, we are... We're giving up... We're giving up Angelics, which I think is really what's doing it. Like, we're giving up dual Angelics for a Raven Frost. Come on. Yeah, it's just not even close. Uh, it, like, the the AR is really just ass. What fort were you wearing? I was wearing a Sacred Armor. Perfect in every way that matters. Like, the resistances weren't perfect, but it was perfect in a, every other way. Like, perfect life roll. It was uh, 15 ED. Not perfect on the durability, but... Yeah, I wonder if we just go fort. We don't care about the breakpoint. We go fort, and then... Like... Uh... Oh, look at this. If we go like this. That could be it. That could be it. We're at 50 DR. And I, I think we give up the breakpoint doing this. Like, we give up, but we hit the second breakpoint. Which technically, hold on, technically, we don't need this, as odd as that is. So now we don't need the bear room. God, it's so weird. This game is weird. So... Why don't we just do this? Why don't we just go home? Dude, how much is my fucking zeal damage? Gosh. I mean, it feels good. Death with the other setup was 10k. It's still about 10k. Come on. We should have theoretically more attack rating now. Right? No. Well, hold on. Wait, did we give up all cannot be frozen? What have I done with this? Did we? Yeah, we did. All right, hold on. That was a mistake. It goes this and this. And then we give up two breakpoints for death, which feels really bad. So we just go back to this cookie cutter. Maybe this cookie cutter. This isn't even cookie cutter. This is some wild shit. But then I just need a new helm. So this is like, let's just forget this wild idea for now. I need better items to make this work. Like I need a I need a Vizzo helm to make that dream work. Like a, a Vizzo helm with probably two pally. And like or, or even just ripping the cham and the bear rune out of that deadly strike helm, and I'm pretty sure I could make the rune master work. But Follow me. Holy shit. I, we, I feel so weak right now. Why is my why are my hits weak? They are weak. 7k weak. This dude EDC sucks. It's I know it's better than 95% of people's rare weapons, but like it just sucks. By the way, we got some duels going on. Is Lamp dueling? Alright, I think these guys are AFK, but I do see Riz up in here. So I want to pop over to this. I do see Riz kicking some ass. Riz is a fun one to watch. And holy hell, what a match he's got. Alright, let's get this all straightened out. Oh my god, this is holy shit. Bro. Alright, just getting some uh just getting some details down for you guys. This is Riz versus Kim Sulky. I'm actually way more interested in this matchup right here. 
than the AFK duel that we've got going on because this one is pretty friggin' insane, man. This is Riz, the most aggressive player, hands down, the most aggressive player in all of Diablo 2. This guy has to be aggressive on this ghost. He, this guy is absolutely insane on this. He has to be aggressive. He has to get in there, has to whirlwind you. Now, granted, this is not necessarily... Uh, he. We signed him up on Sin because we've seen him on a hybrid before, but I can imagine versus a Zon, he's going to be on Ghost. But this isn't just any Zon, man. This is Kim Sulky. Some people who are saying that this guy is going to be the next top Zon of the DFC. They say, you think you you think Muchez was good. You better watch yourself. And he's he's even got the walk down Zon, like the walk Zon approach here. I love this. This is the second duel we've seen that he's done this. Taking some massive damage there from Riz. But actually punishing him at close range with the bow. Very clutch timing there. Yeah, I do kind of want to see it too. I, I wish they would conclude. I wish they would finish this duel. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this one right here. This is a very nice close quarters combat there. Riz delivering some hits that will probably won his opponent. Oh my god, could this be a big comeback for Kim Sol Ki? It is not. Riz gets there with a very clutch whirlwind, possibly even Shadow Bay PK right there. Tough matchup for the Zon. Uh, and whereas uh, Kim Sol Ki is newer to the DFC, some people would say, oh man, nah, nah, man, it's a mismatch. But you gotta realize. The level of player that we've got here. Uh, Kim Sulky, we're not underestimating this guy. We we heard a little bit of rumors of him coming into DFC. And this guy is nothing to shake a stick at, man. This is uh this guy is pretty insane. One of the top Zon players that's that's out there right now. Thankful to have this dude in uh the DFC kicking some ass. Let's see what we can do here. There's uh I'm gonna Turn off streamer mode just for a second so I can see. I was gonna say, yeah, Jin Shin is is uh this guy's name. Kim Solki is his arena name. Jin Shin is the is the actual uh is is the known name of this dueler. Guy is insane on the Zon, and people are speculating that this guy might be new top Don top Zon in the DFC. You think Muchez was great, you think Muchez had all the moves. You think Muchez had the build, the testicular fortitude. This guy has got it all. Now, granted, this is a very hard matchup for him. Look at this. Hammering on that name lock at close range there. Just eating those traps, saying, look, let's go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, baby. And he almost got there, dude. Almost finished it. That was so close. And such a clutch call to make on a Zon there. I think a lot of lesser Zon players would have run away there. Like, this is certainly a tough matchup for Jinshin. But, man, he's playing it so well. And just, like, even at close range, just making the, uh, you know, making the the call to say, okay, I'm not going to, I'm not going to run from this. I'm actually just going to hold this lock, throwing a jab at him. You know, keeping the protection out there in case he decides to come in and whirl. But damn, it's hard to tell too if he's if Riz is hybrid. He's throwing those traps down there, which seem like they do some damage. There was enough of them down there to make me think that they're probably doing some damage on this hybrid. But it's impressive to see him not on a ghost, like not on a on a pure ghost. I'm pretty sh I'm pretty sure he's hybrid. Yeah, he's leading with traps, dude. Like he Riz is on a hybrid. This is nuts. And if that's the case, then technically a, a bit, this is kind of a fair match. Uh, if Riz is on hybrid, I would have expected to see him on Ghost. But we do, we have seen him run a hybrid Sin. Uh, he ran it against me, actually, in the last duel against my throw barb. Uh, but he's got the ability to. And he's also the type of player that's collected some nasty claws over the years and probably is decked out with them. So he's got the best claws for these hybrid approaches right here that he's that he's taken. He's taking a lot of damage, but there's still a lot of work that Jin Shin has to do. 
Yeah, them traps hurt. This He's definitely on hybrid. I'm so happy to see it, honestly, because an aggressive player like Riz is exciting to see on a hybrid trap sin that I think opens up a lot more doors uh, for a sin player to be on a hybrid, especially if you have the skills that the aggressive skills that Riz has that come from all of those years on a ghost. Like, I, I think this is this is exciting to see a little bit of a, a little bit of low frames here from uh, from Jin Shin. I'm going to pop back over to Riz. What an incredible duel so far. I believe I want to say it's 2-1 in favor of Jin Shin. It could be 3-1, though. Yeah, he's definitely hybrid for sure. RNG claw block versus evade. Bro, the Zon dodges more shots that she shouldn't dodge than any claw blocking sin. I'm not going to lie. Like, I fucking hate the dodge avoid evade on a Zon. It is so annoying, dude. Put it this way. It is so bad that I, de I dueled a Zon in melee. And I thought that she had like a billion defense. I was like, what's your defense? Like six billion? It was 2K. Like, I couldn't hit her. Like, I couldn't hit the Zon. Because dodge, avoid, evade, max block, and then 2K defense. Like, it was just insane. All right, Riz trying to work in and get a nice angle. Very nice whirl there, but a very long whirl. And this is what I mean. Jin Shin is an incredible Zon player. Busts out the bow at close range, realizing that Riz is on an outward whirlwind and might have done, might have gone a little long with it. Like that was, that is actually incredible. An incredible call to be made at close range combat like this. Jin Shin is wild, dude. This guy is a wild Zon. Bring back bears on. Hell yeah, man. I would love to see one of those in melee. By the way, what's up, Polytheus? How you doing, man? Close duel here. Could be anybody's round. I would say because of the open wounds, Riz might have the advantage, but he's eaten some nasty jabs from Jinshin. And now he's in trouble. But those traps could be doing some work. And there it is. Very nice aggression there from Riz. Good duels. It looks like possibly a 4-1 or maybe 4-2. Incredible win from uh, from Riz. Like I said, it's very refreshing. I mean, we saw a similar duel when we saw Muchez versus Dazer for the title. We saw a very similar duel in a very skilled uh, hybrid Sin versus a very skilled Zon with uh, similar results there. So I think this actually speaks loudly for... for uh, for Riz to show how vicious of a hybrid sin he really is. And all of those aggressive skills are coming from those so many years on a straight ghost where he's, you know, he's trying to get in and whirlwind his opponent at all costs. Uh, but also, I got to say, certainly an uphill battle, I think, for Jinshin. Jinshin is an incredible Zon player, and we see it even just in the small interactions. This might have been 4-1, maybe 4-2 or whatever it was. But let that not speak for how good Jin Shin is. Like this was this was a tough matchup for him. Not gonna lie, it, it was a tough matchup for him. Uh, but all of the small decisions that he made in between all of those rounds, when like Riz is up close, whirlwinding away, him choosing to swap to the bow, seeing it as his very small window of opportunity to get guided arrows in there, was just such high level Zon play, man. I mean, that's the thing. Like Zons are very hard to play. They're extremely annoying to play against because of dodge, avoid, and evade, but if you're going to play it effectively and really make people feel miserable for playing against the Zon, you've got to have those Zon skills to boot. you got to be able to make those calls, know when to swap, and we also saw that with Jinshin. He was so easily able to swap between jab and bow appropriately. Like, that was wild, man. Very, very good player. We also got some other duels going on here. Thank you guys so much for that. I'm going to pop back into Lamp v. Gertie. Now, this one should be should be underway here. Looks like these guys are still going. What was the score, Max? Do we remember? Was it 3-1, 3-2? Where, where did we leave off with this? Uh, no, the matches aren't random. Uh, the, the matches are set up based on... They're based on a lot of factors, but it's basically human-made matches. So 
It's not random, like some algorithm picks them. It's usually based on the amount of wins that you have but it could also be based on other factors. So for example, let's assume Marvel. Uh, if you're familiar with this guy, he's, he's the best Paladin player in all of Diablo 2. The, the best Smiter player, period, and it's not even close. He's never been in the DFC. But if this guy joined the DFC, right, we wouldn't put him against Montreana, who has like, you know, one or two wins in recent history. Like, but we would recognize the skill level is different between these two players, right? Like, Montreon is good and creative, but we wouldn't match his barb up against a newcomer like fucking Mar uh, Marvel's Din. Like, it's just not fair in any way, right? So we take in a lot of factors, and the biggest goal with all of the DFC matches is to try to make exciting fights, right? To try to make exciting matches. So what, what we kind of wanted to see here, I'm actually happy that Riz went hybrid because after I saw it on the card, I was like, oh shit, he's going to be going a, a Ghost versus Zahn. That's miserable. But I saw that I put Sin on the card so that he has the option to go hybrid, uh, which is what we were hoping because we saw a match like that for the title recently and it was very back and forth, very interesting. Uh, and... It just so happened that Jinshin had a different approach. He went walks on instead of Telly. Uh, you know, instead of Telly Boa. So it was a different approach. Very good Zon player. We do know, you know, I, I was learning about Jinshin a little late, but I, I heard this guy's a legend in uh, Zon v Zon. And this guy is just an absolute savage. So we're, we basically give him, based on that, like opponents that are good. You know what I mean? Like that are, that are tough. Like, uh, but yeah, this this might have been a little much. Riz is tough, and it was also kind of you're going against an aggressive whirlwind sin player, like by nature. So that's tough for Zon. I I feel slightly bad about that. Uh, if like if I'm being real, uh, that could have been that that could have been a little better. But uh, it was still exciting. That was still a cool match to watch. Like the most the most important thing with any dfc match is make an exciting fight like make an exciting one to watch so when we saw necro v uh sin today in dazer versus toshank i usually hate making that matchup it, because they go long a lot of times people are just chat pking and calling late switch really i mean the same shit happened in this duel right that's per typical but the difference was the duel was actually exciting and fun to watch even though it lasted a long time like so yeah like that's that's the difference just make exciting matches and there's some players that are just super exciting almost no matter who you put them up against and i think dazer and toshank are both those types of players uh but and then there's some people who are you know not as exciting no matter who you put them up against uh, you know, it's but that all oftentimes has a lot to do with the build that they choose, not necessarily how good of a player they are or their play style. Like a lot of times people who play on Necro, like Vamp the Champ was one of those people, I think, that like his duels were exciting to me. I loved seeing his duel until he was like 20% life. Then it was miserable. Like, you know, but that's the build. That's his build. Yeah. This is very interesting. This is the grudge match that's gone back and forth tonight. Lamp versus Taz for belt. HC, I did love being a part of those melee duels. Like, melee duels are just a very interesting way to go because you know that it's not you as a player. Like, it, it, you know, when you're doing melee, you know it's not you as a player. It's not anything besides your build choice, the decisions that you've made before you even stepped outside. Like, so you know that they're very changeable things. Like, melee is such a fun way to duel. And there it is, man. Gertie gets there again. He says, GG, easy. I think, is that it? Uh, did he win? I think he won. I'm pretty sure that's four wins. I think it's 4-2. Gertie wins, man. Proving the grudge point. Proving the grudge point, he says, man, oh man. Gertie made a statement. He says, these cold sorks are overpowered and miserable. And man, did he prove it tonight.
It is definitely a tough build. Lamp certainly couldn't do it on a sand. He did play very well, though. Uh, I think um, that match went on a long time, but mainly because of AFK and chat PK. Uh, but it was fun. It, it was fun to watch. Very interesting result. Cold Sorks are the boogeyman. The boogeyman of many people's matches. They really are. You never really want to be matched up against one almost no matter what, unless you're a wind druid. And then in which case, it's kind of fun. It's not fun for that cold sword. Melee PvP itemization is a special kind of fun. 100%. Like, because you know that, like, every time I would lose and I would go back and I'd be like, well, what if I did this? If I did this, then I wouldn't need this. And it's so weird with melee dueling, too, in the sense that it just so happened to work out perfectly with the itemization and skills and all of this that, like, it's almost impossible to perfectly balance everything. Like, it's almost Im impossible to perfectly balance DR with maximizing your damage. Having cannot be frozen. Like, all of these things, and your IAS breakpoints, all of these things are just so difficult to have a handle on concretely. That it's just, it's so wild, man. Like, there's... Like, the the level of juck fuckery in melee dueling is just, is nuts. Bro, we could do this. We need some... Alright. We're giving up massive AR here? No, we're not. We're giving up massive DR. See, like, what? I, I have this creative build, but now I'm like, I have 38 DR. Oh, what's my damage? Oh, my damage sucks too, so this is actually horrible. Uh, Let's go to this. Let's jam it and slam it right. Bro, I'm giving up all IAS. I'm giving up all IAS. We're sacrificing 100% IAS. This is what I mean. This is the type of juck fuckery that's kind of fun. Like, you get to see how important... IAS is in these duels. My life is so low on this din too. I need better charms. Uh, still waiting on literally anybody to, to stream if they want to. Alright, here we go. Follow me. Alright, here we go. No, literal no IAS. I actually don't think we have any IAS. Like... So apparently that's a pretty important thing, huh? Like, <laughs> apparently that IAS is pretty important. Oh shit! I actually want to change something here. I don't. I don't like SS with this. All right, let's give up that DR. Let's see how important that really is. All that. Juck fuckery bullshit. Can't be that important. Let's let's give up. Let's give up some shit. Come on. Alright, we have a little bit more IAS now. Dude, we're just getting smashed. Alright, I hate to do this, but after getting my ass kicked horribly here tonight, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna switch to the Cookie cutter build. 13 Canadian dollars and 99 cents from Kyle. I think with melee setup you need a larger dual set to get numbers and change things slightly to see over a set of 10 or more matches. Just need larger win, lose to know what works because of the RNG. Yeah, 100%. And that's the thing. Any change that you make, you need to like really jam some duels to figure out how it actually affected it. Yeah, so like I kind of get impatient and do one or two duels and then I'm like, oh, this sucks. But you, Kyle, you're right. You have to do a lot more. So it's like constant personalized testing for your character that you get to figure out and learn your dude like more than any other build. It's kind of cool. By the way, thank you so much for that, man. 1399 Canadian. Big cheers to you, brother. Really appreciate it. Max about to duel. What? Oh shit. Thanks you for the heads up, bro. Oh, pop over. 
Max, about to duel. Let's pop in. Yeah, we're going to make some changes in this uh, in this melee build here. We've got a lot of changes to make. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna cut to like a probably a cookie cutter setup and just see how that does. Like, it's it's screwy, but we've tried a lot of crazy shit and it just we're getting we're getting smashed by people that have good stuff. Like, very well thought out, perfectly crafted. Like they figured out all their breakpoints. We're still figuring everything out, trying dumb shit, and it's we're running up against a wall against people that have builds that meet breakpoints that meet d that meet the dr and they meet those core the sort of like core tenants of melee so that or we go back to the exact death build from the video i can't even remember what it is i gotta go check it out you hear me twice you you hear me twice what's going on here hold up let me see. It could be... What's going on here? Oh, it's because you hear... Uh, you're in the Cooley Voice channel, and you are listening to Max's stream. So, like, if I unmute Max's stream... And you are listening to Max's stream. So, like, if I... You see what I mean? So that, that's why you're hearing it, but we're not. All right, that being the case, I got to piss, boys. It's a little bit of a process with one hand. But we're going to start up this round. If I miss it, you're going to have to let me know how it goes. I'll, I'll BRB. I feel like an old man. I have to check a lot of boxes just to go use the shitter. Make sure I don't die. All right, BRB. And here we go, we're back. Yeah, got to take some necessary precautions. Unzipping the fly and undoing the pants with the one hand. It's a skill, okay? It's a skill set I never thought I'd have to develop. Luckily, I'm right-handed. So this experience has been... 
a lot easier than other people who have rotator cuff surgeries. Yeah, exactly. Well, technically, I've always been an ambidextrous ass wiper. So, Tommy Fred's trains, technically, uh, I would have been okay in that regard, regardless. I don't know why, but uh, earlier on in my life, this, like, I, I knew I would need this skill someday. I, I shit you not. Like, growing up, like, when I was, a, like, a little kid to, like, early adulthood, I would always wipe with my left. But then one day I decided I was like, I'm right handed. How come I don't do it with my right? So I like practiced and I got good. And I, uh, ever since I've been an ambidextrous ass wiper, like I actually put it on my resume. Um, so like when I apply to jobs, they they know how talented I really am. Like, cause that's something that not a lot of people can do. Yeah, let's figure they should know. <laughs> they know when they shake Cooley's hand, right? They know what I take pride in. Yeah. Yeah, I, I fell. I fell and tore my rotator cuff. Don't fall. Falling sucks. All right, here we go. Max going up against Trafalgar. This is his duel here tonight. Now... We recently made a change in the Druid rule set that should make this duel possibly a little less miserable for the Druid uh, in the sense that they can actually Sorb a bit more. Uh, we, we lifted the Druid exception to Sorb, basically. So the Druid can Sorb just like any other class versus a Trapper, um, <laughs> which is wild. But they also have Cyclone armor and shit. But regardless, it's it's actually just a miserable duel for the Druid for this exact reason. You see this? He can't really get close to Max because uh, he, he actually nailed it, though. He actually landed in NATO. He can't get close to Max because Max has that Mind Blast. He keeps pushing him away. Every time he sets up to go for that Tele Stomp, if his Shadow Bay doesn't Mind Blast him, Max will Mind Blast him because he knows what he's going to do. Max knows he's looking for that, that Stomp, so we immediately look at that. As soon as he goes in, Max looks for that uh, that Name Lock. Like He looks for that Name Lock to start Mind Blasting because he knows he's gonna he's got traps up and he's going to stop him from stomping him. Like, and the druid has to stomp. He has to get in there. Trafalgar has to throw some NATOs. But, dude, I'm actually impressed with how good Trafalgar has done so far. Max is, like, 25%. Trafalgar has done extremely well. Oh, and there it is. Max closing the distance. He might get there with Mind Blast PK. It, it all depends on if Trafalgar has uh, used the life everlasting helm here based on his his play style right now i doubt he has uh because he's he's kicking back he knows he's mind blast pk oh my god how the fuck did he get there what what did max just do <laughs> what did he just did he just fire blast pk him what <laughs> what did he do or did shadow bay mind blast him yeah he's just not sure how i died there me neither Oh my god. That was nuts. <laughs> yeah, I think you're right, Dio. He has to like he has to CT in and out. Like it's it's very hard. You you have to give Max no time to get a name lock. Like he's gonna he's gonna have traps up and he's gonna try to mind blast you so that you don't telly stomp him and you just have to beat him to the punch. You just have to be quick. And if you are, if you CT in, CT out, you could be looking good. But if you take too long looking for that that stomp, it's not gonna go well. Like you can't give him any time. GG, thanks, Odin. Appreciate you, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you know what num what number are you with the likes? I'm gonna let you know what number I am. I'm number 60. Lucky number 60 right there. What number are you? Who did it? Who done it? Appreciate that, Odin. Thank you so much, man. Fifty-eight. 
You're fucking late, Kyle. We've expected number one. 55 GG. Appreciate you guys. You know what? You know what liking something does? A lot of people think it increases the visibility in the algorithm. It just a small degree it does. Very small degree. But it actually just tells YouTube that you as someone who watches YouTube videos and streams think that this right here is the best PvP organization and PvP stream in all of YouTube. Or at least in all of D2. That's what it does. They write it down and they say, okay. This is best PvP. We're going, we're going for it. We're anybody who likes PvP anything, we're gonna show them the DFC. Yep, factual information. Yeah, it's it, that's I've seen the code. I've seen the code. It tells YouTube that this is the best PvP ever. Holy shit. Quick kill there for Max. Uh, Trafalgar was like 20% there. And then just got blown up by traps. So what Max has done to sort of make up for, um, for like the added sorb that a druid can have is he's gone full elephant with fucking nasty nasty trap damage. I think last we knew, Max can hit 20k traps. Like, yeah, that's, that That was last known information, Max can hit 20k traps on the Elephant Sin. So that's sort of what he's done to negate any of the sorb that the Druid is, you know, now granted in the rule set, right? Like, the Druid can have his T-God's Wisp if he wants to. He can have his 8520 if he wants to, and in addition to his cyclone armor. But let me tell you how much that sucks when you get blown up by 20k traps. That really sucks. Yeah, can we get a C press, Max? <laughs> Let's get a C press. Get serious for elephant. Yeah, 19k traps. He's he's dialed it, he's dialed it down a little bit. 19k. With 37 DR, but I don't think the DR actually counts his uh, his fade. So I think with fade, he's actually higher. No need cube for 20k. Oh, I see. Yeah, if he took the cube out, he could hit 20k. It does. I'm not on fade spec, so it does actually pop that up in there. Good to know. He's on max mind blast spec. Okay, interesting. Now, the counter to that could be, I mean, it's difficult to balance these two things, but, and it would almost certainly force Trafalgar to give up cast, which is probably exactly what Max wants. Oh my God, Max just blew up Trafalgar in a matter of seconds. <laughs> that was wild. What Trafalgar could do here is he could put on a Helm of Everlasting with 20 casts and like soul runes, right? Maybe Helm of Everlasting. No, no, it would be you couldn't have 20 casts in Everlasting. Uh, you would need a Jeweler's Helm of Life Everlasting. Put two low runes in it. And something else, maybe shale. And then put on a wisp for 8520. And then try to hit your breakpoint some other way. Like, I'm not sure if it's possible. But you could get it close. But if you don't, just hit the 99 and roll with it and try to go max damage. Like, because he needs to negate the Mind Blast damage at this point and the Trap damage. Like, Max's build is very intense here. Okay, so it looks like Trafalgar is going bear form here. He's going bear form? What is he... What the fuck is this? All right. Well, I mean... Max don't give a shit. 
what what the hell is Trafalgar doing? He's encouraging him. He's saying, let's let's go. I'm gonna hit you in bear form. I think he's given up. Even the shock webs are dealing like ridiculous damage. Was that a real duel or were they were they just dicking around? That was legit. <laughs> close match. <laughs> Trafalgar says close match. Jesus Christ. Yeah, it's miserable, dude. That's miserable. I thought it would actually be a little closer, honestly, with the sorb that a druid could have, but then again, you can't you can't base it all off of Max's build, because Max does an ass ton of damage. But like the druid can theoretically sorb the shit out of this sin. Theoretically. And if you get in the habit on the druid of getting in, out, like, CT tallying in, CT tallying out, and recasting cyclone armor all the time, I think you can kind of whittle them down. All you need is, like, three good hits. So you might not get them all the time, but if they get you mind blast locked or whatever, just reset. Just tell you out, reset. That could also be a way to do it. Went up from 11.5 to 12.5, going from 4 LS to 5 LS on main hand. No shit. Who wants to continue getting slapped by the elephant saying, I agree. Max is also one of those players that I, I, I'd be lying if I said every time a DFC card comes up and I see Max on Sin, I'm like, ugh. This is gonna be hard to make a match. <laughs> like, this is gonna be hard. Because he's also just one of those players. He's very experienced on a Sin. He can make any duel miserable for you. But, like, I really don't think he has a bad matchup. I, I really don't think there's any matchup that is just unwinnable for him. Want to see Dio versus this sin? Yeah, let's do it. I say let's do it. Trafalgar, sorry for the miserable matchup, my dude. Appreciate you being a good sport. It is a miserable matchup. We'd need Lolo Pelt plus 15, uh, 15 Sorb. Or 20 Sorb in the, in the DFC. We understand here in the DFC that traps are fucking dumb. Traps are ass. So we we encourage players to oversorb. What would what would be considered BM 8520 sorb or even T gods and 10. We encourage those kind of that kind of juck fuckery. Right? That is highly encouraged in the DFC. Dio gonna atone for his sins. Yeah, that's I'm kind of curious to see it like. Dio knows the strategy. I think what we'll see with Dio is just Dio looking to get in and land a hit. And if he gets caught with Mind Blast, he just goes back out and resets his Cyclone armor. I, I'm betting we're going to see that. Because I think that is the strategy versus this. Like, you get in. If you can beat Max to the punch before he Mind Blasts you, you Tele Stomp, NATO him, get out. But if he, if he Mind Blasts you... You get out too. Just go reset, recast the cyclone armor. Can Dio do it? This is this is interesting. Is Dio streaming it? He's not. I also see sound live, so we might kick over to that next. Sorry, Trafalgar. I feel bad, bro. Look. You gotta earn a good match, alright? You gotta get Discord. You gotta earn yourself a good match. Otherwise, straight ass matches from here on. <laughs> I'm just, just kidding, man. Dio gets there, man. Holy shit. Dio did it. Yeah, I, I knew that would be the strategy, though. He, he leaves these trailing NATOs, too. Like, he's also very good at that. Like, he kind of cuts off your... He cuts off your outs, where, like, if you do decide to kind of chase him and to close the distance, he always has these trailing NATOs that, that, like, he punishes you for it. But then he'll approach you and try to look for his angle. And it's also good if, you if as he approaches you, you run back to where he was, because then there's going to be 
He's like, oh, that was the wrong place to run. But and he caught him a couple of times of those. But like, I, I knew we would see that strategy where like he's in and out. He's just looking for an opportunistic hit. He doesn't need many of them. Oh, yeah, that's true, too, Johnny Dubs. Actually, against an Elephant Sin, you really have to stack up the the uh, Lightning Res, too, because the Elephant Sin is not only going to do 20k traps, but as we've seen with Max, he's also going to sunder your resistance a bit. Um, if he uses Plague, lower res can go off and really suck down your resistance is pretty bad. The Griffin's Eye, also, that works now versus Light Res, uh, the minus Light Res on that. Um, but then also, if he gets really tricky, like we've seen this guy before, this type of player that will lay traps with an infinity so that he gets minus 55 to enemy light res, like that is just on his traps. Like, that's just the type of player. And there it is. Now he gets the lower res proc from the plague. One hundred percent, Peter. Same here, man. I mean, as we saw with Melee tonight, I mean, I didn't win those duels, but we got to see Rune Master. We tried uh, Death. We saw EDC. We also saw some wild rares from those guys. Like, what an incredible night of, of duels so far. Like, the Melee section was by far my favorite. I'm not going to lie. Like, just by far. It was good. It was fun to be a part of it. It was fun to see it. It's fu It's fun for me to know that my losses come from my exact character design. Like, that's exactly why I'm losing. There's no surprise. Oh, and there it is, man. Dio almost got there with a couple of NATOs at the end, but Max gets there. GG. All right, let's cut over to sound. This guy, Absolute Savage. May I remind you, this is the dude that designed all of the Juck fuckery that we saw earlier tonight. All of this right here. This is the work of sound. Looks like he's on a sin here tonight. Going to be very interesting to see. But this is the work of this man right here. Uh, and as you can see, look at this. Look at these balanced statistics all time from Trapper. I think we can. Uh, I think we can edit the time frame here. I think we can edit it to like. Let's go like last year. Like, let's just go like a year out, right? And we'll just reset all of these stats. Yeah, I fucking love this board, dude. Let's see what these look like in recent history. Data set configuration error. What? What? Let's try it again. Let's try this again. Uh, I broke it. I broke it, sound. I, I broke your machine. I'm sorry. I, I broke it. That was a nice sheet that Sound made, man. For a while, it worked perfectly. But as we know in the DFC, we run it till we break things. You know, this is... Yeah, Mike is the man, dude. He's, he's so good. Yeah, he put together a, a data set. That one was looking at all-time data right there. I tried to just dial it in with a date, uh, but then I broke it. Uh, so, my bad. But, um... But yeah, dude, the data that he was able to put together with this is I, I can't wait to actually dive into it and, and to see it like I just kind of caught wind of it this morning, was checking it out and wanted to show it off to you guys on stream, gave him a couple of suggestions just with the color. But like, oh, man, it looks good. Looks good, feels good. It's going to be good to actually like when we unbreak that. It's going to be good to like dive into the data. You can see the duelers that represent that class. Like, oh, it's so cool, man. Yeah, he did. He did such a good job with that. Yep. DFC every Thursday. We usually start up about 6 p.m. Eastern. I say usually, but we're pretty religious about it. We don't mess around. I'm going to be on melee duty for a few weeks uh, with my bionic arm. Melee duty for me. Click and hold. We used to look for five NATO Vizo pelts. Well, just for the look. Just for the white look. Yep. Yep, 100%. Those are, those are really cool. But then I think if you... Well, you don't necessarily have to give up the two sockets for that, but... You're running it kind of low. 
You're limiting your options for style at that point. Well worth it. Holy shit! Okay, this is a big match right here. This is Sound on the Sin versus Sogi on the Din. And Sogi gets there, man. Sogi actually very impressive with that. That was, that's A Sin is not an easy matchup for a Din. Very impressive uh, first round there from Sogi. Could be first round. These guys, I th I'm not sure if, if, if that was first round or not. But uh, yeah, that was incredible. Yeah, I think so too, man. Best color in LOD because it was extremely bright in LOD. Like, obnoxiously bright, which was really cool. That was the uh, that was the pinnacle of the... You remember the white items from back in the day? The hacked white items? The Viso mod would just overshadow all of the other mods for, for the color. And it would turn them white. And those things were so nasty. Yeah, it just reminds me of those old school white items. Best look for sure. Uh, I saw somebody in Melee who actually went out of their way to get all of their rare items that they wear to ha to be white in color. So like their armor was the defense mod, like the defense by level mod, which makes it white as well. Uh, and their helm had the Viso mod making it white. Uh, and even their weapon was, I'm not sure what they did to that, but that was also white. And I'm like, this, this is so cool looking, man. Like, and of course with Holy Shield, it just looks so insane. Oh, you're fixing the sheet now? Ah, the white sniff sniff. Yeah. Bro. If you guys have LOD accounts and you have like 08 or hacked items on there in any way, hybrids, y'all ought to keep those alive, man. That's a piece of history. Sound is fixing the sheet right now. Sound be fixing it. Oh, shit. He done fixed it. Well, would you look at that? Woo look at that, man. He fixed it. All right, now let's fuck with the date. Let's see if we can break it again. Let's go, like, yeah, m like March. Let's see if we can break it. Oh, we didn't break it. Okay, so this is recent history. While these guys get pre-buffed here, let's check this out. This is recent history. Bone Necro? Not bad. People saying they OP, but I, I really disagree. Uh, where is... Oh, the Ghost Sin. Ghost is OP, bros. Ghost is OP. We're going to have to check more of this out in a second, man. We got to cut back over to Sounds Duel here that you can hear in the background. Because, man, oh, man. God, I could look at this data all night. Woo! Man, thanks, Sound, for putting that together, dude. Holy shit, that's good. Riz skewing the ghost results. Riz! Ban Riz! <laughs> Ban Ghost! Man, oh, that's so cool. The, the, the font is really small there. I'm actually going to zoom in when we go back to it, see if I can make it a little bigger. But, like, man, it's so cool to look at that. I don't think we need to see, so, like, all of that on there. We could just be able to clean some of it up by, like, just removing the shit that... We don't really care about seeing it. It's really cool to see how, like, the top graph shows how much DFC has grown over the last several months. Like, it just, like, there's more duels, like, more, more, uh, more players, more duels, which is really cool. But I don't think it's necessary. It's cool to know it, but we could take it out, put something else in there. I'm just, I'm just deck teching with ideas over here. It's just so cool, man. I love the fact that he's put that together. And to boot, right? Not only is this dude a savage data guy, also a savage dueler this guy on a sin tonight but holy shit i had no idea how much of his work he'd have cut out for him versus sogi here sogi is actually a savage din he's landing some nasty foh's from the outside and forcing sound to pick an angle to to adjust his position and as soon as he does sogi gets in there with a charge with a smite he's actually playing very well on this din and and again this is not an easy match for a din like, the Din does not have the advantage here. It's, it's extremely difficult. He got that round one, and he's seriously putting the pressure on, being very opportunistic against Sound. We usually see Sound on a Din. Sound actually took the DFC title on a Din. And this guy, I'm not talking just one specific type of Din. This guy was able to morph back and forth to whatever he needed to be. 
This guy had one of the most interesting builds and one of the most interesting skill sets, right? He could swap his din to be a, a VT. He could be hammered in. He could be murdered in. Like, he could play all of those different variants. But it looks like, oh my gosh, what is this? Is, uh... Is Sogi an, an actual mage? Is that actually what he is? If so, that's incredible. So he is, he's pinging with FOH from the outside, which seems to be doing some, some decent damage. We'll have to get another, uh, another hit check to see when it happens. But, dude, he's also getting in here smiting. I see him throwing hammers. This is very confusing. What kind of din is this, man? Getting in there with smite, charge, hammers... Bro, this might be a murdered in. I think Sogi's on a murdered in. Or he he's he's on a vanquisher, I think. Yeah, murdered in is when he busts out the bow. I mean, we've 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 kind of very liberally uh converted the murdered in to what it is today, but oh my god, and he gets there again. Sogi for 2-0 so far. Incredible performance so far from this din player. I lost all my hacked gear at least four different times. God damn, Bruno. What are you doing? This is a history. I can't tell you. By the way, I hear uh DJ, we gotta we gotta mute it. I hear some in-game music here. I don't want no dueling banjos going on, okay? We need to hear the blood more music, the act one music, the real music. The real shit. Wow, that's just incredible din play from this guy, though. Sogi, nuts. So what I was saying is we've kind of liberally interpreted the murdered in to basically any din that busts out a bow. Uh, but the technical murdered in is really something we actually haven't seen in a long time in the DFC, and I'm thinking about bringing it back. Like, the murdered in is actually a, a din that does significant physical damage with the bow. Like, we're talking, like, even the video that I made, like, the new updated version of the Murdered In is more of, like, meta Murdered In than it is real Murdered In. Like, real Murdered In is max damage charms with, like, a little bit of P-combs to keep your hammers up. Like, maybe one or two P-combs, and the rest are max damage AR lifers. Like, you know, possibly if you want to get real techy, you mix in some 451s. But it's like, you bust that bow out, and when you crack somebody with the bow, it fucking hurts. Like, they never want to get hit with the bow. They would rather get hit with your hammers because they have a better chance. Like, that's murdered in. But we've sort of loosely interpreted murdered in these days to basically any paladin that busts out the bow. It has sort of a diversified skill set. I still have a lot of shit on LOD. You haven't let it expire, have you, Doom? B manas, top sork circlets, two fletches. I got my fletches too. I think I have two fletches. Bam, there it is. He gets there again. Sogi 3 0 so far in a matchup that is certainly not in his favor. That is impressive, man. Holy hell. Thank you so much again, uh, Sound, for streaming this, dude. It's good to see a perspective here. Much appreciated. Streaming his perspective, showing off the sin skills. Previous DFC champion and creator of the DFC stats summary. Hello. Got it all. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, that was the thing back in the day. Bruno nailed it. Hit the nail on the head, dude. They they set this expiration because back in LOD, you could only have one character that had a certain name. Like, and when they realized that there's only a finite number of names that people could ever have, they decided to put expiration dates on people's characters and accounts. So, like, now if your character expires after 90 days of no play and somebody else tries that name, your character gets deleted. So, like, that's the thing. They added that in and now you have to log in, like, every 90 days to go and re-up your character. Like, it's it's... You know, it's a pain in the ass, but I still continue to do it, man. Yeah, you need to keep refreshing it. It sucks, but it was like a it was a very bad band-aid on a gaping bullet wound is what it was. Like the the gaping bullet wound was thankfully something that they fixed in D2R, which was 
the fact that you could only have one of a name in in the realm. It was really cool because I made a lot of forum gold off from names. Like I would just get cool names. Like I got the name Go and sold it for like 3k, which was probably, a, you know, it doesn't seem like a lot these days, especially when you get, you know, when we see items in D2R that are worth like 10, 20, 30k. But back in the day, dude, like 2, 3k of forum gold was actually a lot. Like that, that was a ton. Like you're talking like perfect uniques, like a 100% per, a perfect dungos would go for 1k. Like, you know, that's, that is extremely rare. In D2R, just like inflation, a 100% perfect one would probably go for 5 to 10, like at least. The unique names also had problems with name botting. Oh, for sure. I remember for a period of time, people with the name Zon could not log on because there were name botters trying to get the name 24-7. Jesus Christ. I had the account name Zon, but I've since lost it. I was so pissed that I let that one go. I had it in recent history. I had the account name Zon in recent history. I only recently lost the account. I was so pissed. Like, that's such a popular name. Lost some 99s on that account, for sure. They don't disappear until somebody tries the name. Or the account. More big hits from Sogi, but he's very low. Is he going to be able to survive these traps? Can Sound make a comeback? Sound is going in for some whirlwinds there. Very, very interesting choice of things to do. I would always think you never whirlwind the din. And as a Savage Din player himself, one would think that Sound would not try such a risky maneuver, but he did. He tried to cut him open there. Uh, and honestly, I think with the way that, that uh, you know, the Juck fuckery that's allowed versus Sins, you kind of... That's probably why Sound is doing that. He's trying to cut him open because he has to take that risk. Whereas, like, there's bigger Sorb, it gets the duel done quicker, it's more aggressive, and God bless him for that. Like, that's, that's actually cool. Guess my names were too cringe to be taken. Yeah, or they were just not common names. Like, people would name bot names like God, like Zon, like Din, uh, Paladin, Barb, Druid. Like, you know, I still have the name. No, I don't. I just lost the name Drew. My 99 named Drew lost to that, too. Fucking A. I'm losing some shit, boys. Feel bad about that one, because that actually had hybrids on it. I, I talk all this shit, but I'm telling you the importance, okay? Telling you the importance. You gotta, you gotta do it. Yeah, like, those names are the ones that get commonly tried. And if you have those names, you're gonna lose them. But if you have name, names like XX God Slayer Not here. B, no one will likely ever try that name. Like, so you could probably let it expire. Yeah, there are level 30 duels uh, in in D2R for sure. Yep. Yeah, I have a couple of videos out there with it. Like, I made this video in recent history about, uh, like, the thumbnail says, like, this armor is broken. And it's about the, Than it's called the Thanos barb. And that's an LLD barb. And there's some LLD duels in that. Oh, man. Vicious hits here from Sogi. Sogi is just putting on a Din Clinic here. And there it is, man. Barely touched that time. Unbelievable. Incredible performance from these guys. Wow, man. That was nuts. I am overburdened. That was nuts. I believe it's over. I, we have seen four deaths from Mr. Sound here. Right? This shit... This shit is done. But this is just beginning. Let's dive into this real quick before we hop off. Uh, I will. I'm going to apologize. I feel bad for this. There's two things I got to do, and I'll, pre I'll preface it with this. I don't think before my surgery I sent out forum gold rewards uh, for fight of the night, performance of the night. I'm gonna get those right after stream. Um, but also, I apologize. I wasn't really taking notes about like best duels and best performances tonight. So we're just gonna. 
We're gonna forego this. Look, I have one arm, boys and girl. I have one arm. And it hurts your brain power. All right? It's tough. We'll get it going again next week. Prize is back online next week. GGM should bring his uh, P1 PVM built here. Yeah, I, I, yeah, he should. He actually has some good ideas, though, man. I learned a lot of shit from uh, from watching GGM. He's very original. Yeah, you can't zoom in. It doesn't really change anything. The font is just extremely small with this. But, yeah, so this is the breakdown. VC. What? Fury? What is this? What is this? Oh, okay. Look at this. These guys are quick. Holy, these dual results are already in there. Vegeta is already in there. Already making Fury look, but we got to ban Fury. Apparently, it's overpowered. 100% win rate. Can't be beaten. Fury ban. HLD straight ban. This is crazy. I'm so excited to see these matches already in there. Thank you guys for doing that. It actually means a lot because A, it's hard to type with one arm, but B, wow, it's so cool to see this live. So these duels tonight that we've seen, I, I say performance of the night goes to sound. Like, <laughs> performance of the night goes to sound. <laughs> Holy shit. Gets these duel results in here already? What? Yeah, that's nuts. But dude, I would say, like, DFC's fairly balanced. With the exception of this build right here. Who runs this? What is this? This is the... Oh, this is the Telly Boa. Well, that's a pretty broken build. I'm glad we banned that Impale in certain matchups. That was a recent change, but it wasn't hard to see from the even the data that wasn't put together like this that Telly Boa was just broken. Like, it was just too good. If you were good on it, you just basically couldn't be beat by anything but a smiter. That's a lot of duels, too. 60-40. That's, that's one of the best percentages. With a hammered in? Whoa, what is this? Ghost? Ghost 70% win rate? What? Now, this comes with a caveat that also we match duels in DFC to try to make fair matches. So these guys have come out 60% in you know with non-random matches. So that just means, that could just mean the matchmaker sucks. But this is cool. Telly Boa played by, this is all time. Or no, this is, this can't be right. It must be though. Or maybe this is looking at all time. And this is looking at all time. This is only changing certain things. Cause CJ hasn't dueled in a while. What if we click CJ? Does it do it? What does it do? We break things. We just, we just break things. Let's try not to break things. But bro, like, Wind Druid, 55% win rate. BVC is actually... Better than I thought it would be. Trapper. Busted. Who makes up Trapper here? This is so nuts. You have to kind of hover over the line to see, like, which ones are rising to the top here, but... 230. 230 tilting the statistics. 230 tilting them. But, uh, hold up. Let's go back. Trapper. Yeah, 230, Tempest. Tempest actually doing pretty well. Holy shit. This is all-time stats, I believe. Max. Look at Max's win-loss record. Max for title shot. Yeah, maybe this is taking the right. This isn't this isn't all-time. This is actually taking this date because Elite has a No. This is specifically for Trapper. This is elite on Trapper, all time. Yeah, that makes sense. Wow, dude. Max's performance on Trapper. 
Mine should be pretty high. Bro, that's insane. Bro, it's so cool to see this shit, man. Look at fucking Doshank on Trapper. What? <laughs> Over the last year, this guy is 11 and 1 on a trapper. I'm pretty sure his one loss was to Dirty. <laughs> or he forfeited or tried to get DQ'd. Wow. Yeah, Temp is so underrated. So underrated, bro. Fucking, all right, let's check out. Hold up. We got to find Cold, Cold Vita. This is probably skewed to Doombringer. 56.6. Yeah, look at this. Skewed. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to refresh this because it grays out sometimes. It makes it harder to see. It's like click in, click out. Yep. 33 wins, 22 losses for Doombringer. That's for this is all time, I believe. Yeah, that's that's actually dude, to have a winning record all time in the DFC is very hard to do. To have one that impressive is nasty. There's a lot of people that have tried the cold source versus some somewhat unsuccessfully. Elite tried it once. What? Is that a fluke? Man, I love data. Gertie is three two on one. Not sure if that that might count as most recent win. It, it probably does. What? Tempest is 4-4 on one. Doombringer's had the most success. But still, like, I mean, granted, cold stack rules have changed over time, and this is all time. So, it's hard to make any... It's hard to make any conclusions on this until we get it so that this can... Let me see, what is this? Can I make it so that it counts this date in time? I just clicked something. Optional metrics. Or. This is a little laggy. Google Data Studio here. It used to be called Data Studio. Now it's the Looker Studio. Little laggy. But kind of cool. Like worth looking into. Chart, cross data. Whatever that is. Days since last duel. What if we adjust that? Oh, that changes things. Okay, so we could go last 100 days. Look at that. Yeah, I think we've seen Tempest on a cold sword before. It's been entering as Trapper pretty consistently though, yep. Oridin is allowed, Fuser. Oridin is not banned in DFC. The only, the only time you cannot necessarily use an Oridin as is, is when you are going up against a fire-based build or some sort of build that is dealing the elemental damage that you have a 95% resist to. That's the only time you can't use it. Yeah. Yeah, it's technically allowed. Okay, so this is last 100 days. Lamp, Gertie, so Gertie's recent win is not there. But, yeah. Okay. That's pretty solid. Wait a minute. Did that also change this graph? I think it did. I think it also changed this graph. So this is recent history for these builds. Yeah, it did because these graphs are related. Or these charts are related. Wow. Look at this, dude. VT. VT needs some some love. We need to just say DINs have no rules. DINs, no rules. No, but Hammerdin looks good. Trapper looks good. Yeah, this is Trapper in recent history. Like, in, in recent calculated history. 49% win rate. God, this is wild. This is wild, dude. Wait, hold up. Trapper. 
There we go. Wow, this is just straight Trapper. There's also like hybrids and stuff. I'm sorry, this is just so cool to look at, man. Hybrid LS. How does Hybrid LS have an even worse win loss record or win rate? It has a 40%. What? It's probably because some of these names are repetitive. I would guess that there's like. I would guess that there's something else. There's some other name. Maybe not. No, it looks pretty clean. Spider. Yeah, there's like Spider, which is technically like hybrid LS. Oh, this is wild. This is wild. Most broken character currently. Throw whirlwind hybrid. I told you we'd be changing metas. I told you. Told you boys we'd be changing them. I actually doesn't I don't think this has my loss against barricade in there though. I might not have reported that. Cold ES. Okay, here it is. Cold ES. Wow. All right. Lamp and one are the same person. I think we need to adjust that. And that's going to get even better with Gertie because Gertie just went out on cold ES. Cold ES might actually be. Dude, Gertie might have a fucking point. We're just going to have to see some more players on cold ES, but it looks as though cold ES might be a broken. Might be busted. Maybe we've got a new thing to do here. We might, we might, we might have a new thing to do. I have some new, new jack fuckery to pull off. Here, here, guys. Lose some damage, but gain so much tankiness. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Too few duels. To, too few duelers to say. I would say. We need to we need to encourage Doombringer to go ES cold. If Doombringer was on ES cold, I think we know for sure. Doom, you got to do it. Go ES cold, bro. Looks to be very powerful. I'm not sure what these guys are doing. I'll have to hit up Lamp and be like, "Dude, what do you do?" Because I always thought that was the lesser build. But again, it could just be too few duels because in my opinion, if I was going up against an ES Cold Sork, I'd slap on 40 Cold Sorb and 315 res. And I'd aggro the shit out of them. But then again, I might lose. I have an ES Cold Sork, but not DFC level duelist. You never know, Steven. Or Stefan. You never know. Is it Steven? Is it, is it N? Or Ann? That was a terrible way to clarify that. Look, I have one arm. Shaman, clearly busted. Ban it. Sorry, Polytheus. Banned. Well, that's crazy. I, dude, looking at this, DFC rule set fucking kicks ass. Best rule set in the game. It's not even close. Oh, well, it's fucking wild. This is this actually kind of makes me happy. GG's, boys. That was, that was nuts. What a good night of fights. I'm probably going to call it. Uh, like I said, I got to send out some forum gold here. I'm going to make a point to do that. And then I'm going to go rest this arm. I feel like it's it's weird when I move it now. I've been sitting in this position for a while. Gonna have to go recover, boys. The bionic arm takes time in physical therapy. But soon, the fucking laser. The fucking the laser is gonna be online. This thing is fucking cannon. You see it? You see it? Bro, did I show you these? Did I show you these? These are the stitches. 
it's hard to it's hard to really show them off. They cut open the arm. They did some weird invasive shit. Cut up my arm. Pierced me up here too. Put those little prongs in me, dude. Apparently they like inflate your arm. Like they, it's stupid. It's strange, dude. They like pump a whole bunch of fluid into it and like pump it up and stuff so they have more room. <laughs> it's, it's weird. I don't even like to think about it. My arm got violated, dude. Yeah, fully awake. Watched him do it. Nah, they put you out, dude. It was actually a pretty fun experience. Like, the dudes were... Like, the doctors were pretty cool. Like, I just, you know... I let him know right away. I'm the top 10 in the DFC. Or was the top 10 in the DFC in 2023. And they were just instantly cool. Mad respect. Like, the anesthesiologist was like... She was like dropping F-bombs and shit. She was just cool. And then like... She goes, all right, we've got this in your IV. And she's like, we're uh, eventually going to give you some anesthesia, which will put you out, but I'm going to give you some oxygen. She's like, this is going to make you feel probably pretty high. She's like, you know, you'll, you'll feel pretty good. Uh, and dude, as soon as she gave me the oxygen, I could have gone out right there. I was like, ah, this is the life, man. But then uh, she was good. She was like communicated shit very well. She's like, all right, man, you're going to feel a little bit of a cooling sensation going through your hand. That's the anesthesia. I was like, yeah, it is kind of scary, but it had to do it, man. My arm was pretty messed up. It was like popping and stuff. And it was like uh, the deltoid was always sore, like from correcting from all of the rotator shit that it was trying to make up for it. Like bicep was creeping over, like the, the tendon was creeping over. So they're like, yeah, we're going to reattach that. Oh, it's gross, man. But violated. Yeah, better is a is a stretch. I will be better, I think, in six months. That's that's what I think the full recovery is. But I should be able to type and maybe duel like in the blood more in a couple of weeks. I think maybe it all depends. We're gonna see. I'm gonna do what the doctor says, but I would guess in like two to three weeks should be able to du duel in the blood more again, uh, and then. After about a month to six weeks, we'll be in physical or we'll be heavy into physical therapy and hopefully recovering. Uh, we'll have no sling. And then uh, three, four months out, we might be 80%. Like, all right, maybe 100%. Knowing me, 100%, you know, hopefully. Surgeon was actually Gertie. Give him a discount for TMZ valve. <laughs> GG's boys, thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you again. Uh, have a great week. I'll see you actually tomorrow. I'm going to pop on tomorrow and see what I can do with one hand. We might have a gamble stream. I don't know. It just all depends on what I can do with one hand. We're going to find it out. Thanks so much for joining me, guys. Really appreciate you. It's the highlight of my week. Big cheers to you guys. Thank you so much, Kyle, for your kind, generous donations. Kevin for the legend tier. Uh, Doug, thank you so much, man. Appreciate your kind words. Fax for the 20 spot. Brute Pen Dragon for the 10 gifted. You guys make it all possible. We're putting it towards the bionic arm for fast clicking for next week. And I can't wait. Or really for when I recover. Take care, boys. Have a great night. Big cheers. We'll see you in the Discord if you're not already there. See you tomorrow. Peace.